Cantos one to four of Book Six of the Ramayana of Balmiki. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by O One Two Three. Book Six of the Ramayana of Balmiki, translated by Ralph D. H. Griffith. Canto One. Rama speech. The son of Raghu heard, consoled, the wondrous tale Hanuman told, and as his joyous hope grew high, in friendly words he made reply. Behold a mighty task achieved, which never heart but his conceived. Who else across the sea can spring, save Bayu and the feathered king? Who passed the portals strong and high, Which Nagas, gods, and fiends defy, Where Ravan's hosts their station keep, And come uninjured over the deep? By such a deed the wind god's son Good service to the king has done, And saved from ruin and disgrace Lakshman and me and Ragu's race. Well has he planned and bravely fought, and with due care my lady sought. But of the sea I sadly think, And the sweet hopes that cheered me sink. How can we cross the leagues of foam That keep us from the giant's home? What can the banner legions more Than master on the ocean shore? Canto II. Sugriva's Speech He ceased and King Sugriva tried to calm his grief, and thus replied, Be to thy nobler nature true, nor let despair thy soul subdue. This cloud of causeless woe dispel, for all as yet has prospered well, and we have traced thy queen, and know the dwelling of our rakshas foe. Arise, consult, thy task must be, to cast a breeze athwart the sea. The city of our foe to reach, That crowns the mountain by the beach, And when our feet that isle shall tread, Rejoice and deem thy foeman dead. The sea unbridged his walls defy, Both fins and children of the sky, Though at the fierce battalion's head, Lord Indra's self the onset led. Yeah, victory is dying before the long breeze touched the farther shore. So fleet and fierce and strong are these, who limp them as their fancies please. Away with grief and sad surmise, that mar the noblest enterprise, and with their weak suspicion blight the sages plan the hero's might. Come, this degenerate weakness spawn and beat thy dauntless heart return for each fair hope by grief is crossed to a those we love are dead or lost arise o best of those who know arm for the giants overthrow none in the triple world i see who in the fight may equal thee none who before thy face may stand and brave the bow that arms thy hand Trust to these mighty banners, they, With full success thy trust will pay, And thou shalt reach the robber's hold, And loving arms round Sita fold. Canto three, Lanka He ceased, and Ragu's son gave heed, Attentive to his prudent reed, Then turned again with hope inspired, to Hanuman and thus inquired, Light where the task for thee I win, To bridge the sea that gleams between The mainland and the island shore, Or dry the deep and guide us over. Fain would I learn from thee whose feet Have trod the stones of every street, Of fenced Lanka's towers and forts, And walls and moats and guarded ports, And castles where the giants dwell, and battlemented citadel. O oh, Bayou's son, describe it all, With palace, fort, and gate, and wall. 
he ceased and skilled in arts that guide the eloquent the chief replied vast is the city gay and strong where elephants unnumbered throng and countless hosts of rakshas breed stand ready by the car and steed four massive gates securely barred all entrance to the city guard with murderous engines fixed to throw bolt arrow rock to check the foe and many a mace with iron head that strikes at once a hundred dead her golden ramparts wide and high what mossy strength the foe defy where inner walls their reach in lay of coral turkeys pearl display her circling moats are broad and deep where ravening monsters dart and leap by four great pyres each moat is panned while lines of deadly engines tanned in sleepless watch at every gate unnumbered hosts of giants wait and masters of each weapon rear the threatening pike and sword and spear my fury hauled those ramparts down filled up the moats that guard the town the pyres and portals overturned and stately lanka spoiled and burned however we banner force our way over the wide seat of barun sway be sure that city of the foe is doomed to sudden overthrow nay why so vast an army lead brave ungat do it good at need fierce mainda panas famed in fight that nila's skill and nala's might and jambaban the strong and wise will dare the easy enterprise assailed by these shall lanka fall with gate and rampart tower and wall command the gathering chief and they in happy hour well haste away canto four the march he ceased and spawned by warlike pride the impetuous son of ragu cried soon shall mine arm with wrathful joy the city of the foe destroy now chieftain now collect the host and onward to the southern coast the sun in his meridian tower gives glory to the banner power the demon lord who stole my queen by timely flight his life may screen she when she knows her lord is near will cling to hope and banish fear saved like a dying wretch who sips the drink of gods with fevered lips arise thy troops to battle lead all happy omens counsel speed the lord of stars in favouring skies bodes glory to our enterprise this arm shall slay the fiend and she my consort shall again be free mine upward troving eye foreshows the longed for triumph over my foes far in the van be nila's post to scan the pathway for the host and let thy bravest and thy best a hundred thousand wait his haste go forth o warrior nila lead the legions on through wood and mead where pleasant waters cool the ground and honey flowers and fruit abound go and with timely care prevent the rakshas foeman's dark intent with watchful troops each valley guard ere brooks and fruits and roots be marred and search each glen and leafy shade for hostile troops in ambuscade but let the weakling stay behind for heroes is our task designed let thousands of the banner breed the vanguard of the armies lead fierce and terrific must it be as billows of the stormy sea there be the hill huge gorgeous place and govaya's strongest of his race unlike the bull that leads the horde Gavakshas by no fears deterred. Let Rishav, matchless in the might of warlike arms, protect our right, and Gundamadan, next in rank, defend and guide the other flank. I, like the god who rules the sky, born on a rabbit mounted high, on stout Hanuman's back will ride, 
the central host to cheer and guide fierce is the god who rules below on ungod's back let lakshman show like him who wealth to mortal shares the lord whom sarvavama bows the bold shusain's impetuous might and vagadarsi's piercing sight and jambavan whom bears revere illustrious tree shall god the rear he seized the royal banner hard and swift obedient to his word sprang forth in numbers none might tell from mountain cave and bosky dell from rocky ledge and breezy height fierce banners burning for the fight and rama's course was southward bent amid the mighty armament on joyous pressed in close array the hosts who owned sugriva's sway with nimble feet with rapid bound exploring ere they passed the ground while from ten myriad throats rang out the challenge and the battle shout on roots and honeycomb they fed and clusters from the boughs overhead all from the ground and the tall trees tall rich with the flowery load they bore some carried comrades wild with mart then cast their riders to the earth who swiftly to their feet arose and overthrew their laughing foes while still rang out the general cry king raven and his fiends shall die still on exulting in the pride of conscious strength the banners hide and gazed where noble sahaya best of mountains raised each towering crest they looked on lake and streamlet where the lotus bloom was bright and fair nor marched for rama's hest they feared where town or haunt of man appeared steal onward fearful as the waves of ocean when he rolls and raves led by their eager chieftains went the banner's countless armament each captain like a noble steed oursed by the lash to double speed pressed onward filled with chill and pride by rama's and his brother's side who high above the banner trunk on mighty backs were borne along like the great lords of day and night seized by the eclipsing planet's might then lakshman radiant as the morn on ungod's shoulders high upborne with sweet consoling words that woke new order to his brother spoke soon shall thou turn thy queen regained and impious raven's life-blood drained in happiness and high renown to dear ayutthaya's happy town i see around exceeding fair all omens of art and air auspicious breezes sweet and low to greet the banner army blow and softly to my listening ear come the glad cries of bird and deer bright is the sky around us bright without a cloud the lord of light and sukra with propitious love looks on thee from his throne above the polestar and the sainted seven shine brightly in the northern heaven and great trishanku glorious king ekshaku's son from whom we spring beams in unclouded glory near his holy priest whom all revere undimmed the two bishakas shine the strength and glory of our line and that its influence that aids our rakshas form and fades and fades the running brooks are fresh and fair the boughs their ripening clusters bear and scented bridges gently sway the leaflet of the tender spray see with a glory half divine the banner's ordered legion shine bright as the god's exultant train who saw the demon tarak slain oh let thine eyes these signs behold and bid thy heart be glad and bold the banner squadrons densely spread over all the country onward sped while rising from the rapid beat of bears and monkeys hastening feet dust 
hid the earth with thickest veil, and made the struggling sunbeams pale. Now, where Mahindra's peaks arise, came Rama of the lotus eyes, and the long arms resistless might, and clomb the mountains with crowned height. Thence the Surat sun beheld, where billowy ocean rose and swelled, past Malaya's peaks and Sahya's chain, the banner legions reached the main, and stood in many a martial band, on loud resounding ocean strand. To the fair wood that fringed the tide, came the Surat sun and cried, At length, my lord Sugriva, we have reached King Varun's realm, the sea, and one great thought still vexing how to cross the flood awaits us now. The broad deep ocean that denies a passage stretched before us lies. Then let us halt and plan the while how best to storm the giant's isle. He seized, Sigriva on the coast, by trees overshadowed stayed the host, that seemed in glittering lines to be the bright waves of a second sea. Then from the shore the captains gazed on billows which the bridges raised, to fury as they dashed in foam over Varun's realm the usher's home. The sea that laughed with foam and danced with waves whereon the sunbeams glanced, where when the light began to fade, huge crocodiles and monsters played, and when the moon went up the sky, the troubled billows rose or high. From the wild watery world whereon a thousand moons reflected shone, where awful serpents swam and showed their fiery crests which flashed and glowed. Illumining the depths of hell, the prison where the demons dwell. The eye, bewildered, sought in vain, the bounding line of sky and main, alike in shade, alike in glow, where sky above and sea below. There, wave like clouds, by clouds were chased, here cloud like billows roared and raced, then shone the stars, and many a gem that lit the waters answered them. They saw the great salt ocean steered, to frenzy by the winds and hard, loud as ten thousand drums the roar of wild waves dashing on the shore. They saw him mounting to defy, with deafening voice the troubled sky. And the deep bed beneath him swell, in fury as the billows fell. And of counters one, two, three, and four. Cantos five to ten of Book Six of the Ramayan of Valmiki, translated by Ralph D. H. Griffith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Om One Two Three. Canto 5. Rama's Lament There on the coast, in long array, the banners marshalled legions lay, while Nila's care had ordered well the watch of God and sentinel, and Minda moved from post to post with Duvid to protect the host. Then Rama stood by Lakshman's side, and mastered by his sorrow cried, my dear brother, the heart's distress, as days wear on, grows less and less. But my deep-seated grief, alas, grows fiercer as the seasons pass. Though for my queen my spirit longs, and broods indignant over my wrongs, still wilder is my grief to know that her young life is past in woe. Breathe, gentle gale, O oh, breathe where she Lies prisoned, and then breathe on me. And though my love I may not meet, Thy kiss shall be divinely sweet. Ah, by the giant shape appalled, On her dear lord for help she called. 
Still in mine ears the sad cry rings, And tears my heart with poison stings. Through the long daylight and the gloom of night, Wild thoughts of her consume my spirit and my love supplies, The torturing flame which never dies. Leave me, my brother, I will sleep, Couched on the bosom of the deep, for the cold wave may bring me peace, And bid the fire of passion cease. One only thought my stay must be, That art, one art, holds her and me. To hear, to know, my darling lips, Some life-supporting comfort gives, As streams from distant fountains run, Over meadows parching in the sun. Ah, when! My foeman at my feet shall I, my queen, my glory meet. The blossom of her dear face rays, and on her eyes unraptured gaze. Press her soft lips to mine again, and drink a balm to banish pain. Alas, alas, where lies she now, my darling of the lovely brow? On the cold heart, no help at hand. Forlorn amid the Raksha's band, King Janak's child still calls on me, Her lord and love, to set her free. But soon in glory will she rise, A crescent moon in autumn skies, And those dark rovers of the night, Like scattered clouds, shall turn in flight. Canto six, Raven's Page but when the giant king surveyed his glorious town in ruin laid, and each dire sign of victory won by Hanuman the Wingard's son, he veiled his angry eyes oppressed by shame, and thus his lords addressed. The banner spy has passed the gate of Lanka long inviolate, eluded watch and ward and seal with his bold eyes the captive queen my royal roof with flames is red the bravest of my lords are dead and the fierce banner in his hate has left our city desolate now ponder well the walk that lies before us ponder and advise with deep observing judgment scan the peril and mature a plan from council sages say the root springs victory most glorious fruit first ranks the king when woe impends who seeks the counsel of his friends of kinsmen ever faithful found or those whose hopes with his are bound then with their aid his strength applies and triumphs in his enterprise Next ranks the prince who plans alone, No counsel seeks to aid his own, Weighs loss and gain and wrong and right, And seeks success with honest might. Unwisest he who spawns delays, Who counts no cost, no peril weighs, Speeds to his aim, defying fate, And risks his all precipitate. Does too in counsel sages find a best, a worst, a middle kind. When gathered counsellors explore the way by light of holy law, and all from first to last agree is the best counsel of the tree. Next, if debate first to exercise, and each his chosen plan would try, till all agree at last with him, this counsel second in esteem. Worst of the tree is this, when each assails with taunt his fellow speech, when all debate and no consent concludes the angry argument. Consult then, lords, my task shall be to crown with act your wise decree. With thousands of his wild allies, the vengeful Rama he the highs. With unregistered might and speed, across the flood his troops will lead. All for the banner host will drain the channels of the conquered main.
Canto Seven, Ravan Encouraged. He seized, they scorned with blinded eyes, the foeman and his bold allies, raised reverent hands with one accord, and thus made answer to their lord. Why yield thee, king, to causeless fear, a mighty host with sword and spear, and mace and axe and pike and lance, waits but thy signal to advance? Art thou not he who slew of old the serpent gods and stormed their hold, scaled Mount Kailasha and overtree, Kuvera and his Yaksha crew, compelling Siva's hofty friend, beneath a mightier arm to bend? Didst thou not bring from realms afar the marvel of the magic car? One day who served Kubera fell, crushed in the mountain citadel. Attracted by thy matchless fame, to thee a suppliant Maya came, the lord of every dawn of band, and won thee with his daughter's hand. Thy arm in hell itself was felt, where Basuki and Sankha dwelt, and they and Takshak overthrown, were forced thy conquering might to own. The gods in vain their blessing gave, the heroes bravest of the brave, who strove a year and sorely pressed, their victor's peerless might confessed. In vain their magic arts they tried, in vain thy matchless arm defied. King Barun's sons with fourfold force, cars, elephants, and foot and horse. But for a while thy power withstood, and conquered, mourned their hardihood. Thou hast encountered face to face King Yama with his murdering maze. Fierce is the wild tempestuous sea, What terror had his wrath for thee! Though death in every threatening form, And woe and torment ours the storm. Thine arm a glorious victory won Over the dread king who pities none, And the three walls from terror freed, in joyful wonder praised thy deed. The tribe of warriors strong and dread, As Indra's self over art had spread, As giant trees that towering stand, In mountain glens they filled the land. Can Ragu's son encounter foes, Fears numerous and strong as those? Yet trained in war and practised well, Overmatched by thee they fought and fell. Stay in thy royal home, nor care The battle and the toil to share. But let the easy fight be won By Indrajit, thy matchless son. All, all shall die, if thou permit, Slain by the hand of Indrajit. Canto Eight, Prahasta's Speech Dark as a cloud of autumn, dread, Prahasta joined his palms and said, Gandharva's gods, the hosts who dwell In heaven, in air, in art, in hell, Have yielded to thy might, and how Shall two weak men oppose thee now? Hanuman came, a foe disguised, And mocked us heedless and surprised, Or never had a leaf to flee, And boast that he has fought with me. Command, O king, and this right hand Shall sweep the banners from the land, And hill and dale to ocean shore Shall know the death-doomed race no more. But let my care the means devise To guard thy city from surprise. Then Durmukh cried, a rakshas race, Too long we brook the dire disgrace. He gave our city to flames, he trod the chambers of thy dames. Never shall so weak and vile a thing, Unpunished brave the giant's king. Now shall this single arm attack, And drive the daring banners back, Till to the winds of heaven they flee, Or seek the depths of art and sea. Then, brandishing the mace he bore, Whose horrid spikes were stained with gore, while fury made his eyeballs red, 
impetuous Basradan Shtra said, Why waste a thought on one so vile, as Hanuman the Banner while Sugriva Lakshman yet remain, and Rama mightier still unslain? This mace to-day shall cross the tree, and all the host will turn and flee. Listen, and I will speak, incline, O king, to hear these words of mine. For the deep plan that I propose will swiftly rid thee of thy foes. That thousands of thy host assume the forms of man in youthful bloom, in war's magnificent array, draw near to Ragu's son and say, the younger brother Varat sends this army, and thy cause be friends. Then let our legions hasten near, with bow and mace and sword and spear, and on the banner army reign, our steel and stone, till all be slain. If Ragu's sons will fain believe, entangled in the net we weave, the penalty they both must pay, and lose their forfeit lives to-day. Then, with his warrior soul on fire, Nikumba spoke in burning ire. I, only I, will take the field, and Ragu's son his life shall yield. Within these walls, O chiefs, abide, nor part ye from our monarch's side. Canto Nine, The Vision's Council A score of warriors forward sprang, and loud the clashing iron rang of maize and axe and spear and sword, as does they spake unto their lord. Their king Sugriva will we slay, and Ragu's sons ere close of day, and strike the wretch Hanuman down, the spoiler of our golden town. But sage Vivishan strove to calm the chieftain's fury palm to palm. He joined in lowly reverence pressed before them and the throng addressed. Dismiss the hope of conquering one, so stern and strong as Ragu's son. In due control each sense he keeps, with constant care that never sleeps. Whose daring heart has ever conceived the exploit Hanuman achieved, across the fearful sea to spring, the tributary river's king. O Rakshas lords, in time be wise, Nor Rama's matchless power despise. And say, what evil had the son Of Raku to our monarch done, Who stole the dame he loved so well, And keeps her in his citadel? If Kara, in his foolish pride, Encountered Rama, fought and died, May not the meanest love his life, And guard it in the deadly strife, the metal day, O Rakshas King, sore peril to thy realm will bring. Restore her while there yet is time, nor let us perish for thy crime. O oh, let the metal lady go, ere the avenger bend his bow, to ruin with his airy showers our Lanka with her gates and towers. Let Janak's child again be free, ere the wild banners cross the sea. In their regisless might assail Our city and her rampart scale. Ah, I conjure thee by the ties Of brotherhood, be just and wise. In all my thoughts thy good I seek, And does my prudent counsel speak. Let captive Sita be restored, Ere fears as autumn's sun, her lord, Send his keen arrows from the string. To drink the life-blood of our king. This fury from thy soul dismiss, The bane of duty, peace, and bliss. Seek duty's path and walk therein, And joy and endless glory win. Restore the captive, ere we feel The piercing point of Rama's steel. O oh, spare thy city, spare the lives Of us, our friends, our sons and wives. Thus spake Bivishan, wise and brave. The Rakshas king no answer gave, But bade his lords the council close, And sought his chamber for repose. Canto X. 
THE VISION'S COUNCIL Soon, as the light of morning broke, the vision from his slumber woke, and, duty guiding every thought, the palace of his brother sought. Vast as a towering hill that shows, his peaks afar, that palace rose. Here stood, within the monarch's gate, sage nobles skilful in debate. There strayed in glittering raiment true, the courts his royal retinue, where in wild measure rose and fell the music of the drum and shell, and talk grew loud, and many a dame of fairest feature went and came. Through doors a marvel to behold, with pearl inlaid on burning gold. Therein Gundervas all the fleet loads of storm my joy to meet he passed within the wondrous pile chief glory of the giant's isle thus ere his fiery course be done an autumn cloud that met the sun he heard auspicious voices raise with loud accord the note of praise and sages deep in scripture sing each glorious triumph of the king he saw the priests in order stand, carved oil in every sacred hand, and by them flowers were laid and grain, due offerings to the holy train. The vision to the monarch bowed, raised on a throne above the crowd, then, skilled in arts of soft address, he raised his voice the king to bless, and sate him on a seat where he, full in his brother's sight should be the chieftain there while none could hear spoke his true speech for raven's ear and to his words of wisdom lent the force of weightiest argument o brother here since rama's queen a captive in thy house has been the gestures omens day by day have struck our souls with wild dismay no longer still and strong and clear the flames of sacrifice appear but restless with the frequent spark knit clouds of smoke grow faint and dark our ministering priests turn pale to see their wonted offerings fail and ants and serpents creep and crawl within the consecrated hall dried are the odors of our cows our elephants have juiceless brows nor can the sweetest pasture stay the chargers long on quiet nay big tears from mules and camels flow whose tearing coats their trouble show nor can the leeches art restore their health and vigour as before rapacious boards of fierce and bold not single hunters as of old in banded troops they chase the prey, or gathering on our temples stay. Through twilight hours which shriek and howl, around the city jackals prowl, and wolves and foul hyenas wait, a toast for blood at every gate. One soul atonement still may cure these evils, and our will assure. Restore the metal dame and win an easy pardon for thy sin the rakshas monarch heard and moved to sudden wrath his speech reproved no danger brother can i see the mighty dame i will not free though all the gods for rama fight he yields to my superior might thus the tremendous king who broke the ranks of heavenly warriors spoke and sternly purposed to resist his brother from the hall dismissed and of cantos five to ten cantos eleven to fourteen of book six of the ramayana of valmiki Translated by Ralph D. H. Griffith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Om One Two Three. Count to Eleven. The Summons. 
still Ravan's half the heart repelled. The counsel of the wise repelled, and as his breast with passion burned, his thoughts again to Sita turned. Thus to each sign of danger blind, to love and war he still inclined. Then mounted he his car that glowed with gems and golden net, and rode, where gathered at the monarch's call, the nobles filled the council hall. A host of warriors bright and gay, with coloured robes and rich array, with shield and mace and spear and sword, followed the chariot of their lord. Mid the loud voice of shells and beat, of drums he raced along the street, and ere he came was heard afar the rolling thunder of his car. He reached the doors, the nobles bent, their heads before him reverent, and welcomed with their loud acclaim, within the glorious hall he came. He sat upon a royal seat, with golden steps beneath his feet, and bade the heralds summon all his captains to the council hall. The heralds heard the words he spake, and sped from house to house to wake the giants where they slept or spent the careless hours in merriment. These heard the summons and obeyed from chamber, grove, and colonnade. On elephants or cars they rode, or through the streets impatient strode as birds on rustling pinions fly through regions of the darkened sky does cars and metalled coursers through the crowded streets of lanka flew the council hall was reached and then as lions seek their mountain den through massy doors that opened wide with martial stock the captains hide welcomed with honour as was meet they stooped to press their monarch's feet, and each a place in order found, on stool, on cushion, or the ground. Nor did the sage be vision long, delay to join the noble throng. High on a car that shone like flame, with gold and flashing gems he came, drew near, and spoke his name aloud, and reverent to his brother bowed. Canto twelve, Ravan's speech. The king in council unsurpassed, his eye around the synod cast, and fierce Prahasta, first and best, of all his captains, thus addressed. Brave master of each warlike art, arouse thee and perform thy part, array thy fourfold forces well to guard our isle and citadel. The captain of the hosts obeyed, the troops with prudent skill arrayed. Then to the hall again he hied, and stood before the king and cried, Each inlet to the town is closed, a doubt within, our troops disposed. With fearless heart thine aim pursue, and do the deed thou hast in view. Thus spoke Prahasta in the jail that moved him for the kingdom's will, and thus the monarch who pursued his own delight his speech renewed. In ease and bliss, in toil and pain, in doubts of duty, pleasure gain. Your proper path I need not tell, for of yourselves ye you know it well. The storm gods, moon, and planets bring new glory to their heavenly king, and ranged about your monarchy, give joy and endless fame to me. My secret counsel have I kept, while senseless Kumbhakaran slept. Six months the warrior slumbers last, and bind his torpid senses fast. But now his deep repose he breaks, the best of all our champions wakes. I captured Rama's heart to ring, this daughter of Videha's king, and brought her from that distant land, where wandered many a Raksha's band. Disdainful still, my love she spawns, 
still from each prayer and offering taunts. Yet in all lands beneath the sun, no dame may rival Sita, none. Her dainty waist is round and slight, her cheek like autumn's moon is bright, and she like fruit in graven gold mocks her whom Maya framed of old. Faultless in form, how firmly tread, her feet whose soles are rosy red. Ah, oh, as I gaze her beauty takes, my spirit and my passion wakes. Looking for Rama far away, she sought with tears a year's delay, nor gazing on her lovely eye, could I that honest prayer deny. But baffled hopes and vain desire, at length my patient spirit tire. How shall the sons of Ragu sweep the vengeance over the pathless deep? How shall they lead the banner train across the monster teeming main? One banner yet could find a way to Lanka's town and burn and slay. Take counsel then, remembering still that we from man need fear no ill, and give your sentence in debate. For matchless is the power of fate. Assailed by you, the gods who dwell in heaven beneath our fury fell. And shall we fear these creatures bred in forests by Sugriva led? Even now on ocean's farther strand, the sons of Dasarath stand and follow, burning to attack their giant foes on Sita's track. Consult then, lords, for ye are wise, a seasonable plan devise, the captive lady to retain, and triumph when the foes are slain. No power can bring across the foam those banners to our island home, or if they madly will defy our conquering might, they needs must die. Then Kunkarna's anger woke. And wrought at Ravan's words, he spoke. O monarch, when thy ravished eyes First looked upon thy lovely prize, Then was the time to bid us scan Each peril and mature a plan. Blessed is the king who acts with heed, And never repents one hasty deed, And hapless he whose troubled soul Mourns over days beyond control. Thou hast, in beauty's toils and snared, A desperate deed of boldness dared, By fortune saved ere Rama's tale, One wound thy mortal pain could deal. But, Ravan, as the deed is done, The toil of war I will not shun. This arm, a rover of the night, Thy foeman to the art shall smite, The wind drove the lord of flame, the sun and storms against me came. Even Indra, monarch of the skies, Who dread my club and mountain sighs, Shrink from these teeth and quake to hear The thunders of my voice of fear. No second dart shall Rama cast, The first he aims shall be the last. He falls, and these dry lips shall drain The blood of him my hand has slain. And Sita, when her champion dies, Shall be thine undisputed prize. Canto thirteen, Ravan's speech But Mahabharsha saw the sting Of keen reproach had galed the king, And humbly, eager to appease, His anger spoke in words like these. And breeds there one so cold and weak, the forest and the gloom to seek, Where savest beasts abound, and spare, To taste a luscious honey dare. Art thou not lord, and who is he, Shall venture to give laws to thee? Love thy bedehan still, and tread, Upon thy prostrate foreman's head. Over Cedar's will, let thine prevail, And strength achieve, if flattery fail. What though the lady yet be coy, And turn her from the proffered joy? Soon shall her conquered heart relent, 
and yield to love and blandishment. With us let Kumbhakaran fight, an Indrajit of matchless might. We need not our the champions day, shall lead us forth to rout and slay. Not ours to bribe or suit or part, the foeman's force with gentle art. Doomed, conquered by our might, to feel the vengeance of the warrior steel. The Rakshas Mona caught, and moved, by flattering hopes, the speech approved. Hear me, he cried, great chieftain, tell, what in the olden time befell, a secret tale which, long suppressed, lies prisoned only in my breast. One day, a day I never forget, fair Punjikastala I met, when, radiant as a flame of fire, she sought the palace of the sire. In passion's eager grasp I tore from her sweet limbs the robes she wore, and heedless of her prayers and cries, strained to my breast the vanquished prize. Like Nalini with soil distained, the mansion of the sire she gained, and weeping made the outrage known to Brahma on his heavenly throne. He in his wrath pronounced a cause, that Lord who made the universe. If, Robin, thou a second time be guilty of so foul a crime, thy head in shivers shall be rent, be warned and dread the punishment. Awed by the treat of vengeance till, I force not Sita's stubborn will, Terrific as the sea in might, my steps are like the storm god's flight. But Rama knows not this, or he had never sought to war with me. Where is the man who idly brave, the lion in his mountain cave, and wake him when with slumbering eyes, grim, terrible as death, he lies? No, blinded Rama knows me not. Never has he seen mine arrows shot, Never marked them speeding to their aim, Like snakes with cloven tongues of flame. On him those arrows will I turn, Whose fiery points shall rend and burn, Quenched by my power when I assail, The glory of his might shall fail. As stars before the sun grow dim, and yield their feeble light to him. Canto fourteen, Vivician Speech He seized, Vivician ill at ease, addressed the king in words like these. O Raven, O my lord, be aware, of Sita, dangerous as fair, nor on thy heedless bosom hang, this serpent with a deadly fang. O king, the mighty dame restore, the Ragu's matchless son before, those warriors of the woodlands vast, as mountain peaks approaching fast. Armed with fierce teeth and claws, and close thy city with unsparing foes. O be the mighty dame restored, ere loosened from the clanging cord, the vengeful shafts of Rama fly, and low in debt, thy princes lie. In all thy legions hast thou won a match in war for Ragu's son. Can Kumkaran's self withstand or Indrajit that mighty hand? In vain with Rama wilt thou strive, thou wilt not save thy soul alive. Though guarded by the Lord of Day and Storm God's terrible array, in vain to Indra wilt thou fly or seek protection in the sky. In Yama's gloomy mansion dwell, or hide thee in the depths of hell. He ceased, and when his lips were closed, Brahusta does his reed opposed. O oh, timid heart, the counsel does, what terrors have the gods for us? Can snake and fiend appall, the giant sons who scorn them all? And shall we now our part disgrace, And dread a king of human race? 
Sisters, fierce prehaster, counseled ill, but says Bevisioner's constant will, the safety of the realm ensued, who does in turn his speech renewed. Yes, when a soul defiled with sin shall mount to heaven and enter in, then, chief Dane, will experience teach the truth of thy disdainful speech. Can I or thou, or those or all, our bravest compass, Rama's fall. The chief in whom all virtues shine, the pride of old Dikshaku's line, with whom the gods may scores compare, in skill to act, in heart to dare. Yea, idly mayst thou vaunt thee, till, sharp arrows winged with matchless skill, from Rama's bowstring fleet and fierce, as lightning's flame, thy body peers. Nikumba shall not save thee then, nor Ravan from the Lord of Man. O monarch, hear my last appeal, my counsel for thy kingdom's will. This sentence I again declare, O giant king, beware, beware. Save from the ruin that impends, thy town, thy people, and thy friends, O oh, hear the warning ours once more, To Rago's son, the dame, restore. End of Cantos 11, 12, 13, and 14Cantos 15 to 17 of Book 6 of the Ramayana of Balmike, translated by Ralph D. H. Griffith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Om Wadu Tre. Canto 15 Indrajit's Speech. He ceased, and Indrajit, the pride of Rakshas warriors, thus replied. Is this a speech our king should hear, this counsel of ignoble fear? A scion of our glorious race should never conceive a thought so base. But one, mid all our kin, we find, the vision, whose degenerate mind no spark of gallant pride retains, whose coward soul his lineage stains. Against one giant, what can two unhappy sons of Ragu do? Away with idle fears, away, matched with our meanest, what are they? Beneath my conquering prowess fell, the Lord of art and heaven and hell. Through every startled region, dread of my registless fury spread, and gods in each remotest sphere confessed the universal fear rending the air with roar and groan ere robert to the art was thrown from his huge head the tusks i drew and smote the gods with fear and near shall i who tame celestial's pride by whom the fiends are terrified now prove a weakling little wart and fail to slay those sons of art he ceased the vision trained and tried, in war and counsel, thus replied. Thy speech is marked with scorn of truth, with rashness and the pride of yield. Yea, to thy ruin like a child, thou prattest, and thy words are wild. Most dear, O Indrajit, to thee, should Ravan's will and safety be, for thou art called his son, but thou, art proved his direst foreman now. When warned by me thou hast not tried to turn the coming woe aside, both thee and him it were meet to slay, who brought thee to this hall to-day, and dared so rash a youth admit to counsel where the wisest sit. Presumptuous, wild, devoid of sense, filled full of pride and insolence, Thy reckless tongue thou wilt not rule, That speaks the counsel of a fool. Who in the fight may brook or shun, The arrow shot by Rago's son, With flame and fiery vengeance sped, 
dire as his stuff who rules the dead o raven let thy people leave and to the son of Rako give fair robes and gems and precious all and sita to his arms restore canto sixteen raven speech then while his breast with fury swelled thus raven spoke as faith impelled better with foes thy dwelling make or house thee with the venom snake than live with false familiar friends who farther still thy foeman's ends i know their treacherous mood i know their secret triumph at thy woe they in their inward hearts despise the brave the noble and the wise grieve at their bliss with rancorous hate and for their sorrows watch and wait scan every fault with curious eye and each slight error magnify ask elephants who roam the wild how were their captive friends beguiled for fire they cried with little care for javelin and shaft and snare our foes are traitors taught to bind the trusting creatures of their kind still still shall blessings flow from cows and brahmans love their rigorous vows still women change their restless will and friends perfidious walk us ill what though with conquering feet i tread on every prostrate foreman's head what though the walls in abject fear their mighty lord in me revere this thought my peace of mind destroys and robs me of expected joys the lotus of the lake receives the glittering rain that gems its leaves but each bright drop remains apart so is it still with heart and heart deceitful as an autumn cloud which though its thunderous voice be loud on the dry art no torrent sends such is the race of faithless friends no reaches of the bloom is prey will tempt the wandering bee to stay that loves from flower to flower to range and friends like thee are swift to change thou blot upon thy glorious line if any giant's tongue but thine had dared to give this base advice he should not live to shame me twice then just bevision in the heat of anger started from his seat and with four captains of the band sprang forward with his mace in hand then fury flashing from his eye looked on the king and made reply thy rights o robin i allow my brother and mine elder thou such though from duty's path they stray we love like fathers and obey but still too bitter to be borne is thy harsh speech of cruel scorn the rash like thee whose pawn control nor check one longing of the soul oust by the malignant fate repel the faithful friend who counsels well a thousand courtiers will thou meet with flattering lips of smooth deceit but rare are they whose tongue or ear will speak the bitter truth or hear unclose thy blinded eyes and see that snares of death encompass thee i dread my brother to behold the shafts of rama bright with gold flash fury through the air and red with fires of vengeance strike thee dead lord brother king again reflect nor this mine honest prayer reject o oh, save thyself thy royal town thy people and thine old renown canto seventeen vivician's flight soon as his bitter words were said the ragu's sons bevision fled their eyes the banner leaders raised and on the airborne rakshasas gazed bright as a thunderbolt in size like meru's peak that cleaves the skies 
in gorgeous panoply arrayed like in raw self he stood displayed and four attendants brave and bold shone by their chief in mail and gold sugriva then with dark surmise bent on their forms his wandering eyes and thus in hasty words confessed the anxious doubt that moved his breast look look ye banners and be aware that giant chief sublime in air with other four in bright array comes armed to conquer and to slay soon as his warning speech they heard the banner chieftains undertaught seized fragments of the rock and trees and made reply in words like these we wait thy word the order give and these thy foes shall cease to live command us mighty king and all lifeless upon the earth shall fall meanwhile bevision with the four stood high above the ocean shore sugriva and the chiefs he spied and raised his mighty voice and cried from raban lord of giants i his brother named vivician fly from janastan he stole the child of janak by his art beguiled and in his palace locked and burned surrounds her with a rakshas god i bade him plied with varied law his hapless prisoner restore but he by fate to ruin sent no credence to my counsel lent mad as the fevered wretch who sees and scorns the balm to bring him ease he scorned the sage advice i gave he spawned me like a base-born slave i left my children and my wife and fly to ragu's son for life i pray thee banner chieftain speed to him who saves in hour of need and tell him famed in distant lands that suppliant here the vision stands the rakshas seized sugriva hide the ragu's noble son and cried a stranger from the giant host born over the sea has reached the coast a secret foe he comes to slay as owls attack their heedless prey it is thine o king in time of need to watch to counsel and to lead our banner legions to dispose and guard us from our crafty foes the vision from the giant's isle king raven's brother comes with guile and feigning from his king to flay seeks refuse ragu's son with thee arise o rama and prevent by bold attack his dark intent who comes in friendly guise prepared to slay thee by his arts and snared does oust sugriva famed for law of moving words and spoke no more then rama does in turn address the bold hanuman and the rest chiefs of the banner legions each of you heard sugriva's speech what think ye now in time of fear when peril and distress are near in every doubt the wise depend for counsel on a faithful friend they heard his gracious words and then spake reverent to the lord of man o ragu son thou knowest well all things of heaven and art and hell it is but thy friendship bids us speak the counsel rama need not seek so duteous brave and true art thou heroic faithful to thy vow deep in the scriptures trained and tried still in thy friends will thou confide let each of us in turn impart the secret counsel of his art and strive to win his chief's assent by force of wisest argument they ceased and anger does begin with jealous eye the stranger scan not yet with trusting heart receive the vision nor his tale believe these giants wandering far and wide their evil nature falsely hide and watching with malignant skill assail us when we fear no ill 
while ponder every hope and fear until thy doubtful cause be clear then own his merit or detect his guile and welcome or reject then serve the bold and brave in turn his prudent sentence gave yea rama send a skilful spy with keenest tact to test and try then let the stranger as is just obtain or be refused thy trust then he whose heart was rich in store of scripture's life directing law king jambavan stood forth and cried suspect suspect a foe allied which raman lord of lanka's isle and rakshas sin and rakshas guile then mind the wisest chief who knew the wrong the right the false the true pondered a while then silence broke and thus his sober counsel spoke let one with gracious speech draw near and gently charm the vision's ear till he the soothing witchery feel and all his secret heart reveal as thou his aims and hopes shalt know and hail the friend or shun the foe not he hanuman cried not he who taught the gods may rival thee supreme in power of quickest sense first in the art of eloquence but hear me soothly speak o king and learn the hope to which i cling the vision comes no crafty spy urged by his brother's fault to fly with righteous soul that loads the sin he fled from lanka and his kin if strangers question doubt will rise and chill the heart of one so wise marred by distrust the parley will end and thou wilt lose a faithful friend nor let it seem so light a thing to sound a stranger's heart o king and he i whim whatever he say will never an evil thought betray he comes a friend in happy time loading his brother for his crime his ear has heard thine old renown the might that struck king barley down and sets a griever on the throne and looking now to thee alone he comes thy matchless aid to win and punish raven for his sin thus have i tried thy heart to move and thus be vision's truth to prove still in his friendship i confide but ponder wisest and decide and of cantos fifteen sixteen and seventeen cantos eighteen to twenty of book six of the ramayana of balmiki translated by ralph to h griffith this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Om One Two Three. Canto Eighteen, Rama's Speech. Then Rama's rising doubt was stilled, and friendly thoughts his bosom filled. Thus deep in Scripture's law he spake: "The suppliant will I never forsake, nor my protecting aid refuse." when one in name of friendship sues though false and folly blot his fame pity and help he still may claim he ceased sugriva bowed his head and pondered for a while and said past number be his faults or fear what think ye of the rakshas who when threatening clouds of danger rise deserts his brother's side and flies say banners who may hope to find true friendship in his faithful kind the son of Reku heard his speech he cast a hasty look on each of those brave banner chiefs and while upon his lips there played a smile to lakshman taunt and thus expressed the thoughts that moved his gallant breast well versed in scripture's law and sage and duly reverent 
to age is he with long experience taught who counsels like this banner lord yet here methinks for searching eyes some deeper subtler matter lies to you and all the world unknown the perils of a monarch's throne while foe and stranger kit and kin by his misfortune trust to win by hope of such advantage led the vision over the sea has fled he in his brother's stead would reign and our alliance seeks to gain and we his offer may embrace a stranger and of alien race but if he comes a spy and foe what power has he to strike a blow in furtherance of his close design what is his strength compared with mine and can i banner king forget the great the universal debt ever to aid and welcome those who pray for shelter friends or foes has thou not heard the deathless praise won by the dove in olden days who conquering his fear and hate welcomed the slayer of his maid and gave a banquet to refresh the weary fowler of his flesh now hear me banner king rehearse what kandu spoke in ancient verse saint kanda's son who loved the truth and clave to virtue from his youth strike not the suppliant when he stands and asks thee with beseeching hands for shelter strike him not although he wear thy father's mortal foe now yield him be he proud or meek the shelter which he comes to seek and save thy foeman if the deed should cause thy life in desperate need and shall i hear the wretched cry and my protecting aid deny shall i a suppliant's prayer refuse and heaven and glory basely lose no i'll do for honour's sake even as the holy condor spake preserve a hero's name from stain and bliss in heaven and glory gain bound by a solemn vow i swear that all my saving help should share who sought me in distress and cried thou art my hope and none beside then go i pray thee banner king the vision to my presence bring here yeah, where he ravens self my vow forbids me to reject him now he ceased the banner king approved and rama toward the vision moved so moves a brother god to greet lord indra from his heavenly sea Canto nineteen, the vision's council. When Ragu's son had owned his claim, down from the air the vision came, and with his four attendants bent at Rama's feet, most reverent. O oh, Rama, thus he cried, in me, the vision Ravan's brother see. By him disgraced, thine aid I seek, sure refuge for the poor and weak from lanka friends and wealth i fly and reft of all on thee rely on thee the wretch's farmest friend my kingdom joys and life depend with glance of favour rama eyed the rakshas chief and thus replied first from thy lips i fain would hear each brighter hope each darker fear speak stranger that i well may know the strength and weakness of the foe he ceased the rakshas chief obeyed and thus in turn his answer made o prince the self-existent gave this boon to rama he may brave all foes in fight no fiend or snake gandharva god his life may take his brother kumkaran wise admired with him who rules the skies the captain of his armies fame perhaps has taught the warrior's name his terrible prahasta who king manivadra's self overthrew 
where is the warrior found to face young indrajit whom armed with praise and gold and bow he stands in mail and laughs at spear and arrowy hail within his city lanka dwell ten million giants fierce and fell who wear each very shape at will and eat the flesh of those they kill these hosts against the gods he led and heavenly might discomfited then rama cried i little heed gigantic strength or dofty deed in spite of all their might has done the king the captain and the son shall fall beneath my fury dead and thou shalt reign in ravan's stead he though in depths of art he dwell or seek protection down in hell or kneel before the sire supreme his forfeit life shall never redeem yea by my brother's lives i swear i will not to my home repair till ravan and his kith and kin have paid in debt the price of sin the vision bowed his head and cried thy conquering army will i guide to storm the city of the foe and aid the tyrants overthrow thus spake the vision rama pressed the rakshas chieftain to his breast and cried to lakshman haste and bring sea water for the new-made king he spoke and over the vision's head the consecrating drops were shed mid shouts that hailed with one accord the giant's king and lanka's lord is there no way hanuman cried no passage over the boss terrace tide how may we lead the banner host in triumph to the farther coast thus said the vision i advise let ragu's son in suppliant guise entreat the mighty sea to lend his succor and this cause befriend his channels as the wise have told by sagar's sons were dug of old nor will high totted ocean scorn a prince of sagar's lineage born he seized the prudent counsel won the glad ascent of ragu's son then on the ocean shore a bed of tender sacred grass was spread where rama at the close of day like fire upon an altar lay canto twenty the spies Shardula, Ravan's spy, surveyed the legions on the strand arrayed, and bore his bosom racked with fear. These tidings to the monarch's ear: They come, they come, a rushing tide. Ten leagues they spread from side to side, and on to storm thy city press, fierce rovers of the wilderness. Rich in each princely power and grace. The pride of the Surat's race, Rama and Lakshman lead their bands, and hold them on the ocean stands. O monarch, rise, this peril meet, risk not the danger of defeat. First let each wider art be tried, bribe them, or win them, or divide. Such was the counsel of the spy, and Ravan called to Sukha, Fly! Sugriva, Lord of Banner, see, and does my kingly message speak. Great power and might and fame are thine, brave scion of a royal line. King Rikshadaja's son in thee, a brother and a friend I see. How wronged by me canst thou complain? What profit he a pretend to gain? If from the Ood thy wife I stole, of Rama of the prudent soul, what cause hast thou to mourn the theft thou art not injured or bereft return o king thy steps retrace and seek thy mountain dwelling place no never may thy hosts within my lanka's walls a footing win a mighty town whose strength defies the gathered armies of the skies he ceased obedient sukha hard with wings and plumage of a bird, he rose in eager speed and threw the air upon his year round flew. 
borne over the sea with rapid wing he stood above the banner king and spoke aloud sublime in air the message he was judged to bear the banner heard the words he spoke and quick redoubling stroke on stroke on head and pinions hammed him round and bore him struggling to the ground the rakshas wounded and distressed these words to ragu's son addressed quick quick this banner host restrain for heralds never must be slain to him alone a wretch untrue the punishment of death is due who leaves his master's speech unsaid and speaks another in its stead moved by the suppliant speech and prayer up sprang the prince and cried forbear saved from his wild assailant's blows again the rakshas herald rose and borne on light wings to the sky addressed sugriva from the high o banner monarch chief and dude with power and wondrous fortitude what answer is my king the fear and scourge of weeping worlds to hear go tell thy lord sugriva cried thou rama's foe art thus defied his arm the guilty barley slew thus tyrant shalt thou perish too thy sons thy friends proud king and all thy kith and kin with thee shall fall and emptied of the giant's brood bond lanka be a solitude fly to the sun god's pathway go and hide thee deep in hell below in vain from rama shalt thou flee though heavenly warriors fight for thee thine arm subdued securely bold the vulture king in form and old but will thy puny strength avail when ragu's wrathful sons assail a captive in thy palace lies the lady of the lotus eyes thou knowest not how fierce and strong is he whom thou hast dared to wrong the best of ragu's lineage he whose conquering hand shall punish thee he ceased and angered raised a cry this is no herald but a spy above thee from his airy post his rapid eye surveyed our host where with advantage he might scan our gathered strength from rear to van bind him banners bind the spy nor let him back to lanka fly they hauled the rakshas to the ground they grasped his neck his pinions bound and firmly held him while in vain his voice was lifted to complain but rama's heart inclined to spare he listened to the plaint and prayer and cried aloud o banners seers the captive from his bonds release and of cantos eighteen nineteen and twenty Cantos twenty one to twenty three of Book six of the Ramayana of Balmiki, translated by Ralph D. H. Griffith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by O one two three. Canto twenty one Ocean Treatment. His hands in reverence Rama raised, and southward over the ocean gazed then on the sacred grass that made his lowly couch his limbs he laid his head on that strong arm reclined which sita best of womankind had loved in happier days to hold with soft arms decked with pearls and gold then rising from his bed of grass this day he cried the host shall pass triumphant to the southern shore or the ocean's self shall be no more. Thus vowing in his constant breast, Again he turned him to his rest, And there his eyes in slumber closed, Silent beside the sea reposed. Trice rose the day god, Trice he said, The lord of ocean came not yet. Trice came the night, but Ragu's son, 
no answer by his service won. The Lakshman thus the hero cried, his eyes aflame with wrath and pride. In vain the softer gifts that grace, the good, are offered to the base. Long-suffering, patience, gentle speech, their tankless hearts can never reach. The world to him its honour pays, whose ready tongue himself can praise, who scorns the true and hates the right, whose hand is ever raised to smite. Each milder art is tried in vain, it wins no glory but the stain, and victory owns no softer charm than might which nerves a warrior's arm. My humble sweet is still the night, by ocean's overweening pride. This day the monsters of the deep, in throes of death, shall wildly leap. My shafts shall rend the serpents curled, in caverns of the watery world, disclose each sunless depth and bare, the tangled pearl and coral there. Away with mercy, at a time, like this, compassion is a crime. Welcome, the battle and the foe, My bow, my arrows, and my bow. This day the banner's feet shall tread, The conquered sea's exhausted bed, And he who never feared before Shall tremble to his farthest shore. Red flashed his eyes, what angry glow, He stood and grasped his mighty bow, Terrific as the fire of doom, Whose quenchless flames the world consume. His clanging cord the archer drew, And swift the fiery arrows flew. Fierce is the flashing leaven sent By him who rules the firmament. Down through the startled waters pent, Its missile with its flaming head, The foamy billows rose and sank, then dashed upon the trembling bank. See monsters with tremendous form, with crash and roar of thunder storm. Still the wild waters rose and fell, crowned with white foam and pearl and shell. Each serpent, startled from his rest, raised his fierce eyes and glowing crest, and prisoned Danabs where they dwelt, in depths below the terror fell. Again upon his string he laid, A flaming shaft, but Lakshman stayed, His arm, with gentle reasoning tried, To soothe his angry mood, and cried, Brother, reflect, the wise control, The rising passions of the soul. Let ocean grant, without thy threat, The boon on which thy heart is set, That gracious Lord will never refuse, when Rama, son of Reku, sues. He ceased, and voices from the air Fell clear and loud, Spare, Rama, spare. Canto twenty two, Ocean threatened. With angry meanness, Rama, Best of Reku's sons, the sea addressed. With fiery flood of airy rain, Thy channels will I dry and drain. And I and all the banner host Will reach on foot the farther coast. Thou shalt not from destruction save The creatures of the teeming wave, And lapse of time shall never efface The memory of the dire disgrace. Thus spoke the warrior, and prepared The mortal shaft which never spared, Known mystic weapon by the name of Brahma, Red with quenchless flame. Great terror, as he strained the bow, Struck heaven above and art below. Through echoing skies the thunder pealed, And startled mountains rocked and reeled. The art was black with sudden night, And heaven was blotted from the sight. Then ever and anon the glare Of meteors shot through murky air, And with a wild terrific sound Red lightning struck the trembling ground. In furious gusts the fierce wind blew, Tall trees it shattered and overthrew, And smiting with a giant stroke, 
huge masses from the mountain broke. A cry of terror, long and shrill, came from each valley, plain and hill, each ruined dale, each riven peak, re-echoed with a wail or shriek. While Ragu's son undaunted gazed, the waters of the deep were raised, and, still uplifted more and more, leapt in wild flood upon the shore. Still Drama looked upon the tide, and kept his post unterrified. Then from the seeding flood appeared, majestic ocean's form appeared. As rising from his eastern height, springs through the sky the lord of light. Attendant on their monarch came, sea serpents with their eyes aflame. Like lazulite mid burning gold, his form was wondrous to behold. Bright at each fairest precious stone, a chain about his neck was thrown. Calm shone his lotus eyes beneath the blossoms of his heavenly reed, and many a pearl and sea-born gem flashed in the monarch's diadem. There Ganga, tributary queen, and Sindhu by his lord were seen, Then every stream and brook renowned, then ancient story got him round. Then, as the waters rose and swelled, the king with suppliant hands upheld, his glorious head to Rama bent, and thus addressed him reverend. Air, eater, fire, art, water, true, to nature's will their cause pursue, and I, as ancient laws ordain, unfordable must still remain. Yet, Ragusan, my counsel hear, I never for love or hope or fear will pile my waters in a heap and leave a pathway through the deep. Still shall my care for thee provide an easy passage over the tide, and like a city's paven street shall be the road beneath thy feet. He ceased, and Rama spoke again. This spell is never invoked in vain. Where shall the magic shaft to spend? The fury of its might descend. Shoot, ocean cried, thine arrow fought with all its fury to the north, where scared Drumakulia lies, whose glory with thy glory vies. There dwells a wild Avira race, as vile in act, as foul of face. Fierce Deshus, who delight in ill, and drink my tributary rail. My soul no longer may endure their neighbourhood and touch impure. At these, O son of Ragu, aim thine arrow with the quenchless flame. Swift from the bow, as Rama drew, his cord, the fiery arrow flew. Art groaned to feel the wound and sent a rush of water through the rent, and famed for ever is the well of Brana where the arrow fell. Then every brook and lake beside, throughout the region Rama tried. But yet he gave a boon to bless, and fertilized the wilderness. No fell disease should taint the air, and ship and kind should prosper there. Art should produce each pleasant root, the stately trees should bend with fruit, oil, milk, and honey should abound, and fragrant herbs should clothe the ground. Then spake the king of brooks and seas, to Ragu's son in words like these, Now let a wondrous task be done by Nala Vishyakarma's son, who, born of one banner race, inherits by his father's grace a share of his celestial art, called Nala to perform his part. And he, Divinely taught and skilled, a bridge atward the sea shall build. He spoke and vanished, Nala best, of Banu chiefs the king addressed. Over the deep sea, where monsters play, a bridge, O Rama, while I lay. For, sharer of my father's skill, mine is the power and mine the will. It is vain to try each gentler art, to bribe and soothe, 
the tank was hot. In vain on such is mercy spent, It yields to naught but punishment. Through fear alone will ocean know A passage over his waves below. My mother, ere she wore her son, This boon from Vishokarma won. O Mandari, thy child shall be In skill and glory next to me. But why unbidden should I feel? Thine ear with praises of my skill. Command the banner hosts to lay Foundations for the bridge to-day. He spoke, and swift at Rama's hest Upsprang the banners from their rest. The mandate of the king obeyed, And sought the forest's mighty shade. Unrooted trees to art they drew, And to the sea the timber drew. The stately palm was bowed and bent, Ashokas from the ground were rent, And towering salts and light bamboos, And trees with flowers of varied hues, With loveliest creepers wreathed and crowned, Shook, reeled, and fell upon the ground. With mighty engines piles of stone, And seated hills were overthrown, Unprisoned waters sprang on high, in rain descending from the sky, And ocean, with a roar and swell, Heaved wildly when the mountains fell. Then the great bridge of wondrous strength Was built a hundred leagues in length. Rocks huge as autumn clouds bound fast, With cordage from the shore were cast, Then fragments of each riven hill, And trees whose flowers adorned them still. Wild was the tumult, loud the din, As ponderous rocks went thundering in. Ere set of sun, so toiled each crew, Ten legs and four the structure grew. The labours of the second day Gave twenty more of ready way. And on the fifth, when sank the sun, The whole stupendous work was done. Over the broad way the banner sped, Nor swayed it, with their countless tread, exultant on the ocean's trend, the vision stood, and maves in hand, longed eager for the onward way, and shaft impatient at the lay. Then does the Rama, trained and tried, in battle, King Sugriva cried, Come, Hanuman's broad back ascend, let Ungad help the Lakshman land, these high above the sea shall bear, their burden through the ways of air. So with Sagriva borne overhead, Ikshaku's sons the legions led. Behind the banner hosts pursued, their march in endless multitude. Some skimmed the surface of the wave, to some the air a passage gave. Amid their ceaseless roar the sound of ocean's fearful voice was drowned. As over the bridge by Nala planned, They hastened on to Lanka's strand, Where by the pleasant brooks, mid trees, Loaded with fruit, they took their ease. Canto twenty three, The Omens Then Rama, peerless in the skill, That marks each sign of good and ill, Strained his dear brother to his breast, and thus with prudent words addressed. Now, Lakshman, by the water's side, In fruitful groves the host divide, That warriors of each woodland race May keep their own appointed place. Dire is the danger, loss of friends, Of banners and of bows impends. Distained with dust the bridges blow, And art is shaken from below. The tall hills rock from foot to crown, And stately trees come toppling down. In threatening shape, with voice of fear, The clouds like cannibals appear, And rain in fitful torrents red, With sanguinary drafts is shed. Long streaks of lurid light invest The evening skies from east to west, And from the sun at times a ball, of angry fire is seen to fall. From every glen at break is heard The boding voice of beast and bird, 
from den and lair night prowlers run and shriek against the falling sun up springs the moon but hot and red kills the sad night with woe and dread no gentle loss but the gloom that heralds universal doom a cloud of dust and vapour mars the beauty of the evening stars and wild and fearful is the sky as though the wreck of worlds were nigh around our heads in boding flight whale hawk and vulture crow and kite and every bird of happy note shrieks terror from his altered throat sword spear and shaft shall strew the plain thy dread with torrents of the slain the day the banner troops shall close around the city of our foes and of cantos twenty one to twenty three cantos twenty four to twenty eight of book six of the ramayana of balmaki translated by ralph to h griffith this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Ohm123. Canto 24. The Spies Return As shine the heavens with autumn's moon, refulsant in the height of noon, so shone with light which Rama gave, that army of the bold and brave. As from the sea it marched away, in war's magnificent array, an art was shaken by the beat and trampling of unnumbered feet. Then to the giant's ears were borne the mingled notes of drum and horn, and clash of timbre smote the sky, and shouting and the battle cry. The sound of martial strains inspired each chieftain and his bosom fired, while giants from their walls replied and answering shouts the foe defied. Then Rama looked on Lanka where bright banners floated in the air, and pierced with anguish at the view, his loving thoughts to Sita flew. There prisoned by the giant lies, my lady of the tender eyes, like Rohini, the queen of stars, overpowered by the fiery Mars. Then turned he to his brother chief, and cried in agony of grief, See on the hill, divinely planned, and built by Bissokarma's hand, the towers and domes of Lanka rise in peerless beauty to the skies. Bright from afar the city shines, with gleam of palaces and shrines, like pale clouds through the region spread by Vishnu's self inhabited. Fair gardens grow and oods between, the stately domes are fresh and green, where trees their bloom and fruit display, and sweet birds sing on every spray. Each bird is mad with joy, and bees sing labouring in the bloomy trees, on branches by the breezes bowed, where the gay coil's voice is loud. This said, he ranged with warlike art each body of the host apart. There, in the centre, Rama cried, Be on God's place by Nila's side. Let Rishav of impetuous might be lord and leader on the right. And Gandhmaran, next in rank, be captain of the farther flank. Lakshman and I the hosts will lead, and Jambuban of our Zion breed, with bold Susain unused to fear and Vegadarshi guide the rear. Thus Rama spoke, the chiefs obeyed, and all the banner hosts arrayed, showed awful as the autumn sky, when clouds embattled form on high. Their arms were mighty trees overthrown, and massy blocks of mountain stone. One hope in every warlike breast, one firm resolve they onward pressed. To die in fight or batter down the walls and towers of Lanka's town. Those marshalled legions Rama eyed, 
and thus the king's griever cried now monarch ere the hosts proceed let suka raven spy be freed he spoke the banner gave consent and loosed him from imprisonment and suka trembling and afraid his homeward way to raven made loud laughed the lord of lanka's isle why hast thou stayed this weary while why is thy plumage mauled, and why do twisted cords thy pinions tie? Say, comest thou in evil plight, the victim of banner spied? He ceased, the spy his fear controlled, and to the king his story told. I reached the ocean's distant shore, thy message to the king I bore. In sudden wrath the banners rose. They struck me down with furious blows. They seized me helpless on the ground, My plumage rent, my pinions bound. They you not had long in their ire, Consider, listen, or inquire. So fickle, wrathful, rough, and rude Is the wild forest multitude. There, marshalling the banner bands, King Rama with Sugriva stands. Rama, the matchless warrior, who Virata and Kavanda slew, Kara and countless giants more, and tracks his queen to Lanka's shore. A bridge atward the sea was cast, and over it have his legions passed. Hark, heralded by horns and drums, the terrible avenger comes. Even now the giant's isle he fills, with warriors huge as clouds and hills, and burning with vindictive hate. Will thunder soon at Lanka's gate, yield or oppose him, choose between thy safety and the mightier queen. He ceased, the tyrant's eyeballs blazed, with fury as his voice he raised. No, if the dwellers of the sky, Gandervas, Fionn's assail me, I will keep the mightier lady still, nor yield her back for fear of ill. When shall my shaft sweet iron hail, My foam and ragged sun assail, Take as the bees with eager wing, Beat on the flowery trees of spring. Oh, let me meet my foe at length, And strip him of his vaunted strength. Fierce is the sun who shines afar, Stealing the light of every star. Strong as the sea's impetuous might, My ways are like the tempest's flight. But Rama knows not this, or he, in terror from my face, would flee. Canto twenty five Ravan Spies When Rama and the host he led across the sea had safely sped, thus Ravan, moved by wrath and pride, to Sukha and to Sardan cried, O counsellors, the banner host, has passed the sea from coast to coast, And desert sun has wrought A wondrous deed surpassing thought. And now in truth I needs must know The strength and number of the foe. Go ye, to Rama's host repair, And count me all the legions there. Learn well what power each captain leads, His name and fame for warlike deeds. Learn by what artist's wondrous aid That bridge at what the sea was made. Learn how the banner host came over And halted on the island shore. Mark Rama, son of Rago well, His valour, strength, and weapons tell. Watch his advisers one by one, And Lakshman, Rago's younger son. Learn with observant eyes and bring Unerring tidings to your king. He ceased, then swift in banner guise, Fought on their errand, sped the spies. They reached the banners and dismayed, Their never-ending lines surveyed. Now they try in mere despair To count the countless legions there. That crowded valley, plain and hill, That pressed about each cave and rill. Those he like over the land were spread, the endless hosts which Rama led. The bridge by thousands yet was lined, And eager myriads pressed behind. 
But sage Vivian's watchful eyes had marked the giants in disguise. He gave command the pair to siege, and told the tale in words like these. O oh, Rama, these, well known erewhile, are giant sons of Lanka's isle. Two counsellors of Ravan sent to watch the invading armament. The vision ceased at Rama's look. The Rakshas and boys quailed and shook. Then suppliant hand to hand they pressed, and thus Ikshaku's son addressed. O oh, Rama, bear the truth to speak. Our monarch Ravan bade us seek the banner legions and survey their numbers, strength, and vast array. Then Rama, frowned on hope and guide of suffering creatures, thus replied. Now, giants, if your eyes have scanned our armies, numbering every band, mark lord and chief, and gazed their fear, return to Ravan when ye will. If aught remain, if aught are near, ye fain would scan with closer view, the vision, ready at your call, will lead you forth and show you all. Think not of bonds and capture, fear, no loss of life, no peril here. For captive, helpless, and unarmed, an envoy never should be harmed. Again to Lanka's town repair, speed to the giant monarch there, and be these words to Ravan told, fierce brother of the Lord of Gold. Now, Tyran, tremble for thy sin, call up thy friends, thy kit and kin, and let the power and might be seen, which made thee bold to steal my queen. Tomorrow shall thy mournful eye behold thy bravest warriors die, and Lanka's city, tower and wall, struck by my fiery shafts, will fall. Then shall my vengeful blow descend, its rage on thee and thine to spend. Fierce is the fiery bolt that flew from heaven against the dawn of crew. May those rebellious demons sent by him who rules the firmament. Thus spake Ikshaku's son and ceased. The giants from their bonds released, lauded the king with glad accord, and hasted homeward to their lord. Before the tyrant, side by side, Suka and Sarden stood and cried. Bevision seized us, king, and fame, his helpless captives would have slain. But glorious Rama saw us, he, great-hearted hero, made us free. There in one spot our eyes beheld four chiefs on art unparalleled, who with the guardian gods may vie, who rule the regions of the sky. There Rama stood, the boast and pride of Ragu's race by Lakshman's side. There stood the sage Bevision, there, Sugriva strong beyond compare. These four alone can batter down gate, rampart wall, and Lanka's town. Nay, Rama matchless in his form, a single foe thy town would storm. So wondrous are his weapons, he needs not succor of the tree. Why speak we of the countless train that fills the valley, hill, and plain, the millions of the banner breed whom Rama and Sugriva lead? O king, be wise, content no more, and Sita to her lord restore. Canto twenty six The Banner Chiefs Not if the gods in heaven who dwell, Gundervas and the fiends of hell, in banded opposition rise against me all i yield my prize still trembling from the ungentle touch of banner hands ye fear too much and bid me heedless of the shame give to her lord the mighty dame thus spoke the king in stone reproof then mounted to his palace roof aloft over many a story raised and on the lands beneath him gazed. There, by his faithful spies, he stood, and looked on sea and hill and oud. There stretched before him far away the banner's numberless array, 
scarce could the meadows stand green beneath their trampling feet be seen he looked a while with furious eye then questioned us the nearest spy bend sudden bend the gauge and show the leaders of the banner foe tell me their heroes names and teach the valor power and might of each obedient sudden eyed the van the leaders marked and thus began the chief conspicuous at the head of warriors in the forest bred who he bends his ruthless eye and shouts his fearful battle cry whose voice with pealing thunder shakes all lanka with the groves and lakes and hills that tremble at the sound is nila for his might renowned first of the banner lords controlled by king sugriva lofty sold he who his mighty arm extends and his fierce eye on lanka bends in stature like a stately tower in colour like a lotus flower who with his wild art shaking cries the raven to the field defies is angered by the sugriva's care anointed his imperial ire in wondrous strength in martial fire peer of king bali's self his sire for rama's sake in arms arrayed like varun called to sakra's aid behind him guard by warlike bands nala the mighty banner stands the son of bisakarma he who built the bridge atward the sea look farther yet o king and mark that chieftain clothed in sandal bark it is sweeter famed among his peers a sage whom all his race reveres see in sugriva's ear he speaks then hasting back his post reseeks and taunts his practised eye to view the squadrons he has formed anew next kumud stands who roamed of yore on gomati's delightful shore feared where the waving woods invest his seat on mount sandrochen's crest next him a chieftain strong and dread comes chanda at his legion's head exulting in his warrior might he hastens burning for the fight and boasts that his unaided powers shall cast to earth thy walls and towers mark mark that chief of lion gate who views thee with a glance of hate as though his very eyes would burn the city walls to which they turn it is rampa banner king he dwells in krishnagiri's tangled dells where bindo's pleasian slopes are spread and fair sudarshan lifts his head they are listening with erected ears sarava mighty chief appears his soul is burning for the strife nor dreads the jeopardy of life he trembles as he moves for ire and bounds around his glance of fire next like a cloud that veils the skies a chieftain of terrific size conspicuous mid the banners comes with battle shout like rolling drums it is panas trained in war and tried who dwells in pariyadra's side he far away the chief who throws a glory over the martial rows that ranged behind their captain stand exulting on the ocean strand is binata the fierce in fight preeminent like dardar's height that chieftain bending down to drink on lovely vena's bowed and brink is cutter now he lifts his eyes and thee to mortal fray defies next gavaya comes whose half mind scorns all the warriors of his kind he comes to trample such his boast on lanka with his single host canto twenty seven the banner chiefs yet more remain brave chiefs who stake their noble lives for rama's sake see glorious golden-coated one who glisters like the morning sun 
whom thousands of his race surround it is harder for his strength renowned next comes a mighty chieftain he whose legions armed with rock and tree press on in numbers passing tale the ramparts of our town to scale o raven see the king advance terrific with his fiery glance caught by the bravest of his train majestic as the god of rain by january when his host of clouds about the king embattled crowds on rickshavan's high mountain nursed in narmada he slakes his toast dhumra proud arzan chief who leads wild warriors from the forest breeds his brother next in strength and age in jambavan the famous sage of yore his might and skill he lent to him who rules the firmament and indra's liberal boons repaid the chieftain for the timely aid there like a gloomy cloud that flies borne by the tempest through the skies brahmati stands he roams of yore the forest wilds on ganga's shore where elephants were struck with dread and trembling at his coming fled there on his face he loved to say it, the old hereditary hate look gaja and gavaksha show their last of battle with the foe see nala burning for the fray and nila chaffing at the lay behind the eager captain's press wild hosts in numbers numberless and each for rama's sake would fall or force his way through lanka's wall Canto twenty eight the chieftains there sudden ceased and suka broke the silence and to ravan spoke o monarch yonder chiefs survey like elephants in size are they and tower like stately trees that grow where ganga's nursing waters flow yet yeah, tall as mountain pines that fling long shadows over the snow-crowned king they all in wild kashkinda dwell and serve their lord sugriva well the gods and bright gandharva's seed they take each form that suits their need now father look o monarch where those chieftains stand a glorious pair conspicuous for their godlike frames duvid and minder are their names their lips the drink of heaven have known and brahma claims them for his own their chieftain whom thine eyes behold refulgent like a hill of gold before whose wrathful might the sea roost from his rest o torn and flee the peerless banner he who came to lanka for the mighty dame the wingard's son hanuman thou hast seen him once behold him now still nearer let thy glance be bent and mark that prince pre-eminent mid chieftains for his strength and size and splendour of his lotus eyes far to the walls his virtues shine the glory of ekshaku's line the path of truth he never leaves and still through all the duty cleaves deep in the vedas skill to wield the mystic shafts to him revealed whose flaming darts to heaven ascend and through the art a passage rend in might like him who rules the sky like yama when his wrath grows high whose queen the darling of his soul thy magic art deceived and stole there royal rama stands and longs for battle to avenge his wrongs near on his right a prince in heel like pure gold freshly burnished veer broad is his chest his eye is red his black hair curls about his head it is lakshman faithful friend who shares his brother's joys his brother's cares by rama's side he loves to stand and serve him as his better hand for whose dear sake without a sigh the warrior eight would gladly die on rama's left the vision view 
with giants for his retinue. King-making drops have dealed his head, appointed monarch in thy stead. Behold that chieftain sternly still, high towering like a rooted hill, supreme in power and pride of place, the monarch of the banner race. Raised high above his woodland kind, in might and glory, frame and mind, his head above his host he shows, conspicuous as the lord of snows. His home is far from hostile eyes, where deep in woods Kashkinda lies, a glistering chain whose flowers bedeck, with burnished gold adorns his neck. Queen Fortune, loved by gods and kings, to him her chosen favorite clings. That chain he owes to Rama's grace, and Tara and his kingly place. In him the great Sugriva know, whom Rama rescued from his foe. And of Cantos twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, and twenty eight. Cantos twenty nine to thirty three of Book six of the Ramayana of Balmiki. Translated by Ralph to H. Griffith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Om Wattu Trey. Canto 29. Sardula Captured. The giant viewed with honest can the banners and the lords of man. Then does, with grief and anger moved, in bitter tone the spies reproved. Can faithful servants hope to please their master with such fates as these, or hope ye with wild words to wring the bosom of your lord and king? Such words were better said by those who come arrayed of our mortal foes. In vain your ears have heard the sage, and listened to the law of age, untaught, though lectured many a day, the first great lesson to obey. It is marvel, Ravan reigns and rules, whose counsellors are blind and fools. Has death no terrors that ye dare, to tempt your monarch to despair? From whose imperial mandate flow, disgrace and honour, will and woe? Yea, forest trees, when flames are fanned, about their scorching trunks may stand. But naught can set the sinner free, when kings the punishment decree. I would not in mine anger spare the traitorous foe-praising pair. But years of faithful service plead for pardon, and they shall not bleed. Henceforth to me be dead, depart, far from my presence and my heart. Thus spoke the angry king, the two, cried, long live Ravan, and withdrew. The giant monarch turned and cried, to strong Mahudar at his side, Go thou, and spies more faithful bring, more duteous to their lord the king. Swift at his wound, Mahudar shed, and came returning at the head of long tried messengers who bent before their monarch reverend. Go quickly hence, said Ravan, scan with keenest eyes the foreman's plan. Learn who, as nearest friends, advise and mould each secret enterprise. Learn when he wakes and goes to rest, sound every purpose of his breast. Learn what the prince intends to day, watch keenly all, and come away. With joy they heard the words he said, then with Sardul at their head, about the giant king they went, with circling paces reverent. By fair Suvela's grassy side, the chiefs of Ragu's race they spied, where, shaded by the waving oud, the vision and Sugriva stood. 
a while they rested there and viewed the banners countless multitude the vision with observant eyes knew at a glance the chance pies and bade the warriors of his train bind the rash foes with cord and chain sardulas is the sin he cried he knit the banner's hands had died but rama from their fury freed the captive in his utmost need and merciful at sight of her loosed all the spires and bade them go then home to lanka's mona fled the giant chiefs discomfited canto thirty sardula's speech they told their lord that rama still lay waiting by suvela's hill the tyrant flushed with angry glow heard of the coming of the foe and thus with close inquiry pressed sardula spokesman for the rest why art thou sad night rover speak has grief or terror changed thy cheek have the wild banners hostile bands assailed thee with their mighty hands sardula heard but scarce might speak his trembling tones were faint and weak o oh, giant king in vain we try the purpose of the foe to spy their strength and number none may tell and rama guards his legions well he leaves no hope to prying eyes and parley with the chiefs denies each road and path a banner god of mountain size has closed and barred soon as my feet an entrance found by giants was i seized and bound and wounded sore i fell beneath their fists and knees and hands and teeth then trembling bleeding while night dead to rama's presence was i led he in his mercy stooped to save and freedom to the captive gave which rocks and shattered mountains he has breezed his way atward the sea and he and all his legions wait and battled close to lanka's gate soon will thy host thy wall assail and swarming on the rampart scale now o my king his consort yield or arm thee with the sword and shield this choice is left thee choose between thy safety and the mightel queen Canto thirty one The Magic Head The tyrant's troubled eye confessed the secret fear that filled his breast. With dread of coming woe dismayed, he called his counsellors to aid. Then sternly silent, deep in thought, his chamber in the palace sought. Then, as the surest hope of all, the monarch bade his servants call bid Dujiva, whom magic skill made master of the means of ill then spake the lord of lanka's isle come sita with thine arts beguile with magic skill and deftest care a head like rama's own prepare this head long shafts and mighty bow to janak's daughter will we show he ceased bid Dujiva obeyed and wondrous magic skill displayed and raven for the art he showed an ornament of prize bestowed then to the grove where sita lay the lord of lanka took his way pale wasted weeping on the ground the melancholy queen he found whose thoughts in utmost stress of ill were fixed upon her husband's tail the giant king approached the dame declared in tones of joy his name then heeding not her wild distress bespake her stern and pitiless the prince to whom thy fancies cling though loved and wooed by lanka's king who slew the noble colour he is slain by warriors sent by me thy living root is hewn away thy scornful pride is tamed to-day thy lord in battle's front has died and sita shall be robin's bride 
hence idle thoughts thy hope is fled what wilt thou see there with the dead rise child of janak rise and be the queen of all my queens and me incline thine ear and i will tell dear lady how thy husband fell he breezed his way across the sea with countless troops to fight with me then setting sun had flushed the west when on the shore they took their rest weary with toil no watch they kept securely on the sands they slept prehostus troops assailed our foes and smelt them in their deep repose scars could their bravest prove their might they perished in the dark of night Fake spear and sword they wrecked well upon the sleeping myriads fell first in the fight prehostus sword reft of his head thy slumbering lord rose the din the vision rose the captive of surrounding foes and lakshman through the ooze that spread around him where his banners fled hanuman fell one deadly stroke the neck of king sugriva broke and mindo sank and david lay gasping in blood his life away the banners died or fled dispersed like cloudlets when the storm has burst some rose aloft in air and more ran to the sea and filled the shore on shore in woods on hill and plain our conquering giants left the slain does my victorious host overthrew the banners and the husband slew see rudely stained with dust and red with dropping blood the severed head then tying to a rakshas slave the ruthless king his mandate gave and straight with dujiva who bore the head still wet with dripping gore the arrows and the mighty bow bent down before his master low with dujiva cried ravan place the head before the lady's face and let her see with weeping eyes that low in death her husband lies before the queen the giant laid the beauteous head his art had made and ravan cried thine eyes will know these arrows and the mighty bow with fame of this by rama strung the art and heaven and hell have rung prahasta brought it hither when his hand had slain thy prince of man now without queen thy hopes resign forget thy husband and be mine canto thirty two sita's lament again her eyes with tears overflowed she gazed upon the head he showed gazed on the bow so famed of yore the glorious bow which rama bore she gazed upon his cheek and brows the eyes of her beloved spouse his lips the lustre of his hair the priceless gem that glittered day the features of a lord she knew and pierced with anguish at the view she lifted up her voice and cried kai kai art thou satisfied now all thy longings are fulfilled the joy of ragu's race is killed and ruined is the ancient line destroyer by that fraud of thine ah what offence o oh, cruel dame what fault in drama couldst thou blame to drive him clad in hermit dress with sita to the wilderness great trembling seized her fame and she fell like a stricken plant and tree as lie the dead she lay at length slowly regaining sense and strength on the dear head she fixed her eye and cried with very bitter cry ah when thy cold dead cheek i view my hero i am murdered too then first the faithful woman's eyes see sorrow when her husband dies when thou my lord wast nigh to save some steely hand thy dead wound gave 
Thou art not dead. Rise, hero, rise. Long life was thine, as spake the wise, Whose words I win are ever true, For fate lies open to their view. Our Lord, and shall thy head recline On our cold breast, forsaking mine, Counting her chill lap dearer far, than I and my caresses are. Ah, is it thus these eyes behold, Thy famous bow adorned with gold, Whereon of yore I love to bind Sweet garlands that my hands had twined? And hast thou sought in heaven a place Amid the founders of thy race, Where in the home deserved so well Thy sires and desolate dwell? Or dost thou shine a brighter star in skies where blessed mortals are, forsaking in thy lofty scorn the race wherein thy sires were born. Turn to my gaze, O oh, turn thine eye, why are thy cold lips silent? Why, when first we met as youth and maid, when in thy hand my hand was laid, thy promise was thy steps should be through life in duty's path with me. Remember, faithful still, thy vow, And take me with thee even now. Is that broad bosom where I hung, That neck to which I fondly clung, Where flowery garlands breathed their scent, By hungry dogs and vultures rent? Shall no funeral honours grace The parted lord of Ragu's race, Whose bounty liberal fees bestowed, For whom the fires of worship glowed? Cauchelia, wild with grief, will see One sole survivor of the tree, Who in their hermit garments went To the dark woods in banishment. Then at her cry shall Lakshman tell How, slain by night, the banners fell, How to thy side the giants crept, And slew the hero as he slept. Thy fate and mine the queen will know, and broken-hearted die of woe. For my unworthy sake, for mine, Rama, the glory of his line, Who breezed his way across the main, Is basely in a puddle slay. And I, the graceless wife he wed, Have brought this ruin on his head. Me too on him, O Ravan, slay, The wife beside her husband lay. By his dear body let me rest, Cheek close to cheek, and breast to breast. My happy eyes I then will close, And follow where the Rama goes. Thus cried the miserable dame, When to the king a warder came, Before the giant monarch bowed, And said that, followed by a crowd, Of counsellors and lords of state, Prahasta stood before the gate, and sent by some engrossing care craved audience of his master day the anxious tyrant left his seat and hastened forth the chief to meet then summoning his nobles all to counsel in his regal hall when lanka's lord had left the queen the head and bow no more were seen the giant king his nobles eyed and terrible as yama cried o oh, faithful lords the time is come gather our hosts with beat of drum nigh to the town our foeman draws be prudent nor reveal the cause the nobles listened and obeyed swift were the gathered troops arrayed and countless rovers of the night stood burning for the hour of night Canto thirty three, Sodoma. But Sodoma, of gentler mood, with beating eyes the mourner viewed, stole to her side and softly told glad tidings that her heart consoled, revealing with sweet voice and smile the secret of the giant's guile. She, one of those who night and day, watching in turns by Sita lay. The Rakshas born felt pity's touch, And loved the hapless lady much. I heard, she said, 
thy bitter cry, how drowned speech and thy reply, for hiding in the thicket near, no word or tone escaped my ear. When Raven hastened forth, I bent my steps to follow as he went, and learned the secret cause that drove the monarch from the Ahsoka grove. Believe me, queen, thou needst not weep, for Rama slaughtered in his sleep. Thy lion lord of man defies, by day attack, by night surprise. Can even giants slay with ease, vast hosts who fight with brandished trees? For whom, with eye that never slips, his constant watch thy Rama keeps? Lord of the mighty arm and chest, of worldly warriors first and best, whose fame through all the regions rings, proud scion of a hundred kings, who goads his life and loves to lend his saving succor to a friend, whose bow no hand but his can strain, thy lord, thy Rama, is not slain. Obedient to his master's will, a great magician trained in ill, with daftest art surpassing thought that marvellous illusion wrought let rising hope thy grief dispel look up and smile for all is well and gentle lakshmi fortune's queen regards thee with a favouring mien thy rama with his banner train has thrown a bridge athwart the main has led his countless legions over and reigns them on this southern shore these eyes have seen the hero stand guard by his hosts on lanka's strand and breathless pious each moment bring fresh tidings to the giant king and every peer and lord of state is called to counsel and debate she ceased the sound long loud and clear of gathering armies smote her ear, where a call of drum and shell rang out the timbre and the battle shout. And while the din the echoes woke, again to Janak's child she spoke. Hear, lady, hear the loud alarms that call the Rakshas troops to arms. From stable and from stall they lead the elephant and nighing steed. Brace harness on with daftest care, And chariots for the fight prepare. Swift over the trembling ground carrier, Mailed horsemen armed with axe and spear. And here and there, in road and street, The terrible battalions meet. I hear the gathering, near and far, The snorting steed, the rattling car. Bold chieftains, leaders of the brave, Press densely on, like wave on wave, And bright the evening sunbeams glance, On helm and shield, on sword and lance. Hark, lady, to the ringing steel, Hark to the rolling chariot wail, Hark to the metalled coursers neigh, And drums loud thunder far away. The queen of fortune holds thee dear, For Lanka's troops are struck with fear, and Rama with the lotus eyes, like Indra, monarch of the skies, with conquering arm will slay his foe, and free his lady from her woe. Soon will his breast support thy head, and tears of joy thine eyes will shed. Soon by his mighty arm and breast, the long lost rapture will thou taste, and Rama meet for highest bliss will gain his garden in thy kiss. End of Cantos 29-33 to 33. Cantos 34-40 to 40 of Book 6 of the Ramayana of Balmiki Translated by Ralph D. H. Griffith this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Om123. Canto 34. Sarama's Tidings Does Sarama her story told 
and Sita's spirit was consoled. As when the first fresh rain is shed, the parching art is comforted. Then, filled with chill for Sita's sake, again in gentle tones she spake, and, skilled in arts that soothe and please, addressed the queen in words like these. Thy husband, lady, will I seek, say the fond words thy lips would speak, and then, unseen of any eye, back to thy side will swiftly fly. My airy flights are speedier far than Garura's and the tempest are. Then Sita spake, her former woe still left her accents faint and low. I know thy steps, which not can stay, can arch through heaven and hell their way. Then if thy love and changeless will Would solve the helpless captive still, Go forth and learn each plot and guile, Planned by the lord of Lanka's isle. With magic art, like maddening wine, He cheats these weeping eyes of mine, Torments me with his sweet, nor spares, Reproof of flattery, threats of prayers. These gods surround me night and day, my heart is sad, my senses stray, And helpless in my woe I fear, The tyrant raven even here. Then Sarama replied, I go, To learn the purpose of thy foe, Soon by thy side again to stand, And tell thee what the king has planned. She sped, she heard with eager ears, the tyrant speak his hopes and fears, Where gathered at their master's call, The nobles filled the council hall. Then swiftly to her promise true, Back to Ahsoka Grove she flew. The lady on the grassy ground, Longing for her return she found, Who with a gentle smile to greet The envoy led her to a seat. Through her worn frame a shiver ran, As Sarama her tale began. There stood the royal mother, she, Besought her son to set thee free, And to her counsel, tears and prayers, The elder nobles added theirs. O oh, be the metal queen restored, With honour to her angry lord, Let Jenistan's unhappy fight Be witness of the hero's might. Hanuman over the waters came, And looked upon the guarded dame. Let Lanka's chiefs who fought and fell The prowess of the leader tell. In vain they sued, in vain she wept, His papa still unchanged he kept. As clings the miser to his gold, He would not lose thee from his hold. No, never till in death he lies, Will Lanka's lord release his prize. Soon slain by Rama's arrows all, The giants with their king will fall, And Rama to his home will lead His black-eyed queen from bondage freed. An awful sound that moment rose From Lanka's fast approaching foes, Where drum and shell in mingled peal Made art in terror rock and reel. The hosts within the walls arrayed, stood trembling, in their hearts dismayed, thought of the tempest soon to burst, and Lanka's lord their reign caused. Canto 35 My Levant Speech The fearful notes of drum and shell upon the ear of Ravan fell, one moment quailed his half to look, One moment in his fear he shook. But soon recalling wonted pride, His counsellors he sternly eyed, And with a voice that thundered true, The council hall began anear. Lords, I have heard, your tongues have told, How Rago's son is fierce and bold. The Lanka shore has breezed his way, and he deletes his wild array. 
I know your might, in battle tried, Fighting and conquering by my side. Why now, when such a foe is near, Looks eye to eye in silent fear? He ceased, his mother's sire well known, For wisdom in the council shown. My Levan, sage and faithful guide, Thus to the monarch's speech replied, Long reigns the king in safe repose, Unmoved by fear of vanquished foes, Whose feet by saving knowledge led, In justice path the light to tread, Who knows to sheet the sword or wield, To order peace to strike or yield, Prefers, when foes are stronger, peace, And bids a doubtful conflict cease, now, king, the choice before thee lies, make peace with Rama, and be wise. This day the captive queen restore, who brings the foe to Lanka shore. The sire by whom the walls are swayed, of your the gods and demons made. With these injustice sided, those fair justice for her champions chose. Still, justice dwells with gods above, Injustice, fiends and giants love. Thou through the walls that fear thee long, Hast scorned the right and loved the wrong, And justice, with thy foes allied, Gives might righteousness to their side. Thou, guided by thy wicked will, Hast found delight in deeds of ill, and sages in their holy rest have trembled by thy power oppressed. But they who check each vain desire are clothed with might which burns like fire. In them the power and glory live, which chill and saintly fervor give. Their constant task, their soul delight in worship and each holy rite. To chant aloud the Veda hymn, Nor let the sacred fires grow dim. Now through the air like thunder ring, The echoes of the chants they sing. The vapours of their incense rise, And veil with cloudy pale the skies. And Rakshas might grows weak and faint, Killed by the power of sage and saint. By Brahma's boon thy life was screened, from God, Gandharva, Yaksha, fiend, but banners, man and bears arrayed against thee now, thy shores invade. Red Matthews, heralds of despair, flash frequent through the lurid air, foretelling to my troubled mind the ruin of the Rakshas kind. With awful thundering overhead, clouds black as night are densely spread. And oozing from the gloomy pall, Great drops of blood on Lanka fall. Dogs roam through house and shrine to steal The sacred oil and cod and meal. Cats pair with tigers, hounds with swine, And asses' foals are born of kine. In these and countless signs I trace The ruin of the giant race. It is Vishnu's self who comes to storm Thy city, clothed in Rama's form. For, well I win, no mortal hand, The ocean with a bridge has panned. O giant king, the dame release, And see to Ragu's son for peace. Canto Tata VI, Ravan's Reply but Ravan's breast with fury swelled, And thus he spake by death impelled, While under brows in anger bent, Fierce glances from his eyes were sent. The bitter words which thou misled, By friendly thought hast fondly said, Which praise the foe and counsel fear, Unheeded fall upon mine ear. How canst thou deem a mighty foe, This Rama, who, in stress of woe, Seeks, banished as his sire decreed, Assistance from the banner breed? 
am I so feeble in thine eyes, though feared by dwellers of the skies, whose might in many a battle shown the glorious race of giants own? Shall I, for fear of him, restore the lady whom I heed abhor? Exceeding fair like beauty's queen, without her well loved lotus seen. Around the chief let Lakshman stand. So grieve and each banner band, soon, my Levan, thine eyes will see this boasted Rama slain by me. I in the brunt of war defy the mightiest warriors of the sky, and if I stoop to combat man, shall I be weak and trampled down? This mangled trunk the foe may rend, but Ravan never can yield or bend. And be it vice of virtue, I, this nature never will belie. What marvel, if he bridge the sea, why should this deed disquiet thee? This, only this, I surely know, back with his life he shall not go. Thus in loud tones the king exclaimed, and mute stood my Levan ashamed. His reverent head he humbly bent and slowly to his mansion went. But Ravan stayed, and deep in care, held counsel with his nobles there. All entrance to secure and close, and guard the city from their foes. He bade the chief Brahasta wait, commander at the eastern gate, the fierce Mahuda, strong and brave, to keep the southern gate he gave. Where Mahaprasya's might should aid, The chieftain with his hosts arrayed. To guard the west, no chief more fit, He placed the warrior in Rajit, His son, the giant's joy and boast, Surrounded by a rakshas host. And mighty sudden hastened forth, With Sukha to protect the north. I will myself, the monarch cried, be present on the northern side. These orders for the wall's defence the tyrant gave, then parted tents, and by the hope of victory fired, to chambers far within retired. Canto thirty seven Preparations Lords of the legions of the Ood, the chieftains at Bavisian stood and strangers in the foreman's land their hopes and fears in council scanned see see where lanka's towers ascend which ravan's power and might defend which god's gandharva's fiends would fail to conquer if they durst assail how shall our legions pass within the city of the foe to win with massive walls and portals barred, Which Ravan keeps with surest guard. With anxious looks the walls they eyed, And says the vision thus replied, These lords of mine can answer, They, within the walls have found their way, The foreman's plan and order learned, And hither to my side returned. Now, Rama, let my tongue declare how Ravan's hosts are stationed there. Brahasta heads in warlike state, his legions at the eastern gate. To guard the southern portal stands Mahoda, guard by Rakshas bands, where mighty Mahabharsha sent by Ravan's hest his aid has lent. Guard of the gate that fronts the west is valiant Indrajit the best of warriors ravan's joy and pride and by the youthful chieftain's side are giants armed for fierce attacks with sword and mace and battle axe not where approach is dreaded most the king encompassed with a host of giants trained in war whose hands wield maces swords and lances stand all these are chiefs whom Ravan chose, as mightiest to richest his foes. And each a countless army leads, 
with elephants and cars and steeds. Then Rama, while his spirit burned, for battle words like these returned. To eastern gate be Nila's care, opponent of Prahasta dare, and southern gate with troops arrayed, let angered Bali's son invade. The gate that fronts the falling sun Shall be by brave Hanuman won. Soon through its portals shall he lead His myriads of banner breed. The gate that fronts the north shall be Assailed by Lakshman and by me. For I myself have sworn to kill The tyrant who delights in ill. Armed the boon which Brahma gave, the gods of heaven he loves to brave, and through the trembling walls he flies, oppressor of the just and wise. Thou, Jambavan, and thou, O king, of banners, all your bravers bring, and with your hosts in dance array, straight to the centre, force your way. But let no banner in the stall disguise him in human form. Ye chief, so change your shapes at will, retain your banner semblance till. Does when we battle with the foe, both man and banners will e'er know. In human form will seven appear, myself, my brother Lakshman here, the vision and the four he led, from Lanka's city when he fled. Does Rakusan the chiefs at rest, then? Gazing on Savela's crest, transported by the lovely sight, he longed to climb the mountain height. Canto thirty eight, the ascent of Savela. Come, let us scale, the hero cried, this hill with various metals dyed. This night, upon the breezy crest, Sugriva, Lakshman, I will rest. With sage vivision, faithful friend, His counsel and his law to lend. From those tall peaks, each eager eye, The foreman's city shall espy, Who from the oud my darling stole, And brought long anguish on my soul. Thus spake the lord of man, and bent, His footsteps to the steep ascent, And Lakshman, drew in wheel and woe, Next followed with his shafts and bow. The vision followed next in place, The sovereign of the banner race. And hundreds of the forest kind, Trunked with impetuous feet behind. The chiefs in woods and mountains bred, Fast followed to Savela's head, And gazed on Lanka bright and fair, As some gay city in the air. On glittering gates, on ramparts raised, By giant hands the chieftains gazed. They saw the mighty hosts that, skilled, In arts of war the city filled, And ramparts with new ramparts lined, And swarthy hosts that stood behind, With spirits burning for the fight, They saw the giants from the height. And from a hundred throats rang out Defiance and the battle shout. Then sank the sun with dying flame, And soft the shades of twilight came, And the full moon's delicious light Was shed upon the tranquil night. Canto taught in nine, Lanka They slept secure, the sun arose, and called the chieftains from repose. Before the wandering banners gay, With grove and garden, Lanka lay, Where golden buds the jumpak showed, And bright with bloom Ashoka glowed, And palm and sal and many a tree, With leaf and flower were fair to see. They looked on oud and lawn and glade, On emerald grass and dusky shade, where creepers filled the air with scent, And luscious fruit the branches bend, Where bees in ebriate loved the throng, And each sweet bird was loud in song, 
the wandering banners passed the bound that circled the enchanting ground and as they came a sweet breeze through the odorous alleys softly blew some banners at their king's behest onward to bannered lanka pressed while startled by the stranger's tread the birds and deer before them fled art trembled at each step they took and lanka at their shouting shook bright rose before their wandering eyes tricota's peak that kissed the skies and clouded with flowers of every hue afar its golden radiance tree most fair to see the mountain's head a hundred leagues in length was spread there raven's town securely placed the summit of tricota grazed over leagues of land she stretched in pride a hundred long and twenty wide they saw a lofty wall and fold the city built of blocks of gold they saw the beams of morning fall on dome and fame within the wall bright with the sign that mansion gives where Vishnu in his glory lives white crested like the lord of snows before them raven's palace rose high on a thousand pillars raised with gold and precious stone it blazed guarded by the giant warders crown an ornament of lanka's town canto forty ravan attacked still stood the son of Reku where savela's peak rose high in air and with sugriba turned his eye to scan each quarter of the sky there on tricota nobly planned and built by bisokarma's hand he saw the lovely Lanka dressed in all her varied beauty rest. High on a tower above the gate, the tyrant stood in kingly state. The royal canopy displayed, above him lent its grateful shade. And servants from the giant band, his cheek with jeweled chowries fanned. Red sandal over his breast was spread his ornaments and robe were red there shows a cloud of darksome here with golden sunbeams flashing through while rama and the chiefs intent upon the king their glances bent up sprang sugriva from the ground and reached the turret at a bound unterrified the banner stood and wrought with wondrous hardihood the king in bitter words addressed and does his scorn and hate expressed king of the giant race in me the friend and slave of rama see lord of the world he gives me power to smite thee in thy fenced tower while through the air his challenge rang at raven's face the banner sprang snatched from his head the kingly crown and dashed it in his fury down straight at his foe the giant flew his mighty arms about him tree with strength resistless swung him round and dashed him panting to the ground unharmed amid the storm of blows swift to his feet sugriva rose again in furious fight they met with streams of blood their limbs were wet each grasping his opponent's waist thus with their branches interlaced which crimson with the flowers of spring from side to side the bridges swing in furious wrestle you may see the king shook and the sea tree they fought with fists and hands alike prepared to parry and to strike long time the doubtful combat waged with matchless strength and fury raised each fiercely struck each guarded well till closing from the tower they fell and grasping each other's throat lay for an instant in the moat they rose and each in fiercer mood the sanguinary strife renewed while matched in size and strength and skill 
they fought the dubious battle still while sweat and blood their limbs bedewed they met retreated and pursued each stratagem and art they tried stood front to front and swerved aside his hand they while the giant stayed and called his magic to his aid but the brave sugriva swift to know the guileful purpose of the foe gained with light leap the upper air and breath and strength and spirit there then joyous as for victory won returned to ragu's royal son and of cantos thirty four to forty Cantos forty one to forty four of Book Six of the Ramayana Balmiki, translated by Ralph D. H. Griffith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Om One Two Three. Canto forty one, Rama's envoy. When Rama saw each bloody trace on King Sugriva's limbs and face, he cried while sorrowing at the view. His arms about his friend he threw. Two venturous chieftain, kings like us, Bring not their lives in peril does, Nor save when counsel shows the need, Attempt so bold, so rash a deed. Remember, I the vision all, Have sorrowed, fearing for thy fall. O oh, do not, for us all I speak, These desperate adventures seek. I could not, cried Sugriva, broke, upon the giant king to look, nor challenge to the deadly strife the fiend who robed thee of thy wife. Now, Lakshman, Marshal, Rama cried, our legions where the woods are wide, and stand we ready to oppose the fury of our giant foes. This day our armies shall ascend the walls which Ravan's powers defend. And floods of Raksha's blood shall stain the streets encumbered with the slain. Down from the peak he came and viewed the banners ordered multitude, each captain there for battle bond, each fiery eye to Lanka turned. On where the royal brothers led to Lanka's walls the legion sped. The northern gate where giant foes swarmed round their monarch rama chose where he in person might direct the battle and his troops protect what arm but his the post might keep where strong as he who sways the deep mid thousands armed with bow and mace stood raven mightiest of his race the eastern gate was nila's post where marshal stood his banner host and Minda, with his troops arrayed, and Duvid stood to lend him aid. The southern gate was Ungard's care, who ranged his bold battalions there. Hanuman by the port that faced, the setting sun his legions placed. And King Sugriva held the oud, east of the gate where Robin stood. On every side the myriads met, and Lanka's walls of clothes beset that scarce the roving gale could win a passage to the hosts within loud as the angry ocean's roar when wild waves lash the rocky shore ten thousand thousand throats upsent a shout that tore the firmament and lanka with each grove and brook the tower and wall and rampart shook the giant's heart and were appalled then ragu's son to ungard called and led by kingly duty gave this order merciful as brave go ungod ravan's presence seek and does my words of warning speak how art thou changed and fallen now o monarch of the giants thou whose impious fury you'd not spare saint nymph or spirit of the air whose foot in hofty triumph trod on yaksha king and serpent god how art thou fallen from thy pride which brahma's favour fortified 
with myriads at thy Lanka's gate, I stand my righteous ire to say it, and punish thee with sword and flame, the tyrant fiend who stole my dame. Now show the might, employ the guile, O monarch of the giant's isle, who had stole the helpless dame away, call up thy power and strength to day. Once more I warn thee, Rakshas king, this hour the mighty lady bring, and yielding while there yet is time, seek suppliant pardon for the crime. Or I will leave beneath the sun, no living Rakshas, no, not one. In vain from battle wilt thou fly, or borne on pinions seek the sky. The hand of Rama shall not spare, his fiery shaft shall smite thee there. He ceased, and Ungard bowed his head. Tense like embodied flame he sped, And lighted from his airy road Within the Rakshas king's abode. There sate the centre of a ring Of counsellors the giant king. Swift through the circle Ungard pressed, And spoke with fury in his breast. Sent by the lord of Goshal's land, His envoy here, O king, I stand. Ungad, the son of Bali, fame, has happily taught thine years my name. Thus in the words of Rama I am come to warn thee or defy. Come forth, and fighting in the vein, display the spirit of a man. This arm shall slay thee, tyrant, all, thy nobles, kit and kin shall fall. And out and heaven, from terror freed, shall joy to see the oppressor bleed. The vision, when his foe is slain, Anointed king in peace shall reign. Once more I counsel thee, repent, Avoid the mortal punishment, Which honour due the dame restore, And pardon for thy sin implore. Loud rose the king's infuriate cry, Seize, seize the banner, let him die. Four of his band their lord obeyed, and eager hands on Ungard laid. He, purposing his strength to show, gave no resistance to the foe, but swiftly round his captors cast his mighty arms and held them fast. Fierce shout and cry around him rang, light to the palace roof he sprang. There his detaining arms unwound and hauled the giants to the ground. Then smiting with a fearful stroke, a turret from the roof he broke, As when the fiery leaven sent By Indra from the clouds has rent The proud peak of the lord of snow And flung the stony mass below. Again with loud terrific cry He sprang exulting to the sky, And joyous for his errand done Stood by the side of Ragu's son. Canto 42 The Sally Still was the cry, the banner foes, Around the leaguered city close. King Ravan from the terrace gazed, And saw, with eyes where fury blazed, The banner host in serried ranks, Pressed the moat and lined the banks, And, forced in splendour and in place, The lion lord of Ragu's race. And Rama looked on Lanka where, Gay flags were streaming to the air, and while keen sorrow pierced him through, His loving thoughts to Sita flew. There, there in deep affliction lies, My darling with the fawn-like eyes. There on the cold bare ground she keeps, Sad visil and for Rama weeps. Mad with the thought, George, George, he cried, Let art with Raksha's blood be dyed. Responsive to his call rang out a loud universal shout, As myriads filled the moat with stone, Trees, rocks, and mountains of a throne, And charging at their leader's call, Pressed forward, furious to the wall. Some in their headlong ardour scaled, The ramparts height, the guard assailed, And many a ponderous fragment rent From portal, tower, and battlement, Whose gates adorned with varnished gold, were loosened and lifted from their hold, And post and pillar with a sound, Like thunder, fell upon the ground. At every portal, east and west, 
and north and south the chieftains pressed each in his post appointed led his myriads in the forest bred charge let the gates be opened wide charge charge my giants raven cried they heard his voice and loud and long rang the wild clamour of the throng and shell and drum their notes upsent and every martial instrument fought at the bidding of their lord from every gate the giants poured as when the waters rise and swell huge waves preceding waves impel again from every banner throat a scream of fierce defiance smote the welkin art and sea and sky re-echoed with the awful cry the roar of elephants the neigh of horses eager for the fray the frequent clash of warrior steel the rattling of the chariot wheel fierce was the deadly fight opposed in terrible array they closed as when the gods of heaven and raised with rebel fiends wild battle waged ache spear and mace were wielded well at every blow a banner fell but shivered rock and brandished tree brought many a giant on his knee to perish in his town beneath the deadly wounds of nail and teeth canto forty three the single combats brave chiefs of each opposing side their strength in single combat tried fierce in receipt the fight began with angered in the battle's van some party strongest of his race stood with prajakya face to face hanuman jambavali met in mortal opposition said bevishan brother of the lord of lanka raised his threatening sword and singled out with eyes aglow which read satrugna for his foe the mighty gaza Tappan sought and nila with nikumva fought sugriva banner king defied fierce breghas long in battle tried and lakshman fearless in the fight encountered birupaksha's might to meet the royal rama came while the Gniketu fierce as flame mitragana he who loved to strike his foeman and his friend alike with rasmiketu known and feared wherever his ponderous flag was reared and yegyakop whose delight was ruin of the sacred rite these met and fought with thousands more and trampled art was red with gore swift as the bolt which indra sends when fire from heaven the mountain rends smote indrajit with furious blows on angad queller of his foes but angad from his foreman tore the murderous mace the warrior bore and low in dust his coursers rolled his driver and his car of gold struck by the shafts prajanka sped the banner chief some party bled but heedless of his gashes he crushed down the giant with a tree then carbon jambavali smote hanuman on the chest and throat but at the car the banner rushed and chariot steeds and rider crushed Sugriva whirled the huge tree round and struck fierce Prakas to the ground. One arrow shot from Lakshman's bow laid mighty Birupaksha low. His giant foes round Rama pressed and shot their shafts at head and breast. But when the iron shower was pent, four arrows from his bow he sent, and every missile deftly sped, cleft from the trunk a giant head. Canto forty four The Night The Lord of Light had sunk and set, night came, the foemen struggled yet, and fiercer from the gloom of night grew the wild fury of the fight. Scarce could each warrior's eager eye the foemen from the friend descry. Rakshas Obana say, cried each, and foe near foemen by his speech. Why will thou fly, O warrior, stay? Turn on the foe, and rend and slay. Such were the cries, such words of fear, Smote through the gloom each listening ear. Each swordy rover of the night, Whose golden armor flashed with light, Showed like a towering hill, and breast, 
by burning oats about his waist. The giants at the banners flew, and ravening ate the foes they slew. With mortal bite like serpent's fang, the banners at the giants sprang, and car and steeds and they who bore the pennons fell bedewed with gore. No serried band, no farm array, the fury of their charge could stay. Down went the horse and rider, down went giant lords of high renown. Though midnight shade was dense and dark, with skill that swerved not from the mark, their bows the sons of Reku drew, and each keen shaft a chieftain slew. Uprose the blinding dust from meads, ploughed by the cars and trampling steeds, and where the warriors fell the flood was dark and terrible with blood. Six giants singled Rama out, and charged him with a furious shout, loud as the roaring of the sea, when every wind is raging free. Six times he shot, six heads were cleft, six giants dead on art were left. Nor ceased he yet, his bow he strained, and from the sounding weapon rained a storm of shafts whose fiery glare filled all the region of the air, and chieftains dropped before his aim, like moths that perish in the flame. Art glistened where the arrows fell, as shines in autumn nights a dell, which fireflies flashing through the gloom, with momentary light illume. But Indrajit, when Bali's son, the victory over the foe had won, saw with a fury kindled eye his mangled steeds and driver die. Then lost in air, he fled the fight and vanished from the victor's sight. The gods and saints glad voices raised, and angered for his virtue praised, and Ragusans bestowed the meed of honor due to valorous deed. Compelled his shattered car to quit, race filled the soul of Indrajit, who broke not, strong by Brahma's grace, defeat from one of banner race. In magic mist, concealed from view, his bow the treacherous warrior drew, and Ragu's sons were forced to feel the tempest of his winged steel. Then when his arrows failed to kill the princes who defied him still, he bound them with a serpent noose, the magic bond which none might lose. End of Cantos 41, 42, 43, and 44《Cantos 45-48 to 48 are from Book 6 of the Ramayana of Balmiki, translated by Ralph T. H. Griffith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Ong123. Canto 45 Indrajit's Victory Brave Rama, burning still to know the station of his artful foe, Gave to ten chieftains, made the best of all the host, his high behest. Swift rose in air the banner band, each region of the sky they scanned. But Ravan's son, by magic skill, checked them with arrows swifter still. When streams of blood from chest and side, the dauntless banner's limbs had died, the giant in his misty shroud showed like the sun obscured by cloud. Like serpents hissing through the air, his arrows smote the princely pair, and from their limbs at every rent a stream of rushing blood was sent. Like kingshook trees they stood, that show, in spring their blossoms crimson glow. Then Indrajit with fury eyed Ikshaku's royal sons and cried, Not mighty Indra can assail, or see me when I choose to veil my form in battle, and can ye, children of art, contend with me? The airy news this hand has shot has bound you with a hopeless knot, and slaughtered by my shafts and bow, to Yama's hall this hour ye go. He spoke and shouted, then anew the arrows from his bowstring flew, and pierced 
well aimed with perfect art each limb and joint and vital part transfixed with shafts in every limb their strength relaxed their eyes grew dim as two tall standards side by side with each sustaining rope untied fall levelled by the howling blast so art's majestic lords at last beneath the airy tempest reeled and prostrate pressed the battlefield canto forty six in rajit's triumph the banner chiefs whose piercing eyes scanned eagerly the earth and skies saw the brave brothers wounded sore transfixed with darts and stained with gore the monarch of the banner race with wise vision reached the place Angad and Nila came behind, and others of the forest kind, and standing with Hanuman they lamented for the fallen pair. Their melancholy eyes they raised, in fruitless search a while they gazed. But magic arts the vision knew, not hidden from his keener view, though veiled by magic from the rest, the son of Ravan stood confessed fierce in rajit with savage pride the fallen sons of raghu eyed and every giant heart was proud as does the warrior cried aloud slain by mine arrows rama lies and closed in death are lakshman's eyes dead are the mighty princes who dushant and kara smote and slew the gods and fiends may toil in vain to freedom from the binding chain the half the chief my father's dread who drove him sleepless from his bed while lanka troubled like a brook in rain time heard his name and shook he whose fierce hate our lives pursued lies helpless by my shafts subdued now fruitless is each wondrous deed wrought by the rains the forests breed and fruitless every toil at last like cloudlets when the rains are past then rose the shout of giants loud as thunder from the bursting cloud when deeming rama dead they raised their voices and the conqueror praised still motionless as lie the slain the brothers pressed the bloody plain no sigh they drew no breath they heaved and lay as though of life bereaved proud of the deed his art had done to lanka's town went ravan's son where as he passed all fear was stilled and every heart with triumph filled sugriba trembled as he viewed each fallen prince with blood bedeared and in his eyes which overflowed with tears the flame of anger glowed calm cried the vision calm thy fears and stay the torrent of thy tears still must the chance of battle change and victory still delight to range our cause again will she befriend and bring us triumph in the end this is not dead each prince will break the spell that holds him and awake nor long shall numbing magic bind the mighty arm the lofty mind he seized his finger bathed in dew across sugriva's eyes he drew from dulling mist his vision freed and spoke these words to sweet the need no time is this for fear away with fainting heart and wake delay now even the tear which sorrow wrings from loving eyes destruction brings up on to battle at the head of those brave troops which rama led or guardian by his side remain till sense and strength the prince regain soon shall the transbound pair revive and from our hearts all sorrow drive though prostrate on the earth he lie deem not that rama's death is nigh deem not that lakshmi will forget or leave her darling champion yet rest here and be thy heart consoled ponder my words be firm and bold i foremost in the battlefield will rally all who faint or yield 
their staring eyes betray their fear they whisper each in other's ear they when they hear my cheering cry and see the friend of rama nigh will cast their gloom and fears away like faded wreaths of yesterday thus calmed he king sugriva's dread then gave new heart to those who fled fierce indrajit his soul on fire with pride of conquest sought his sire raised reverent hands and told him all the battle and the princess fall rejoicing at his foe's defeat up sprang the monarch from his seat caught by his giant courtiers round his warrior son his arms he wound close kisses on his head applied and hard again how rama died canto forty seven sita still on the ground where rama slept their fateful watch the banners kept their anger stood overwhelmed with grief and many a lord and warrior chief and ranged in densest mass around their three armed legions held the ground far ranged each banner's eager eye now swept the land now sought the sky all fearing if a leaf was teared a rakshas in the sound they heard the lord of lanka in his hall rejoicing at his foeman's fall commanded and the warders came who ever watched the mighty dame go cried the rakshas king relate to janak's child her husband's fate low on the art her rama lies and dark in death are lakshman's eyes bring forth my car and let her ride to view the chieftains side by side the lord to whom her fancy turned for whose dear sake my love she spawned lies smitten as he fiercely led the battle with his brother dead lead forth the royal lady go her husband's lifeless body show then from all doubt and terror free her softening heart will turn to me they heard his speech the car was brought that shady grove the warders sought where morning rama night and day the melancholy lady lay they placed her in the car and true the yielding air they swiftly flew the lady looked upon the plain looked on the heaps of banner slain saw where triumphant in the fight thronged the fierce rovers of the night and banner chieftains mournful eyed watched by the fallen brother's side there stretched upon his gory bed each brother lay as lie the dead with shattered mail and splintered bow pierced by the arrows of the foe when on the pair her eyes she bent burst from her lips a wild lament her eyes overflowed she groaned and sighed and thus in trembling accents cried canto forty eight sita's lament false are they all proved false to day the prophets of my fortune day who in the tranquil time of old a blessed life for me foretold predicting i should never know a childless dame's a widow's woe false are they all their words are vain for thou my lord and life art slain false was the priest and vain his law who blessed me in those days of yore by rama's side in bliss to reign for thou my lord and life art slain they hailed me happy from my birth proud empress of the lord of art they blessed me but the thought is pain for thou my lord and life art slain ah fruitless hope each glorious sign that stamps the future queen is mine with no ill omened mark to show a widow's crossing hour of woe they say my hair is black and fine they praise my brow's continuous line my even teeth divided well my bosom for its graceful swell they praise my feet and fingers oft they say my skin is smooth and soft and call me happy to possess the twelve fair marks that bring success but ah what profit shall i gain 
thou, O my lord and life, art slain. The flattering seer, in former days, My gentle girlish smile would praise, And swear, that holy water shed, By Brahman hands upon my head, Should make me queen, a monarch's bride, How is the promise verified? Matchless in might the brother slew, In Jenistan the giant crew, And forced the indomitable sea, to let them pass to rescue me. Theirs was the fiery weapon hurled by him who rules the watery world. Theirs the dire shaft by Indra sped. Theirs was the mystic Brahma's head. In vain they fought, the bold and brave, a coward's hand their dead wounds gave. By secret shafts and magic spell, the brothers, peers of Indra, fell. That fell, if seen by Rama's eye, one moment had not lived to fly. Though swift as thought, his utmost speed had failed him in the hour of need. No might, no tear, no prayer may stay, fate's dark inevitable day. Nor could their matchless valor shield these heroes on the battlefield. I sorrow for the noble dead, I mourn my hopes for ever fled. But chief, my weeping eyes overflow for Queen Kaushalya's hopeless woe. The widowed queen is counting now each hour prescribed by Rama's vow, and lives because she longs to see once more her princely sons and me. Then Trijatha of gentler mould, though Rakshas born, her grief consoled. Dear queen, thy causeless woe dispel. Thy husband lives and all is well. Look round, in every banner face, the light of joyful hope I trace. Not thus, believe me, shine the eyes of warriors when their leader dies. An army, when the chief is dead, flies from the field dispirited. Here, undisturbed in farm array, the banners by the brothers stay. Love prompts my speech, no longer grieve, Ponder my counsel and believe. These lips of mine from earliest youth have spoken and shall speak the truth. Deep in my heart thy gentle grace and patient virtues hold their place. Torn, lady, torn once more thine eye, though pierced with shafts the heroes lie. On brows and cheeks with blood drops wet, the light of beauty lingers yet. Such beauty never is found in death, But vanishes with parting breath. O oh, trust the hope these tokens give, The heroes are not dead, but live. Then Sita joined her hands and sighed, O oh, may thy words be verified. The car was turned, which fleet as thought, The morning queen to Lanka brought. They led her to the garden where, Again she yielded to despair, Lamenting for the chiefs who bled On art's cold bosom with the dead. End of Cantos 45, 46, 47 and 48of Book Six of the Ramayana of Balmiki, translated by Ralph T. H. Griffith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Om One Two Three. Canto Forty Nine. Rama's Lament. Ranged round the spot where Rama fell, each banner chief stood sentinel. At length, the mighty hero broke. The trance that held him and awoke. He saw his senseless brother died with blood from head to foot and cried. What have I now to do with life or rescue of my present wife? When does before my weeping eyes slain in the fight my brother lies? A queen like Sita I may find among the best of womankind, but never such a brother tried. In war, my guardian, friend, and guide. If he be dead, the brave and true, 
I will not leave, but perish too. How reft of Lakshman shall I meet my mother and Kaike greet? My brother's eager question broke, and fond Sumitra's longing look. What shall I say, overwhelmed with shame, to cheer the miserable dame? How, when she hears her son is dead, will her sad heart be comforted? Ah, nay, for longer life unfit, this mortal body will I quit. For Lakshman slaughtered for my sake, from sleep of death will never wake. Ah, when I sink oppressed with care, thy gentle voice could soothe despair. And art thou, O my brother, killed? Is that dear voice for ever stilled? Cold are those lips, my brother, whence came never word to breed offence. Ah, stretched upon the gory plain, my brother lies untimely slain. Numbed is the mighty arm that slew the leaders of the giant crew, transfixed with shafts, with blood streams red, thou liest on thy lowly bed. So sinks to rest, his journey done, made airy raise the crimson sun. Thou, when from home and sire I fled, the woods wild ways with me would tread. Now close to thine, my steps shall be, for I in death will follow thee. The vision now will cause my name, and Rama as a braggart blame, who promised, but his word is vain, that he in Lanka's isle should reign. Return, Sagriva, reft of me, lead back thy banners over the sea, nor hope to battle face to face with him who rules the giant race. Well have ye done and nobly fought, and death in desperate combat sought. All that heroic might can do, brave banners, has been done by you. My faithful friends I now dismiss. Return, my last farewell is this. Bedewed with tears was every cheek, as does the banners heard him speak. The vision on the field had stayed, the banner hosts who fled dismayed. Now lifting up his mace on high, with martial step the chief drew nigh. The hosts who watched by Rama's side beheld his shape and giant stride. It is he, it is Ravan's son, they thought, and all in flight their safety sought. Canto 50 The Broken Spell Sugriva viewed the flying crowd and thus to Ungad cried aloud. Why run the trembling hosts as flee, storm-scattered bugs across the sea? Dost thou not mark, the chief replied, transfixed with shafts, with bloodstreams dyed, with airy toils about them wound, the sons of Ragu on the ground? That moment brought the vision near, Sigriva knew the cause of fear, and ordered Jambavan, who led the bears, to check the hosts that fled. The king of bears his hest obeyed, the banner's headlong flight was stayed. A little while the vision eyed, the brothers fallen side by side, his giant fingers wet with dew, across the hero's eyes he drew. Still on the pair his sad look bent, and spoke these words in wild lament. Ah, for the mighty chiefs brought low, By coward hand and stilted blow, Brave pair, who loved the open fight, Slain by that rover of the night. Dishonest is the victory won, By Indrajit, my brother's son. I on their might for aid relied, And in my cause they fought and died. Lost is the hope that soothed each pain, I live, but live no more to reign, while Lanka's lord, untouched by ill, exiles in safe distance still. Not does, Sugriva said, repine, for Lanka's isle shall still be thine, nor let the tyrant and his son exult before the fight be done. These royal chiefs, though now dismayed, freed from the spell by Garu's aid, Triumphant, yet the foe shall meet, and lay the robber at their feet. 
his hope the banner monarch told and does bevision's grief consoled then the susheen who at his side expectant stood sagriva cried when these regain their strength and sense fly bear them to kishkinda hands here with my legions will i stay the tyrant and his kinsmen slay and rescued from the giant king the mighty lady will i bring like glory lost of old restored by sacre heaven's almighty lord Sushain made answer hear me yet when gods and fiends in battle met so fiercely fought the demon crew so wild a storm of arrows flew that heavenly warriors faint with pain sank smitten by the ceaseless rain prehospity with harp and spell cured the sore wounds of those who fell and skilled in arts that heal and save new life and sense and vigour gave far on the milky ocean shore still grow those harps in boundless store let swiftest banners deed a speed and bring them for our utmost need those hopes that on the mountain spring let parnas and some party bring for well the wondrous leaves they know that heal each wound and life bestow beside that sea which charmed of yore the umbrit on its surface bore where the white billows lash the land genders fair height and drona stand Planted by gods, each glittering steep looks down upon the milky deep. Let fleet Hanuman bring us thence those harps of wondrous influence. Meanwhile, the rushing wind grew loud, red lightnings flashed from banks of cloud, and mountains shook, the wild waves rose, and smitten with resistless blows, unrooted fell each stately tree that fringed the margin of the sea all life within the waters feared then as the banners gazed appeared king garur's self a wondrous sight disclosed in flames of fiery light from his fierce eye in sudden dread all serpents in a moment fled and those transformed to shaft the bound the princess vanished in the ground on ragu's sons his eyes he bent and hailed the lord's army potent then over them stooped the feathered king and touched their faces with his wing his healing touch their pangs allayed and closed each rent the shafts had made again their eyes were bright and bold again the smooth skin shone like gold again within their shell enshrined came memory and each power of mind and from those numbing bonds released their spirit chill and strength increased form on their feet they stood and then does rama spake the lord of man by the dear grace in sorest need from deadly bonds we both are freed to these glad eyes as welcome now as aja or my sire art thou who art thou mighty being say thus glorious in thy bright array he ceased the king of birds replied while flashed his eye with joy and pride in me o ragu's son behold one who has loved thee from of old garur the lord of all that fly thy guardian and thy friend am i not all the gods in heaven could lose these numbing bonds this serpent news where it fears Ravan's son, renowned for magic arts, your limbs had bound. Those arrows fixed in every limb were mighty snakes transformed by him. Bloodthirsty rays, they live beneath the art and slay with venom teeth. An smite the lord of Lanka's isle, but guard you from the giant's guile, who each dishonest art employ and by deceit brave foes destroy so shall the tyrant raven bleed and sita from his power be freed thus garur spake then swift as thought the reason of the sky he sought where in the distance like a blaze of fire he vanished from the gaze 
Then the glad banners joy rang out in many a wild tumultuous shout, and the loud roar of drum and shell startled each distant sentinel. Canto fifty one, Tumraksha Sally. King Raven, where he sat within, heard from his hall the deafening din, and with a spirit ill at ease addressed his lords in words like these that warlike shout those joyous cries loud as the thunder of the skies upsent from every banner throat some new-born confidence to note hark how the sea and trembling shore re-echo with the banner's roar though airy chains securely twined both rama and his brother bind Still must a fierce triumphant shout Disturb my soul with rising doubt. Swift envoys to the army send, And learn what change these cries portend. Obedient at their master's call, Fleet giants clomb the circling wall. They saw the banners formed and led, They saw Sugriva at their head. The brothers from their bonds released, and hope grew faint and fear increased. Their faces pale with doubt and dread, back to the giant king they sped, and to his startled ear revealed the tidings of the battlefield. The flush of rage a while gave place to chilling fear that changed his face. What, cried the tyrant, are my foes? freed from the binding snakes that close with venom clasp round head and limb bright as the sun and fierce like him the spell a god bestowed of yore the spell that never failed before if arts like these be useless how shall giant strength avail us now go forth tom raksha good at need the bravest of my warriors lead Force to the foe thy conquering way, And Rama and the banner slay. Before his king, with reverence dear, Tumraksha bowed him, and with rear, Around him at his summons came, Fierce legions led by chiefs of fame, While armed with sword and spear and mace, They hurried to the gathering place, And rushed to battle, borne at speed, by elephant and car and steed. Canto fifty two, Tomraksha's Dead. The banners saw the giant foe, fall from the gate in gallant show, rejoiced with warriors' fierce delight, and shouted, longing for the fight. Near came the hosts, and nearer yet, dire was the tumult as they met, as Serried line to line opposed, the banners and the giants closed. Fierce on the foe the banners rushed, and wielding trees the foremost crashed. But, feathered from the heron's wing, with eager flight from sounding string, against them shot with surest aim, a ceaseless storm of arrows came, and pierced in head and chest and side, full many a banner fell and died. They perished slain in fierce attacks, With sword and pike and battle-axe. But myriads following undismayed, Their valour in the fight displayed. Unnumbered banners rent and torn, With shaft and spear to art were borne, But crushed by branchy trees and blocks, Of jagged stone and shivered rocks, Which the wild banners wielded well, The bravest of the giants fell. Their trampled banners strewed the fields, And broken swords and spears and shields, And, crossed by blows which none might stay, Cars, elephants, and riders lay. Tomraksha turned his furious eye, And saw his rooted legions fly. Steel dauntless, with terrific blows, He struck and slew his foremost foes. At every blow, at every trust, He laid a banner in the dust. So fell they neat the sword and lance, In battle's wild Gandharva dance, Where clang of bow and clash of sword, 
did duty for the silvery cord and hoofs that rang and steeds that neighed loud concert for the dancers made so fiercely from the rakshas bow his arrows rained in ceaseless flow the banner legion stormed and fled to all the winds discomfited hanuman saw the banners fly he heaved a mighty rock on high his keen eyes flashed with wrathful fire and rapid as the wind his sire strong as the rushing tempests are he hauled it at the advancing car swift through the air the missile sang the giant from the chariot sprang air crushed by the terrific blow lay pole and wheel and flag and bow hanuman's eyes with fury blazed a mountain's rocky peak he raised poised it on high in act to throw and rushed upon his giant foe to mraksha saw he raised his mace and smote hanuman on the face who maddened by the wound's keen pang again upon his foeman sprang and on the giant's head the rock descended with a gisless shark crushed was each limb a shapeless mass he lay upon the blood-stained grass and of cantos forty nine to fifty two cantos fifty three to fifty eight of book six of the ramayana of balmiki translated by ralph d h griffith this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by om one two three Canto fifty three Vajradanshtra's Sally When Ravan in his palace heard the mournful news his wrath was teared, and gasping like a furious snake, to Vajradanshtra does he speak Go forth, my fiercest captain, lead the bravest of the giants breathe. Go forth, the sons of Ragu slay and by their side Sugriva lay. He ceased. The chieftain bowed his head, and fought with gathered troops he sped. Cars, camels, steeds were well arrayed, and coloured banners over them played. Ring stacked his arms, about his waist the life-protecting mail was braced, and on the chieftain's forehead set glittered his cap and coronet borne on a bannered car that glowed with golden sheen the warrior rode and footmen marched with spear and sword and bow and mace behind their lord in pomp and pride of warlike state they sallied from the southern gate but saw as on their way they sped dread signs around and overhead for there were Matthias falling fast, though not a cloud its shadow cast, and each ill omened bird and beast, foreboding death, the fear increased. While many a giant slipped and reeled, falling before he reached the field, they met in mortal strife engaged, and long and fierce the battle raised. Spears, swords uplifted, gleamed and flashed and many a chief to art was dashed. A siegeless storm of arrows rained, and limbs were pierced and blood disdained. Terrific was the sound that filled the air, and every heart was chilled. As hurtling over the giants flew, the rocks and trees which banners trill. Fierce as a hungry lion when, unwary deer approach his den, ungered, his eyes with fury red, waving a tree above his head. Rushed with wild charge, which none could stay, where stood the giant's dance array. Like tall trees levelled by the blast, before him fell the giant's fast. An art that streamed with blood was thrown, with warriors, steeds, and cars overthrown. Canto 54 Vajradanstra's death. The giant leader fiercely reigned, 
his arrows and the fight maintained. Each time the clanging cord he drew, his sudden shaft a banner slew. Then, as the creatures he has made, fly to the Lord of Life for aid, to Ungad from protection fled, the banner hosts dispirited. Then raised the battle fiercer yet, when Ungad and the giant met. A hundred thousand arrows hot, with flames of fire, the giant shot, and every shaft he deftly sent, his foeman's body pierced and rent. From Ungad's limbs ran floods of gore, a stately tree from art he tore, which, maddened as his glaciers bled, he hurled at his opponent's head. His bow the dauntless giant drew, to meet the tree swift arrows flew, checked the huge missile's onward way, and harmless on the art it lay. A while the banner chieftain gazed, then from the art a rock he raised, rent from a thunder split in height, and cast it with registless might. The giant marked, and mace in hand, leapt from his chariot to the sand. Ere the rough mass descending broke, the seat, the wheel, the pole, and yoke. Then Ungard seized the shattered hill, whereon the trees were flowering still, and with full force the jagged peak fell crashing on the giant's cheek. He staggered, reeled, and fell. The blood gushed from the giant in a flood. Reft of his might, each sense astray, a while upon the sand he lay. But strength and wandering sense returned, again his eyes with fury burned, and with his mace upraised on high, he wounded Ungard on the tie. Then from his hand his mace he drew, and closer to his foreman drew. Then with their feast they fought and smote, on brow and cheek and chest and throat. Worn out with toil, their limbs bedewed with blood, the strife they still renewed, like mercury and fiery moors, met in fierce battle mid the stars. A while the deadly fight was stayed, each armed him with his trusty blade, whose sheet with tinkling bells supplied, and golden net adorned his side, and grasped his ponderous ladder shield, to fight till one should fall or yield. Unnumbered wounds they gave and took, their wearied bodies reeled and shook. At length, upon the sand that drank, streams of their blood, the warriors sank. But as a serpent rears his head, sore wounded by a pigeon's tread, so hungered, fallen on his knees, yet gathered strength his sword to seize, and severed by the glittering blade, the giant's head on art was laid. I omit cantos fifty five, fifty six, fifty seven, and fifty eight, which relate how a company and prahuster sally out and fall. There is little novelty of incident in these cantos, and the results are exactly the same as before. In canto fifteen, a company, at the command of Ravan, leads forth his troops. Evil omens are seen and heard. The enemies meet, and many fall on each side, and banners transfixed with arrows, the Rakshases crushed with rocks and trees. In Canto 56, a company sees that the Rakshases are worsted, and fights with redoubled rage and vigour. The banners fall fast under his nets of arrows. Hanuman comes to the rescue. He throws mountain peaks at the giant which are dexterously stopped with flights of arrows, and at last beats him down and kills him with a tree. In Canto 57, Ravan is seriously alarmed. He declares that he himself, Kumbhakarn or Prahasta, must go forth. Prahasta sallies out, vaunting that the fowls of the air shall eat their fill of banner flesh. In Canto 58, the two armies meet, Dire is the conflict, ceaseless is the rain of stones and arrows. At last Nila meets Prahasta and breaks his bow. Prahasta leaps from his car, 
and the giant and the banner fight on foot. Nila, with a huge tree, crushes his opponent, who falls like a tree when its roots are cut. End of Cantos 53 to 58. Cantos 59 and 60 of Book 6 of the Ramayana of Balmiki. Translated by Ralph T. H. Griffith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Om123. Canto 59. Ravan Sally. They told him that the chief was killed, and Ravan's breast with rage was filled. Then, fiercely moved by wrath and pride, thus to his lords the tyrant cried, No longer, nobles, may we show this lofty scorn for such a foe, by whom our bravest with his train of steeds and elephants is slain. Myself this day will take the field, And Ragu's sons their lives shall yield. High on the royal car that glowed, With glory from his face he rode, The tambour shell and drum pealed out, And joyful was each giant's shout. A mighty host with eyeballs red, Like flames of kindled fire he led. He passed the city gate and veered, arrayed the banner multitude. Those wielding massy rocks, and these armed the stems of uptorn trees. And Rama, with his eyes aglow, with warlike ardor, viewed the foe. And thus the brave vision, best of weapon wielding chiefs, addressed. What captain leads this bright array? Where lances gleam and banners play, And thousands armed with spear and sword Await the bidding of their lord. Seest thou, the vision answered, One, whose face is as the morning sun, Preeminent for hugest frame. A company is the giant's name. Behold that chieftain, chariot born, Whom Brahma's chosen gifts adorn. He wails a bow like Indra's own, A lion on his flag is shown. His eyes with baleful fire are lit, It is Ravan's son, it is Indrajit. There brandishing in mighty hands, His huge bow, Atikaya stands. And that proud warrior over whose head A moon-bright canopy is spread, Whose might in many a battle tried, has named imperial Indra's pride. Who wears a crown of burnished gold, Is Lanka's lord, the lofty soul. He ceased, and Rama knew his foe, And laid an arrow on his bow. Woe to wretch, he cried, Whom fate abandons to my deadly hate. He spoke, and found by Lakshman's side, the giant to the fray defied. The lord of Lanka bade his train, Of warriors by the gates remain, To guard the city from surprise, By Rama's forest-born allies. Then as some monster of the sea, Cleaves swift advancing billows, he, Charged with impetuous onset true, The foe, and cleft the host in two. Sugriva ran, the king to meet, a hill uprooted from its seat. He hurled, with trees that graced the height, against the rover of the night. But cleft with shafts that checked its way, harmless upon the heart it lay. Then fiercer Ravan's fury grew, an arrow from his side he drew, swift as a thunderbolt aglow, with fire and launched it at the foe. Through flesh and bone a way it found, And stretched the griever on the ground. So Shane and Nala saw him fall, Gavaksha, Gavaya, heard their call. And poising hills in act to fling, They charged amain the giant king. They charged, they hauled the hills in vain, He checked them with his airy rein, 
and every brave assailant felt the piercing wounds his missiles dealt then smitten by the shafts that came keen fleet and thick with certain aim they fled to rama your defence against the oppressor's violence then reverent palm to palm applied thus lakshman to his brother cried to me my lord the task and trust to lay this giant in the dust go then said rama bravely fight beat down this rover of the night but he unmatched in bold emprise fears not the lord of art and skies keep on thy good with keenest eye thy moments of attack espy let hand and eye in due accord protect thee with the bow and sword then lakshman round his brother trio his mighty arms in honour dear bent lowly down his reverent head and onward to the battle sped hanuman from afar beheld how raven shafts the banners quelled to meet the giant's car he ran raised his right arm and thus began if brahma's boon thy life has screened from yaksha god gandharva fiend with these contending fear no ill but tremble at the banner's tail with fury flashing from his eye the lord of lanka made reply strike banner strike the fray begin and hope eternal fame to win this arm shall prove thee in the strife and end thy glory and thy life remember cried the wingard's son remember all that i have done my prowess king thou knowest well shown in the fight when aksha fell with heavy hand the giant smote hanuman on the chest and throat who reeled and staggered to and fro stunned for a moment by the blow till mustering strength his hand he reared and struck the foe whom indra feared his huge limbs bent beneath the shock as mountains in an earthquake rock and from the gods and sages pealed shouts of loud triumph as he reeled but strength returning nerved his frame his eyeballs flashed with fiercer flame no living creature might resist that blow of his tremendous fist which fell upon hanuman's flank and to the ground the banner sank no sign of life his body showed and robin in his chariot rode at nila and his airy rain fell on the captain and his train fierce nila stayed his banner band and heaving with his single hand a mountain peak with vigorous swing hurled a huge missile at the king hanuman life and strength regained born for the fight and thus complained why coward giant didst thou flee and leave the doubtful fight with me seven mighty arrows keen and fleet the giant launched the hill to meet and all its force and fury stayed the harmless mass on earth was laid and raised the banner chief beheld the mountain peak by force repelled and rained upon the foe a shower of trees uptorn with bronze and flower still his keen shafts which pierced and rent each flying tree the giant sent still was the banner doomed to feel the tempest of the winged steel then smarting from that arrowy storm the banner chief condensed his form and lightly leaping from the ground on raven's standard footing found then springing unimpeded down stood on his bow and golden crown the banner's nimble lips amazed akshaku's son who stood and gazed the giant raising in his heart laid on his bow a fiery dart the banner on his flagstaff eyed and thus in tones of fury cried while well, skilled in magic law art thou but will thine art avail thee now see if thy magic will defend thy life against the dart i send thus raven spake the giant king 
and loosed the arrow from the string. It pierced with direst fury sped, the banner with its flaming head. His father's might, his power innate, preserved him from the threatened fate. Upon his knees he fell, disdained, with streams of blood, but life remained. Steel Raven for the battle burned, at Lakshman next his car he turned, and chose the main with furious show, straining in mighty hands his bow. Come, Lakshman cried, essay the fight, leave foes unworthy of thy might. Thus Lakshman spoke, and Lanka's lord heard the dread thunder of the cord, and mad with burning rage and pride, in hasty words like these replied, Joy, joy is mine, O Ragu's son, thy fate to-day thou canst not shun. Slain by mine arrows, thou shalt tread the gloomy pathway of the dead. Thus as he spoke, his bow he drew, and seven keen shafts at Lakshman flew. But Ragu's son, with surest aim, cleft every arrow as it came. Does with fleet shafts each warrior shot against his foe and rested not. Then one choice weapon from his tall, by Brahma's self bestowed of yore, fierce as the flames that end the world, the giant king at Lakshman hurled. The hero fell, and racked with pain, scarce could his hand his bow retain, but sense and strength resumed their seat and lightly springing to his feet he struck with one tremendous stroke and robin's bow in splinters broke from luxman's cord three arrows flew and pierced the giant monarch through sore wounded robin closed and round ikshaku's son his strong arms wound with strength unrivalled brahma's gift he strove from out his foe to lift shall i he cried, who overthrow Mount Meru and the Lord of Snow, and heaven and all who dwell therein, be foiled by one of Rama's kin. But though he heaved and toiled and strained, unmoved Ikshaku's son remained, his frame by those huge arms compressed, the giant's God-given force confessed, but conscious that himself was part of Vishnu, he was firm in heart. The Wingard's son the fight beheld, And rushed at Ravan, rays impelled. Down crashed his mighty hand, the foe, Full in the chest received the blow. His eyes grew dim, his knees gave way, And senseless on the art he lay. The Wingard's son to Rama bore, Deep wounded Lakshman stained with gore, He whom no fight might lift or bend, was light as air to such a friend. The dart that Lakshman's side had cleft, untouched, the hero's body left, and flashing through the air afar, resumed its place in Ravan's car. And waxing well, though wounded sore, he felt the deadly pain no more. And Ravan, though with deep wounds pained, slowly his sense and strength regained and furious still and undismayed on bow and shaft his hand he laid then hanuman to rama cried i send my back great chief and ride like vishnu born on garu's wing to battle with the giant king so burning for the dire attack rode rama on the banner's back and with fierce accents loud and slow does give defiance to the foe while his strained bowstring made a sound like thunder when it shakes the ground stay monarch of the giant stay the penalty of sin to pay stay whether wilt thou fly and how escape the death that waits thee now no word the giant king returned his eyes with flames of fury burned his arm was stretched his bow was bent and swift his fiery shafts were sent red torrents from the banner flowed then rama near to ravan strode and with keen darts that never failed 
the chariot of the king assailed. With surest aim his arrows flew, the driver and the steeds he slew, and shattered with the pointed steel, car, flag, and pole, and yoke, and wheel, as Indra hurls his bolt to smite, Mount Meru's have an ascending height. So Rama, with a flaming dart, struck Lanka's raven near the heart, who reeled and fell beneath the blow, and from loose fingers dropped his bow. Bright as the sun, with crescent head, from Rama's bow an arrow sped, and from his forehead, proud no more, cleft the bright coronet he wore. Then Rama stood by Ravan's side, and to the conquered giant cried, Well hast thou fought, thine arm has slain, strong heroes of the Barna train. I will not strike or slay thee now, for weary fain to fight art thou. To Lanka's town thy footsteps bend, and there the night securely spend. Tomorrow come with car and bow, and then my prowess shalt thou know. He ceased. The king in humbled pride rose from the art and not replied. With wounded limbs and shattered crown, he sought again his royal town. Canto 60 Kumbhakarna roused With humbled heart and broken pride, through Lanka's gate the giant hired, crushed like an elephant beneath a lion's spring and murderous teed, all like a serpent neat the wing and talons of the feathered king. Such was the giant's wild alarm at arrow shot by Rama's arm. Shafts with red lightning round them curled like Brahma's bolts that end the world. Supported on his golden throne with failing eye and humble tone, Giants, he cried, the toil is vain, fruitless the penance and the pain. If I, whom Indra owed his peer, secure from God's immortal fear, my soul remembers now too late Lord Brahma's words who spoke my fate. Tremble, proud giant, does they ran, and dread thy death from slighted man. Secure from gods and demons live, and serpents by the boon I give. Against their power the life is charmed, but against man is still unarmed. This Rama is the man foretold by Anaranya's lips of old. Fear, Robin, basest of the base, for of mine own imperial race, a prince in after time shall spring, and thee and thine to ruin bring, and beat with thee. Ere she died, slain by my ruthless insult, cried, A sign of my royal line shall slay vile wretch, both thee and thine. She in a later birth became King Janak's child, now Rama's dame. None this warrior fought all this fate, and Uma, when I moved her hate, and Ramba and the lovely child of Burun by my touch defiled. I know the fated hour is nigh. Hence, captains, to your stations fly. Let warders on the rampart stand, place at each gate a watchful band. And terror of immortal eyes, let mightiest Kumbhakarn rise. He slumbering, free from care and pain, by Brahma's cause for months has lain. But when Prahasta's death he hears, Mine own defeat and doubts and fears, the chief will rise to smite the foe, and his unrivalled valour show. Then Ragu's royal sons and all the banners, knit his might will fall. The giant lords his hest obeyed, they left him trembling and afraid, and from the royal palace strode to Kumbhakarn's vast abode. They carried garlands sweet and fresh, and reeking loads of blood and flesh. They reached a dwelling where he lay, a cave that reached a league each way, sweet with fair blooms of lovely scent, and bright with golden ornament. 
his breathings came so fierce and fast scarce could the giants break the blast they found him on a golden bed with his huge limbs at length outspread they piled their heaps of vanishing near fat buffaloes and boars and deer with wreaths of flowers they fanned his face and incense sweetened all the place each raised his mighty voice as loud as thunders of an angry cloud and cons their steering summons gave that echoed through the giant's cave then on his breast they rained their blows and high the wild commotion rose when cymbal vied with drum and horn and war cries on the gale upborne through all the air loud discord spread and struck with fear the birds fell dead but still he slept and took his rest then dashed they on his shaggy chest clubs maces fragments of the rock he moved not once nor felt the shock the giants made one effort more with shell and drum and shout and roar club mallet mace in fury plied rained blows upon his breast and side and elephants were ours to aid and camels groaned and horses neighed they drenched him with a hundred pails they tore his ears with teeth and nails they bound together many a maze and beat him on the head and face and elephants with ponderous tread stamped on his limbs and chest and head the unusual weight his slumber broke he started shook his sides and woke and heedless of the wounds and blows yawning with thirst and hunger rose his jaws like hell gaped fierce and wide dire as the flame neat ocean's tide red as the sun on meru's crest the giant's face his wrath expressed and every body breath he drew was like the blast that rushes through the mountain cedars up he raised his awful head with eyes that blazed like comets dire as death in form who treads the worlds with fire and storm the giants pointed to their stars of buffaloes and deer and boars and straight he gorged him with a flood of wine with marrow flesh and blood he ceased the giants ventured near and bent their lowly heads in fear then cumbergan a glared with eyes still heavy in their first surprise still drowsy from his troubled rest and thus the giant ban at rest how have you dared my sleep to break no trifling cause should bid me wake say is all well or tell the need that drives you with unruly speed to wake me mark the words i say the king shall tremble in dismay the fire be quenched and indra slain ere ye shall break my rest in vain your baksha answered chieftain here no god of fiend excites our fear but man in arms our walls assail we tremble lest their might prevail for vengeful rama vows to slay the foe who stole his queen away and matchless for his warlike deeds a host of mighty banners leads ere now a monstrous banner came laid lanka waste with ruthless flame an akshar raven's offspring slew with all his warrior retinue our king who never trembled yet for heavenly hosts in battle met at length the general dread has shed overthrown by rama's arm and sped he ceased and kumbhakarn spake i will go forth and vengeance take will tread the hosts beneath my feet then triumph flashed our king will meet our giant bands shall eat their fill of banners whom this arm shall kill the prince's blood shall be my draught the chieftains shall by you be coughed he spake and with an eager stride that shook the art to raven hide 
End of Cantos 59 and 60Cantos 61 to 65 of Book 6 of the Ramayana of Balmiki, translated by Ralph D. H. Griffith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Om 123. Canto 61 The Banner's Alarm. The son of Ragu, near the wall, saw proudly towering over all. The mighty giant stride along, attended by the warrior throng. Hot Kumbhakarna's heavy feet awake the echoes of the street, and with the lust of battle fired, taunt to Vivision and inquired. Vivision, tell that chieftain's name, who rears so high his mountain frame, with glittering helm and lion eyes, preeminent in might and size. Above the rest of giant boat, he towers the standard of the art, and all the banners when they see the mighty warrior torn and flee. In him the vision answered, No, Visharva's son, thy mortal's foe, fierce Kumbhakar, mightier far than gods and fiends and giants are. He conquered Yama in the fight, and Indra trembling owned his mind. His arm the gods and fiends subdued, Gandharvas and the serpent brood. The rest of his gigantic race Are wondrous strong by God-giving grace. But nature at his bought to him Gave matchless power and strength of limb. Scarce was he born, fierce monster, when He killed and ate a thousand men. The trembling race of man appalled on Indra for protection called, and he, to save the suffering world, his bolt at Kumbhakarna hurled. So awful was the monster's yell, that fear on all the nations fell. He, rushing on with furious roar, a tusk from huge Arava tore, and dealt the god so dire a blow, that Indra reeling left his foe. And with the gods and mortals fled, to Brahma's throne dispirited. O oh, Brahma, thus the suppliants cried, some refuge for this woe provide. If does his maw the giant sate, soon will the world be desolate. The self-existent calmed their woe, and spake in anger to their foe. As thou wast born, Pulestia's son, that worlds might weep by thee undone, Thou like the dead henceforth shalt be, Such is the cause I lay on thee. Senseless he lay, nor spoke nor steered, Such was the power of Brahma's word. But Ravan, troubled for his sake, Thus to the self-existent spake. Who lops the tree his care has reared, When golden fruit has first appeared, Not does, O Brahma, deal with one, Descended from thine own dear son. Still thou, O Lord, thy word must keep. He may not die, but let him sleep. Yet fix a time for him to break The chains of slumber and awake. He ceased, and Brahma made reply. Six months in slumber shall he lie, And then arising for a day Shall cast the numbing bonds away. Now Ravan, in his doubt and dread, Has roused the monster from his bed, Who comes in this the hour of need, On slaughtered banner's flesh to feed. Each banner, when his awestruck eyes, Behold the monstrous chieftain flies. With hopeful words their minds deceive, And let our trembling hosts believe, They see no giant but displayed, A lifeless engine deftly made. Then Rama called to Nila, Haste, let troops near every gate be placed, And armed with fragments of the rock, And trees, each lane and alley block. Thus Rama spake, the chief obeyed, And swift the banners stood arrayed, 
as when the black clouds their battle form, the summit of a hill to stall. Canto sixty two, Ravan's request. Along bright Lanka's royal road, the giant roused from slumber strode, while from the houses on his head a rain of fragrant flowers was shed. He reached a monarch's gate whereon rich gems and golden fretwork shone. Through court and corridor that shook, beneath his tread his way he took, and stood within the chamber where his brother sat in dark despair. But sudden, at the grateful sight, the monarch's eye again grew bright. He started up, forgot his fear, and drew his giant brother near. The younger pressed the elder's feet, and paid the king observance meet, then cried, O monarch, speak thy will, and let my care thy word fulfill. What sudden terror and dismay have burst the bonds in which I lay? Fierce flashed the flame from Ravan's eye, as does in wrath he made reply. Fair time I win. For slave is this, to lull thy soul in tranquil bliss, unheeding, in oblivion drowned, the dangers that our lives surround. Brave Rama, the Sarat's son, a passage over the sea has won, and with the banner monarch's aid, round Lanka's walls his hosts arrayed. Though never in the deadly field, my Rakshas troops were known to yield. The bravest of the giant train have fallen by the banners slain. Hence comes my fear, O fierce and brave. Go forth, our threatened Lanka save. Go forth, a dreadful vengeance take. For this, O chief, I bade thee wake. The gods and trembling fiends have felt the furious blows thine arm has dealt. Art has no warrior, heaven has none. To match thy might, Paulestia's son. Canto sixty three, Convocarn's boast. Then Convocarn laughed aloud and cried, O monarch, once so proud, we warned thee, but thou wouldst not hear, and now the fruits of sin appear. We warned thee, I, thy nobles all, who loved thee in thy council hall. Those sovereigns who with blinded eyes neglect the foe their hearts despise, soon, falling from their high estate, bring on themselves the stroke of fate. Except at length thy life to save, the council says vivision gave, the prudent council spawned before, and Sita to her lord restore. The monarch frowned. By passion moved, and thus in angry words reproved. Wilt thou thine elder brother school, forgetful of the ancient rule, that bids thee treat him as the sage who guides thee with the law of age? Think on the dangers of the day, nor idly throw thy words away. If led astray by passion steered, I in the pride of power have erred. If deeds of old were done amiss, No time for vain reproach is this. Up, brother, let thy loving care The errors of thy king repair. To calm his red, his soul to ease, The younger spake in words like these. Yea, from our bosoms let us cast All idle sorrow for the past, let grief and anger be repressed, Again be firm and self possessed This day, O monarch, shalt thou see The banner legions torn and flee, And Rama and his brother slain, With their heart's blood shall die the plain. Yea, if the god who rules the dead, And Barun, their battalions led, If Indra with the storm gods came, Against me, and the lord of flame, Still would I fight with all and slay Thy banded foes, my king, to-day. 
if Rago's son this day would stand the blow of mine uplifted hand deep in his breast my darts shall sink and torrents of his life-blood drink oh fear not in my promise trust this arm shall lay him in the dust shall leave the fierce the griever died with gore and lakshman by his side and strike the great hanuman down the spoiler of our glorious town canto sixty four mahudar speech he ceased and when his lips were closed mahudar does his reed opposed why wilt thou shame thy noble bard and speak like one of little wart why boast it does in youthful pride rejecting wisdom for thy guide how well thy single arm oppose the victor of a thousand foes who proved in Jenistan his might and slew the rovers of the night the remnant of those legions they who saw his power that fatal day now in this leaguered city dread the mighty chief from whom they fled and wouldst thou meet the lord of man beard the great lion in his den and when thine eyes are open break the slumber of a deadly snake who may an equal battle wage with him so awful in his rays fierce as the god of death whom none may vanquish the sad sun but robert shall the lady still refuse compliance with thy will now listen king to this design which soon shall make the captive dine this day to lanka's streets proclaim that four of us of highest fame with kumbukan at our head will strike the son of ragu dead forth to the battle will we go and prove our prowess on the foe then if our bold attempt succeed no farther plans thy hopes will need but if in vain our warriors strive and ragu's son be left alive we will return and wounded sore our armor stained with gouts of gore will show the shafts that rent each frame keen arrows marked with rama's name and say we giants have devoured the princes whom our might overpowered then let the joyful tidings spread that ragu's royal sons are dead to all around thy pleasure show gold pearls and precious robes bestow gay garlands round the portals twine and joy the banquet and the wine then go the scornful lady seek and woo her when her heart is weak rich robes and gold and gems display and gently while her grief away then will she feel her hopeless state widowed forlorn and desolate know that on thee her bliss depends far from her country and her friends then her proud spirit overthrown the lady will be all thine own canto sixty five kumbhakaran speech but half the kumbhakaran spawned his counsel and to ravan taunt thy life from peril will i free and slay the foe who threatens thee a hero never vaunts in vain like bellowing clouds devoid of rain now monarch be thine ear inclined to counsellors of slavish kind who with mean arts their king mislead and mar each gallant plan and deed oh let not words like his beguile the glorious king of lanka's isle the scornful kumbhakan cried and ravan with a laugh replied mahoda fears and fain would shun the battle with ikshako's son of all my giant warriors who is strong as thou and brave and true ride conqueror to the battle ride and tame the foeman's senseless pride go forth like yama to the field and let thine arm thy trident wield scared by the lightning of thine eye 
the banner hosts will turn and fly and rama when he sees thee near with trembling heart will own his fear the champion heart and well content fought from the hall his footsteps bent he grasped his spear the foeman's dread black iron all both shaft and head which died in many a battle bore great spots of slaughtered victims gore the king upon his neck had thrown the jeweled chain which graced his own and garlands of delicious scent about his limbs for ornament around his arms gay bracelets clung and pendants in his ears were hung adorned with gold about his waist his coat of mail was firmly braced and like narayan or the god who rules the sky he proudly trod behind him went a mighty throng of giant warriors tall and strong on elephants of noblest breeds with cars with camels and with steeds and armed with spear and axe and sword were fain to battle for their lord and of canto 61 to 65Canto 66 to 68 of Book 6 of the Ramayana of Balmiki, translated by Ralph D. H. Griffith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Om123. Canto 66 Kumkarn Sally. In pomp and pride of warlike state, the giant passed the city gate. He raised his voice the hills the shore of lanka's sea returned their roar the banners saw the chief draw nigh whom not the ruler of the sky nor yama modak of the dead might vanquish and affrighted fled when rel angered bali's son saw the scared banners torn and run undaunted still he kept his ground and shouted as he gazed around O oh, Nala, Nila, stay nor let your souls your generous ward forget. O oh, Kumud and Gabaksha, why, like base born banners, will they fly? Tarn, Tarn, nor shame the order does. This giant is no match for us. They heard his voice, the flight was taked. Again for war they stood arrayed and hurled upon the foe a shower of mountain peaks and trees in flower still on his limbs their missiles rained unmoved their blows he still sustained and seemed unconscious of the stroke when rocks against his body broke fierce is the flame when woods are dry he chose with fury in his eye like trees consumed with fervent heat they fell beneath the giant's feet some over the ground died red with gore fled wild with terror to the shore and deeming that all hope was lost ran to the bridge they erst had crossed some clomb the trees their lives to save some sought the mountain and the cave some hid them in the bosky dell and there in death-like slumber fell when Angad saw the chieftains fly, he called them with a mighty cry. Once more, O Banners, jaws once more, on to the battle as before. In all her compass art has not, to hide you safe one secret's part. What, leave your arms, each nobler dame, will scorn her concert for the shame. This blot upon your names efface, and keep your valour from disgrace. Stay, chieftains, wherefore will ye run, a band of warriors scared by one? Scarce would they hear, they would not stay, and basely spoke in wild dismay. Have we not fought, and fought in vain? Have we not seen our mightiest slain? 
the giant's matchless force we fear and fly because our lives are dear but bali's son with gentle art dispelled their dread and cheered each heart they turned and formed and waited still obedient to the prince's wail canto sixty seven convocant's dead does from their flight the banners turn and every heart for battle burned determined on the spot to die or gain a warrior's meet on high again the banners stoop to seize their weapons rocks and fallen trees again the deadly fight began and fiercely at the giant ran unmoved the monster kept his place he raised on high his awful mace, whirled the huge weapon round his head, and laid the foremost banners dead. Eight thousand fell bedewed with gore, then sank and died seven hundred more. Then thirty, twenty, ten, or eight, at each fierce onset met their fate. And fast the fallen were devoured, like snakes by Garur's beak overpowered. Then Duvid from the banner ran, armed with an upturned mountain ran, like a huge cloud when fierce winds blow, and chose the main the mountain foe. With wondrous force the hill he trear, over Kumkun's head it flew, and falling on his host afar, crushed many a giant steed and car. Rocks, trees, by fierce Hanuman sped, Rained fast on Kumkarn's head, whose spear each deadlier missile stopped, and harmless on the plain it dropped. Then, with his furious eyes aglow, the giant rushed upon the foe, where, with a woody hill upheaved, Hanuman's might his jaws received. Through his vast frame the giant felt the angry blow Hanuman dealt. He reeled a moment, sore distressed, then smote the banner on the breast, as when the war god's furious stroke through Karuncha's hill a passage broke. Fierce was the blow, and deep and wide, the rent with crimson torrents died. Hanuman, maddened by the pain, rolled like a cloud that brings the rain, and from each rakshas throat rang out loud clamour and exultant shout. The kneeler hurled with mastered might the fragment of a mountain height. Nor would the rock the foe have missed, but Kumvakan raised his feast, and smote so fiercely that the mass fell crushed to powder on the grass. Five chieftains of the banner race charged Kumvakan face to face, and his huge frame they wildly beat, with rocks and trees and hands and feet. Round Rishav first the giant wound his arms and hurled him to the ground, where speechless, senseless, and wounded sore, he lay, his face besmeared with gore. Then Nila, with his feast he slew, and Sarav, with his knee overthrew. Nor could Gavaksha's strength withstand the force of his terrific hand. At Gandhmadan's eager call, rushed thousands to avenge their fall, nor ceased those banners to assail, with knee and fist and tooth and nail. Around his foes the giant drew, his mighty arms and nearer drew, the captive subject to his will, then snatched him up and ate his fill. There was no respite then, no pause, fast gaped and closed his hell-like jaws yet prisoned in that gloomy cave some banners still their lives could save some to his nostrils found a way some to his ears resought the day like indra with his thunder like the god of death in act to strike the giant seized his ponderous spear and chose the foe in swift carrier before his might the banners fell, nor could their hosts his jaws repel. Then trembling, nor ashamed to run, they turned and fled 
to Rago's son. When Bali's warrior son beheld their flight, his heart with fury swelled. He rushed with his terrific shout to meet the foe and stay the rout. He came, he hurled the mountain peak and smote the giant on the cheek. His ponderous spear the giant threw. Fierce was the cast, the aim was true. But Ungad, trained in war and tried, saw ere it come and leapt aside. Then with his open hand he smote the giant on the chest and throat. That blow the giant scarce sustained, but sense and strength were soon regained. With force which nothing might resist, he caught the banner by the wrist, whirled him as if in pastime round, and dashed him senseless on the ground. There, low on art, his foe lay crushed, at King Sagriva next he rushed, who, waiting for the charge, stood still, and heaved on high a shattered hill. He looked and Kumvakan died, with streams of blood, and fiercely cried, Great glory has thine arm achieved, and thousands of their lives bereaved. Now leave a while thy meaner foes, and brook the hills Sagriva throws. He spoke, and hurled the mass he held, the giant's chest the stroke repelled. Then on the banners fell despair, and raucous clamour filled the air. The giant raised his arm, and fast came the tremendous spear he cast. Hanuman caught it as it flew, and napped it on his knee in two. The giant saw the broken spear, his clouded eye confessed his fear. Yet at Sugriva's head he sent a pick from Lanka's mountain rent. The rushing mass no might could stay. Sugriva fell and senseless lay. The giant stooped his foe to seize and bore him dense as bears the breeze, a cloud in autumn through the sky. He heard the sad mortal sigh. And shouts of triumph long and loud went up from all the raucous crowd, through Lanka's gate the giant passed, holding his struggling captive fast, while from each terrace, house, and tower fell on his hofty head a shower of fragrant scent and flowery rain, blossoms and leaves and scattered grain. By slow degrees the banner's lord felt life and sense and strength restored. He heard the giant's joyful boast, he taught upon his banner host. His teeth and feet he fiercely plied, and bit and rent the giant's side. Who, mad with pain and smeared with gore, hurled to the ground the load he bore. Regardless of a storm of blows, swift to the sky the banner rose. Then lightly, like a flying ball, high overlapped the city wall and joyous for deliverance won, regained the side of Rago's son. And Kumvakan, mad with hate, and fury sallied from the gate. The carnage of the foe renewed, and filled his maw with gory food. Slaying with headlong frangy blind, both banner foes and giant kind. Nor with Sumitra's valiant son, the might of Kumvakarna shone, who through his harness felt the sting of keen shafts loosened from the string. His heart confessed the warrior's power, and bleeding from the ceaseless shower that smote him on the chest and side, with words like these the giant cried, Well fought, well fought, Sumitra's son, eternal glory hast thou won, for thou in desperate fight hast met, the victor never conquered yet. Whom, born on huge Aravat's back, even Indra trembles to attack. Go, son of Queen Sumitra, go. Thy valour and thy strength I know. Now all my hope and honest will is Rama in the fight to kill. Let him beneath my weapons fall, and I will meet and conquer all. The chieftain of Sumitra born, 
made answer as he laughed in scorn yea thou hast won a victor's fame from trembling guards and in rush shame there waits thee now a mightier foe whose prowess thou hast yet to know there famous in hundred lands rama the son of ragu stands straight at the king the giant sped an art was shaken at his tread his bow the hero grasped and strained and deadly shafts in torrents rained as gumvogern felt each stroke from his heel's mouth burst fire and smoke his hands were loosed in mortal pain and dropped his weapons on the plain though raft of spear and sword and mace no terror changed his hofty face with heavy hands he rained his blows and smote to death a thousand foes wherever the furious monster strode while down his limbs the red blood flowed like torrents down a mountain side banners and bears and giants died high over his head a rock he swung and the heel's mass at rama flung but rama's arrows bright as flame shattered the mountain as it came then ragu's son his eyes aglow with burning anger chose the foe and as his bow he strained and tried with fearful clang the court replied wrought at the bowstring's threatening clang to meet his foe the giant sprang high towering with enormous frame huge as a wood crowned hill he came but rama firm and self-possessed in words like these the foe addressed draw near o rakshas lord draw near nor turn thee from the fight in fear thou meetest rama face to face destroyer of the giant race come fight and thou shalt feel this hour laid low in death thy conqueror's power he ceased and mad with wrath and pride the giant champion thus replied come thou to me and thou shalt find a foeman of a different kind no cutter no virata thou hast met a mightier warrior now the strength of convocation fear and dread the iron maze i rear this maze in days of yore subdued the gods and dawn of multitude prove lion of ikshaku's line thy power upon these limbs of mine then of the trial shalt thou bleed and with thy flesh my hunger feed he ceased and rama undismayed upon his cord those arrows laid which pierced the stately salt trees through and bali king of banners slew they flew they smote but smote in vain those mighty limbs that felt no pain then rama sent with surest aim the dart that bore the wind god's name the missile from the giant tore his huge arm and the mace it bore which crushed the banners where it fell and dire was gumvkarn's yell the giant seized a tree and then rushed madly at the lord of man and not a doubt lord in draws own to meet his furious onset thrown his left arm from the shoulder lopped and like a mountain peak it dropped then from the bow of rama sped two arrows each with crescent head and winged with might which naught could stay they cut the giant's legs away they fell and awful was the sound as those vast columns shook the ground and sky and sea and hill and cave in echoing roars their answer gave then from his side the hero drew a dart that like the tempest flew no deadlier shaft has ever flown than that which indra called his own nor could the giant's mail-armed neck the fury of the missile check through skin and flesh and bone it smote and rent asunder head and throat down with the sound of thunder rolled the head adorned with rings of gold and crushed to pieces in its fall 
a gate, a tower, a massive wall. Hurled to the sea, the body fell. Terrific was the ocean's swell. Nor could swift fin and nimble leap save the crushed creatures of the deep. Does he, who plagued in impious pride, the gods and Brahmans fought and died, Glad were the hosts of heaven, and long the air re echoed with their song. Canto sixty eight, Ravan's Lament. They ran to Ravan in his hall and told him of his brother's fall. Fierce as the god who rules the dead, upon the rooted foe he fed, and victor for a while at length fell slain by rama's matchless strength now like a mighty hill in size his mangled trunk extended lies and where he fell a bleeding mass blocks lanka's gate that none may pass the monarch heard his strength gave way and fainting on the ground he lay grieved at the giant's mournful tale long shrill was a tikaya's wail and Thrissiras, in sorrow, bowed his triple head and wept aloud. Mahodar, Mahaparsha shed hot tears and mourned their brother dead. At length his wandering sense restored, in loud lament cried Lanka's lord, Our chief, for might and valour famed, whose arm the hofty foeman tamed, forsaking me, thy friends and all, why hast thou fled to Yama's hall? Why hast thou fled to taste no more The slaughtered foeman's flesh and gore? Ah me, my life is done to-day, My better arm is lopped away. Whereon in danger I relied, And fearless, gods and fiends defied. How could a shaft from Rama's bow, The matchless giant of a trow, Whose iron frame so strong of yore, the crushing bolt of Indra bore. This day the gods and sages meet, And triumph at their foe's defeat. This day the banner chiefs will boast, And with new ardour fired, their host, In fiercer onset will assail, Our city and the rampart scale. What care I for a monarch's name, My empire or the mighty dame, what joy can power and riches give, or life that I should care to live? Unless this arm in mortal fray, the slayer of my brother slay. For me, of convocant raft, that is the only solace left. And I will seek, overwhelmed with woes, the realm to which my brother goes. Ah me, ill-minded, not to take, his counsel when the vision spake, when he this evil day foretold, my foolish heart was overbold. I drove my sage adviser hence, and reaped the fruits of mine offence. And of Cantos sixty six to sixty eight. Cantos sixty nine to seventy one of Book Six of the Ramayana of Balmaker, translated by Ralph to H. Griffith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Om Wan Tree. Cantos sixty nine Naratank's Dead. Pierced to the soul by sorrow's sting, does wailed the evil hearted king. Then Trisida stood forth and cried, Yea, father, he has fought and died, Our bravest, and the loss is sore, But rouse thee, and lament no more. Hast thou not steel thy coat of mail, Thy bow and shafts, which never fail? A thousand asses draw thy car, Which roars like thunder hard afar. Thy valour and thy warrior skill, Thy God-given strength are left thee still. Unarmed, 
thy matchless might subdued, the gods and dawn of multitude. Armed with thy glorious weapons, how shall Ragu's son oppose thee now? O sire, within thy palace stay, and I myself will sweep away thy foes like Garur, when he makes a banquet of the reading snakes. Soon Ragu's son shall press the plain, as Narak fell by Vishnu slain, or Samba in rebellious pride, who met the king of gods and died. The monarch heard, his courage grew, and life and spirit came anew. Devatank and Naratank heard, and their fierce souls with joy were steered. And the Tikaya burned to fight, and heard the summons with delight, while from the rest loud rang the cry, I too will fight, and I, and I. The joyous king his sons embraced, with gold and chains and jewels graced, and sent them forth with steering speech of banison and praise to each. Forth from the gate the princess sped, and ranged for war the troops they led. The banner legions jaws the new, and trees and rocks for missiles flew. They saw Naratang's mighty form, borne on a steed that marked the storm. To check his charge in vain they strove, straight through their host his way he clove. As springs a dolphin through the tide, and countless banners fell and died, and mangled limbs and corpses lay, to mark the chief's and sanguined way. Sagriva saw them fall or fly, when fierce Naratang's steed was nigh, and marked the giant where he sped, over heaps of dying or of dead. He bade the royal angered face, that bravest chief of giant rays. As springs the sun from clouds dispersed, so angered from the banners burst. No weapon for the fight he bore, save nails and teeth, and sought no more. Leave, giant Chieftain, does he spoke, leave foes unworthy of thy stroke, and bend against a nobler heart the terrors of thy deadly dart. Naratank heard the words he spake, fast breathing like an angry snake, with bloody teeth his lips he pressed, and hauled his dart at Ungat's breast. True was the aim, and fierce the stroke, yet on his breast the missile broke. Then Ungat did the giant flee, and with a blow his courser slew. The fierce hand crushed through flesh and bone, and steed and rider fell overthrown. Naratang's eyes with fury blazed, his heavy hand on high he raised, and struck in savage red the head of Bali's son who reeled and bled. Fainted a moment and no more, then stronger, fiercer than before, smote with that feast which not could stay, and crushed to death the giant lay. Canto 70 The Death of Trishiras Then raised the Rakshas chiefs and all, burned to avenge Naratang's fall. Devatank raised his club on high, and rushed at Angad with a cry. Behind came Trishiras, and near, Mahuta charged with leveled spear. There Angad stood to fight with tree, high over his head he waved a tree, and at Devatank, swift and true, as Indra's flaming bolt it flew. But caught by giant shafts in twain, with minished force it flew in vain. A shower of trees and blocks of stone from Angad's hand was fiercely thrown, but well his club Devatank plied, and turned each rock and tree aside. Nor yet by tree such foes assailed, the heart of Angad sank or quailed. He slew the mighty beast that bore, Mahuda, from his head he tore. A bleeding tusk and blow on blow fell fiercely on his rakshas foe. The giant reeled, 
but strength regained and furious strokes on anger drained who wounded by the storm of blows sank on his knees but swiftly rose then trisidas as up he sprang drew his great bow with awful clang and fixed three arrows from his sheaf full in the forehead of the chief hanuman saw nor long delayed to speed with nila to his aid who at the three-faced giant sent a peak from lanka's mountain rent but trisidas with certain aim shot rapid arrows as it came and shivered by their force it broke and fell to art with flash and smoke then as the wingard's son came nigh the vatank reared his mace on high hanuman smote him on the head and stretched the monstrous giant dead fierce trishidas with fury strained his bow and showers of arrows rained that smote on nila's side and chest he sank a moment sore distressed but quickly gathered strength to seize a mountain with its crown of trees crushed by the hill the stained with gore mahodar fell to rise no more then trishidas raised high his spear which chilled the trembling foe with fear and like a flashing meteor true the air at hanuman it flew the banner shunned the threatened stroke and with strong hands the weapon broke the giant drew his glittering blade dire was the wound the weapon made deep in the banner's ample chest who for a moment saw oppressed raised his broad hand regaining might and struck the rover of the night fierce was the blow with one wild yell low on the art the monster fell hanuman seized his fallen sword which served no more its senseless lord and from the monster triple-necked smote his huge heads with crowns bedecked then mahaparsa burned with ire fierce flashed his eyes with vengeful fire a moment on the dead he gazed then his black mace aloft was raised and down the mass of iron came that struck and shook the banner's frame hanuman's chest was well nigh crushed and from his mouth red torrents gushed he had served one instant to restore his spirit from the foe he tore his awful mace and smote and laid the giant in the dust dismayed crushed were his jaws and teeth and eyes breathless and still he lay as lies a summit from a mountain rent by him who rules the firmament canto seventy one atikaya's debt but atikaya's red grew high to see his noblest kinsman die he fiercest of the giant race presuming still on brahma's grace proud tamer of the immortal's pride whose power and might with indra's vied for blood and vengeful carnes bond and on the foe his fury taunt high on a car that flashed and glowed bright as a thousand suns he rode around his princely brows was set a rich bejeweled coronet gold pendants in his ears he wore he strained and tried the bow he bore and ever as a shaft he aimed his name and royal race proclaimed scarce might the banners broke to hear his clanging bow and voice of fear to ragu's elder son they fled their sure defence in woe and dread then rama bent his eyes afar and saw the giant in his car fast following the flying crowd and roaring like a rainy cloud he with the last of battle fired taunt to vivision and inquired say who is this of mountain size this archer with the lion eyes his car which strikes our host with all a thousand eager coursers draw surrounded by the flashing spears which line his car the chief appears 
like some huge cloud, one lightning's play, about it on a stormy day. And a great bow he joys to hold, whose banded back is bright with gold, as Indra's bow makes glad the skies, that best of chariots glorifies. Oh, see the sun like splendor flung, from the great flag above him hung, where blazoned with refulgent lines, Rahu the dreadful dragon shines. Full thirty quivers near his side, his car with shafts is well supplied, and flashing like the light of stars, gleam his two mighty scimitars. Say, best of giants, who is he? Before whose face the banners flee. Thus Rama spake, the vision eyed, The giant's chief, and thus replied, This Rama, this is Ravan's son, High fame his youthful might has won. He, best of warriors, bows his ear, The wisdom of the wise to hear. Supreme is he, mid those who know, The mastery of sword and bow. Unrivaled in the bold attack on elephants or coursers' back, he knows beside each subtle art to win the foe to bribe or part. On him the giant hosts rely and fear no ill when he is nigh. This peerless chieftain bears the name of Atikaya, heels of frame, whom Thanyamalini of yore, the Ravan, Lord of Lanka, bore. Roused by his bowstring's awful clang, To meet their foes the banner sprang. Armed with tall trees from Lanka's oot, And rocks and mountain peaks they stood. The giant's arrows gold bedecked, The storm of hartling missiles checked, And ever on his foemen poured Fierce tempest from his clanging cord. Nor could the banner chief sustain his shafts intolerable rain. They fled, the victor gained the place, where stood the lord of Ragu's race, and cried with voice of thunder, Lo, born on my car, with shaft and bow, I, champion of the giants, scorn, to fight with weaklings humbly born. Come forth your bravest, if he dare, and fight with one who will not spare. Forth sprang Sumitra's noble child, And strained his ready bow, and smiled, And giants trembled as the clang, Through heaven and earth re-echoing rang. The giant to his string applied, A pointed shaft, and proudly cried, Turn, turn, Sumitra's son, and fly, For terrible as that am I. Fly, nor that youthful form oppose, Untrained in war, to warriors' blows. What, wilt thou waste thy childish breath, And wake the dormant fire of death? Cast down, rash boy, that useless bow, Preserve thy life uninjured go. He ceased, and steered by wrath and pride, Sumitra's noble son replied, By warlike deed, not words alone, The valour of the brave is shown. Seize with vain boasts my scorn to move, And with thine arm thy prowess prove. Born on thy car with sword and bow, With all thine arms thy valour show. Fight, and my deadly shafts this day, Low in the dust thy head shall lay. And rushing fast in ceaseless flood, Shall rent thy flesh and drink thy blood. His giant foe no answer made, But on his string an arrow laid. He raised his arm, the cord he drew, At Lakshman's breast the arrow flew. Sumitra's son, his foeman's dread, Shot a fleet shaft with crescent head, Which cleft that arrow pointed well, And harmless to the art it fell. A shower of shafts from Lakshman's bow, fell fast and furious on the foe, who quailed not as the missile smote, with idle force his iron coat. Then came the friendly when God near, and whispered thus in Lakshman's ear, Such shafts as these in vain assay, 
thy foe's impenetrable mail a more tremendous missile try or never may the giant die employ thy mighty spell and aim the weapon known by brahma's name he ceased sumitra's son obeyed on his great bow the shaft was laid and with a roar like thunder true as indra's flashing bolt it flew the giant poured his shafts like rain to check its course but all in vain with spear and mace and sword he tried to turn the fiery dart aside winged with a force which not could check it smote the monster in the neck and sundered from his shoulders rolled to art his head and helm of gold and of canto sixty nine to seventy one Canto seventy two to seventy five of Book six of the Rama and of Balmiki, translated by Ralph D. H. Griffith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Om One Two Three. Canto seventy two, Ravan's Speech. The giants bent in rage and grief, their eyes upon the fallen chief then flying wild with fear and pale the raven bore the mournful tale he heard how atikaya died then turned him to his lords and cried where are they now my bravest where wise to consult and prompt to dare where is domraksha skilled to wield all weapons in the battlefield a company and prahasta's might and kumbhakarn bold in fight these these and many irakshas more each master of the arms he bore who every foe in fight overthrew the victors none could ever subdue have perished by the might of one the vengeful arm of rago's son in vain i cast mine eyes around no match for rama here is found no chief to stand before that bow whose deadly shafts have caused our woe now warriors to your stations hands provide ye for the wall's defence and be the shoka garden where the lady lies your special care be every lane and passage barred set at each gate a chosen guard and with your troops where danger calls be ready to defend the walls each movement of the banners mark observe them when the skies grow dark be ready in the dead of night and ere the morning bring the light taught by our loss we may not scorn these legions of the forest born he ceased the rakshas lords obeyed each at his post his troops arrayed and torn with pangs that pierced him through the monarch from the hall withdrew canto seventy three indrajit's victory but indrajit the fierce and bold with words like these his sire consoled dismiss o king thy grief and dread and be not thus disquieted against this numbing sorrow strive for indrajit is yet alive and none in battle may withstand the fury of his strong right hand this day o sire thine eyes shall see the sons of ragu slain by me he ceased he bade the king farewell clear mid the roar of drum and shell the clash of sword and harness rang as to his car the warrior sprang close followed by his raksha strain to lanka's gate he reached the plain then down he leapt and bade a band of giants by the chariot stand then with due rites as rules require did worship to the lord of fire the sacred oil as texts ordain with wreaths of scented flowers and grain 
within the flame in order dear that mightiest of the giants tree there on the ground were spear and blade and airy leaves and fuel laid an iron ladle deep and wide and robes of sanguine colours dyed beside him stood a sable goat the giant seized it by the throat and straight from the consuming flame auspicious signs of victory came for swiftly calling to the right the fire leapt up with a willing light undimmed by smoky cloud and red like gold upon the offering fed they brought him while the flame yet glowed the dart by brahma's grace bestowed and all the arms he wielded well were charmed with text and holy spell then fiercer for the fight he burned and at the foe his chariot turned while all his followers lifting high their maces charged with furious cry dire yet more dire the battle grew as rocks and trees and arrows flew the giant shot his shafts like rain and banners fell in myriads slain sugriva angad nila felt the wounds his hotling arrows dealt his shafts the blood of gaia drank hanuman reeled and mindia sank bright as the glances of the sun came the swift darts they could not shun caught in the airy nets he wove in vain the sons of ragu strove and rama by the darts oppressed his brother chieftain does at rest see first this giant warrior sends destruction mid our banner friends and now his arrows thick and fast their binding net around us cast to brahma's grace the chieftain owes the matchless power and might he shows and mortal strength in vain contends with him whom brahma's self befriends then let us still with dauntless hearts endure this storm of pelting duds soon must we sink bereaved of sense and then the victor hurrying hands will seek his father in his hall and tell him of his foeman's fall he ceased overpowered by shaft and spell the sons of ragu reeled and fell the rakshas on their bodies gazed and mid the shouts his followers raised sped back to lanka to relate in ravan's hall the prince's fate canto seventy four the medicinal herbs the shades of falling night concealed the carnage of the battlefield which bearing each blazing brand hanuman and vivishan scanned moving with slow and anxious tread among the dying and the dead sad was the scene of slaughter shown wherever the torch's light was thrown here mountain forms of banners lay whose heads and limbs were lopped away arms legs and fingers strewed the ground and severed heads lay thick around the art was moist with sanguine streams and sighs were hot and groans and screams there lay sugriva still and cold there angad once so brave and bold there jambaban his might reposed there begadashi's eyes were closed there in the dust was nala's pride and duvid lay by minda's side wherever they looked the ensanguined plain was strewn with myriads of the slain they sought with keenly searching eyes king jambaban supremely wise his strength had failed by slow decay and pierced with countless shafts he lay they saw and hastened to his side and thus the sage vivician cried thee monarch of the bears we seek speak if thou yet art living speak slow came the aged chief's reply scarce could he say with many a sigh torn with keen shafts which pierce each limb 
my strength is gone, my sight is dim. Yet though I scarce can raise mine eyes, thy voice, O chief, I recognize. O oh, while these ears can hear thee say, Has Hanuman survived this day? Why ask, the vision cried, for one of lower rank, the wind-god's son? Hast thou forgotten, first in place, the princely chief of Ragu's race? Can King Sugriva claim no care, and angered his imperial heir? Yea, dearer than my noblest friends, is who on whom our hope depends. For if the wind-god's son survive, all we do dead are yet alive. But if his precious life be fled, Though living still, we are but dead. He is our hope and sure relief. Thus slowly spoke the aged chief. Then to his side Hanuman came, And with low reverence named his name. Cheered by the face he longed to view, The wounded chieftain lived anew. Go forth, he cried, O strong and brave, And in their woe the banners save. No might but thine, supremely great, May help us in our lost estate. The trembling bows and banners cheer, Calm their sad hearts, dispel their fear. Save Ragu's noble sons, and heal The deep wounds of the winged steel. High over the waters of the sea, To far Himalaya's summits flee. Kailasha there wilt thou behold, and Rishav with his peaks of gold. Between them see a mountain rise, whose splendor will enchant thine eyes. His sides are clothed above, below, with all the rarest herbs that grow. Upon that mountain's lofty crest, four plants of sovereign powers purchased, spring from the soil, and flashing there, shed radiance through the neighboring air, one draws the shaft, one brings again The breath of life to warm the slain. One heals each wound, one gives anew To faded cheeks their wanted hue. Fly, Chieftain, to that mountain's brow, And bring those hops to save us now. Hanuman heard, and springing true, The air like Vishnu's discus flew. The sea was past, beneath him, gay, With bright-winged birds the mountains lay, And brook and lake, and lonely glen, And fought our lands with toiling men. On, on he sped, before him rose, The mansion of perennial snows. There soared the glorious peaks as fair, As white clouds in the summer air. Here, bursting from the leafy shade, in thunder leapt the wild cascade. He looked on many a pure retreat, Dear to the gods and sages' feet, The spot where Brahma dwells apart, The place whence Rudra launched his dart, Vishnu's high seat and Indra's home, And slopes where Yama's servants roam. There was Kuvira's bride abode, There Brahma's mystic weapon glowed, there was the noble hill whereon those harps with wondrous lustre shone. And ravished by the glorious sight, Hanuman rested on the height. He moving down the glittering peak, the healing harps began to seek. But when he thought to seize the prize, they hid them from his eager eyes. Then to the hill in wrath he spake, Mine arms this day shall vengeance take. If thou wilt feel no pity, none, In this great need of Ragu's son. He seized, his mighty arms he bent, And from the trembling mountain rent, His huge head with the life it bore, Snakes, elephants, and golden ore, Over hill and plain and watery waste, His rapid way again he traced, And mid the wandering banners laid, His burden through the air conveyed, the wondrous harps delightful send to all the host new vigor lend 
free from all doubts and wounds and pain the sons of ragu lived again and dead and dying banners healed rose vigorous from the battlefield canto seventy five the night attack Sugriva spake in words like these now banner lords the occasion siege for now of sons and brothers reft to robin little hope is left and if our host his gates assail his weak defence will surely fail at dead of night the banner bands rushed on with torches in their hands scared by the coming of the host each giant warder left his post wherever the banner legions came their way was marked with hostile flame that spread fury to devour palace and temple gate and tower down came the walls and porches down came stately piles that graced the town in many a house the fire was red on sandalwood and aloe fed and scorching flames in bellows rolled over diamonds and pearls and gold on cloth of wool on silk brocade on linen robes their fury prayed whales poles and yokes were bound and all the courser's harness in the stall and elephants and chariots gear the sword the buckler and the spear scared by the crash of falling beams mid lamentations groans and screams fought rust the giants through the flames and with them dragged bewildered dames each with overwhelming terror wild still clasping to her breast a child the swift fire from a cloud of smoke through many a gilded lattice broke and melting pearl and coral rose over balconies and porticoes the startled crane and peacock screamed as with strange light the courtyard gleamed and fierce unusual glare was thrown on shrinking wood and heated stone from burning stall and stable freed rust frantic elephant and steed and goaded by the driving blaze fled wildly through the crowded ways as art with fervent heat will glow when comes her final overthrow from gate to gate from court to spire proud lanka was one blaze of fire and every headlock rock and bay shone bright a hundred leagues away fought blinded by the heat and flame ran countless giants huge of frame and mastering for fierce attack the banners charged to drive them back while shout and scream and roar and cry re-echoed through the earth and sky there rama stood with strength renewed and ever as the foe he viewed shaking the distant regions rang his mighty bow's tremendous clang then through the gates nikumva hide and kumva by his brother's side sent forth the bravest and the best to battle by the king's behest there fought the chiefs in open field an angered fell and david reeled sugriva saw by rage impelled he crushed the bow which kumva held about his foes sugriva wound his arms and heaving from the ground the giant hauled him over the bank and deep beneath the sea he sank like mandar hill with furious swell upleapt the waters where he fell again he rose he sprang to land and raised on high his threatening hand full on sugriva's chest it came and shook the banner's massy frame but on the wounded bone he broke his wrist so furious was the stroke with force that naught could stay or check sugriva smote him neat the neck the fierce blow crashed through flesh and bone and kumba lay in death overthrown Nikumva saw his brother die, and red with fury flashed his eye. He dashed with mighty sway and swing, his aches against the banner king. But shattered on that living rock, it split in fragments at the shark. Sugriva, rising to the blow, 
raised his heel's hand and smote his foe, and in the dust the giant lay, gasping in blood his soul away. I have briefly dispatched Kumva and Nikumva, each of whom has in the text a long canto to himself. When day fall, Ravan sends forth Maharaksha, or Crocodile Eye, the son of Kara, who was slain by Rama in the forest before the abduction of Sita. The account of his sailing forth, of his battle with Rama, and of his death by the fiery dart of that hero, occupies two cantos, which I entirely pass over. Indrajit again comes forth and, rendered invisible by his magic art, slays countless banners with his unerring arrows. He retires to the city and returns bearing in his chariot an effigy of Sita, the walk of magic, weeping and wailing by his side. He grasps the lovely image by the hair and cuts it down with his scimitar in the sight of the enraged Hanuman and all the banner host. At last, after much fighting of the usual kind, Indrajit's chariot is broken in pieces. His charioteer is slain, and he himself falls by Lakshman's hand, to the inexplicable delight of the high-souled saints, the nymphs of heaven, and other celestial beings. End of Canto 72-75 Cantos ninety three to hundred of Book Six of the Ramayana of Balmiki, translated by Ralph T. H. Griffith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Om One to Three. Canto ninety three, Ravan's Lament. They sought the king, a mournful train, and cried, "My lord, thy son is slain." By Lakshman's hand before these eyes the warrior fell no more to rise no time is this for vain regret thy hero son a hero met and he whose might in battle pressed lord indra and the gods confessed whose power was stranger to defeat has gained in heaven a blissful seat the monarch heard the mournful tale his heart was faint his cheek was pale his fleeting sense at length regained in trembling tones he thus complained ah me my son my pride the boast and glory of the giant host could lakshman's puny might defeat the foe whom indra feared to meet could not thy deadly arrow split proud mandar's peaks o indrajit and the destroyer's self destroy and wast thou conquered by a boy? I will not weep. Thy noble deed has blessed thee with immortal meed, gained by each hero in disguise, who fighting for his sovereign dies. Now fearless of all meaner foes, the guardian gods will taste repose. But art to me, with hill and plain, is desolate, for thou art slain. Ah, wider hast thou fled and left, thy mother, Lanka, me bereft, left pride and state and wives behind, and lordship over all thy kind. I fondly hoped thy hand should pay due honours on my dying day, and couldst thou, O beloved, flee, and leave thy funeral rites to me. Life has no comfort left me, none. O oh, Indrajit, my son, my son. Thus wailed he, broken by his woes, But swift the tart of vengeance rose. In awful wrath his teeth he gnashed, And from his eyes red lightning flashed. Heart from his mouth came fire and smoke, As does the king in fury spoke. True many a thousand years of yore, the penance and the pain I bore, and by fierce torment well sustained, the highest grace of Brahma gained. His blooded wound my life assured, from gods of heaven and fiends secured. 
he armed my limbs with burnished mail, whose lustre taunts the sunbeams pale. In battle proof against heavenly bands, with thunder in their threatening hands, armed in this mail, myself will go, with Brahma's gift, my deadly bow, and cleaving through the foes my way, the slayers of my son will slay. Then by his grief the frenzy wrought, The captive in the grove he sought, Swift through the shady path he sped, Each trembled at his furious tread. Fears were his eyes, his monstrous hand, Held drawn for death his glittering brand. There weeping stood the mighty dame, She shuddered as the child came. Nia drew the rover of the night, and raised his sword in act to smite. But by his nobler heart impelled, One Rakshas lord his arm would held. Wilt thou, great monarch, does he cried, Wilt thou to heavenly gods allied, Blot for all time thy glorious fame, The slayer of a gentle dame? What, shall a woman's blood be spilt, To stain thee with eternal guilt? Thee, Deep in all the Beda's law, Far be the thought for evermore. Ah, look, and let her lovely face This fury from thy bosom chase. He ceased, the prudent counsel pleased, The monarch and his red appeased. Then to his council hall in haste, The giant lord his steps retraced. I omit two cantos, in the first of which Rama, with an enchanted Gandharva weapon, deals destruction among the Rakshasas sent by Ravan, and in the second the Rakshas dames lament the slain and mourn over the madness of Ravan. Canto 96 Ravan's Sally The groans and cries of dames who wailed, the years of Lanka's lord assailed, for from each house and home was sent the voice of weeping and lament. In troubled thought his head he bowed, then fiercely losing on the crowd of nobles near his throne he broke, the silence and in fury spoke. This day my deadly shafts shall fly, and Ragu's sons shall surely die. This day shall countless banners bleed, and dogs and kites and vultures feed. Go, bid them swift my car prepare, Bring the great bow I long to bear, And let my host with sword and shield And spear be ready for the field. From street to street the captains passed, And Rakshas warriors gathered fast, With spear and sword to pierce and strike, And axe and club and mace and pike. I omit several weapons for which I cannot find distinctive names, and among them the satagni or sandicide, supposed by some to be a kind of firearms or rocket, but described by a commentator under Mahavarat as a stone or cylindrical piece of wood studded with iron spikes. The raven's warrior chariot wrought, with gold and rich inlay was brought, mid tinkling bells and weapons clang, the monarch on the chariot sprang, which, decked with gems of every year, eight steeds of noble lineage drew. Mid roars of drum and shell rang out, from countless throats a joyful shout, as God with hosts in warlike pride, through Lanka's streets the tyrant hide. Still, louder than the roar of drums, went up the cry, He comes, he comes. Our ever-conquering Lord who trod Beneath his feet, both fiend and god. On to the gate the warriors swept, Where Ragu's sons their station camped. When Ravan's car the portal passed, The sun in heaven was overcast. Art rocked and reeled from side to side, And birds with boding voices cried. Against the standard of the king, a vulture flapped his horrid wing. 
big gouts of blood before him dropped his trembling steeds in terror stopped the hue of death was on his cheek and scarce his flattering tongue could speak when terrible with flesh and flame through murky air a meteor came still by the hand of death impelled his onward way the giant held the banners in the field afar heard the loud thunder of his car and turned with warriors fierce delight to meet the giant in the fight he came his clanging bow he drew and myriads of the banners slew some to the side and heart he cleft some headless on the plain were left some struggling groaned with mangled ties or broken arms or blinded eyes I omit cantos ninety seven, ninety eight, and ninety nine, which describe in the usual way three single combats between Sugriva and Angad on the banner side, and Birupaksh, Mohuda, and Mahabharsha on the side of the giants. The weapons of the banners are trees and rocks. The giants fight with swords, axes, and bows and arrows. The details are generally the same as those of preceding duels. The giants fall, one in each canto. Canto 100. Ravan in the Field The plain with bleeding limbs was spread, And heaps of dying and of dead. His mighty bow still Rama strained, And shafts upon the giants rained. Still Angad and Sugriva wrought, To fury for the banners fought crushed with huge rocks through chest and side mahudar mahabhasya died and birupaksha stained with gore dropped on the plain to rise no more when ravan saw the tree overthrown he cried aloud in furious tone urge urge the car my charioteer the hofty banner's death is near this very day shall end our griefs for leaguered town and slaughtered chiefs rama the tree whose lovely fruit is sita shall disarm uproot whose branches with protecting shade are barna lords who lend him aid thus cried the king the welkin rang as fought the eager coursers sprang an art beneath the chariot shook with flowery groove and hill and brook fast reined his shafts wherever he sped the conquered banners fell or fled on rolled the car in swift carrier till Raghu's noble sons were near then rama looked upon the foe and strained and tried his sounding bow till art and all the region rang re-echoing to the awful clang his bow the younger chieftain bent and shaft on shaft on Ravan sent. He shot, but Ravan little racked, each arrow with his own he checked, and headless, baffled of its aim, to art the harmless missile came. And Lakshman stayed his arm overpowered, by the thick darts the giant showered. Fierce waxed the fight, and fiercer yet, for Ravan now and Rama met, and each on other poured a main the tempest of his airy reign while all the sky above was dark with missiles speeding to their mark like clouds with flashing lightning twinned about them hurried by the wind not fiercer was the wondrous fight when britra fell by indra's might all arts of war each foeman knew and trained alike his bowstring drew red-eyed with fury lanka's king pressed his huge fingers on the string and fixed in rama's brows a flight of arrows winged with matchless might still ragu's son endured and bore that crown of shafts the wounded saw over a dire dirt a spell he spoke with mystic power to aid the stroke in vain upon the foe its moat rebounding from the steel-proof coat the giant armed his bow and knew and wondrous weapons hissed and flew terrific deadly swift of flight beaked like the vulture and the kite 
or bearing heads of fearful make of lion tiger wolf and snake then rama troubled by the storm of flying darts in every form shot by an arm that naught could tire launched at the foe his dart of fire which sacred to the lord of flame burnt and consumed wherever it came and many a blazing shaft beside the hero to his string applied with fiery course of dazzling hue swift to the mark each missile flew some flashing like a shooting star some as the tongues of lightning are one like a brilliant plant one in splendour like the morning sun wherever the shafts of rama burned the giant's darts were foiled and turned far into space his weapons fled but as they flew struck thousands dead and of cantos ninety three to hundred Cantos one hundred one to one hundred three of Book Six of the Ramayana of Balmike, translated by Ralph T. H. Griffith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Om One Two Three. Canto one hundred one, Lakshman's Fall. When Ravan saw his darts repelled, with double rage his bosom swelled. He summoned, wrought but undismayed a mightier charm to lend its aid and fierce as fire before the blast a storm of missiles thick and fast spear pike and javelin mace and brand came hurtling from the giant's hand but mightier still the arms employed by ragu's son their force destroyed and every dart fell dulled and spent by powers the birds of heaven had lent with his huge mace the vision slew the steeds that ravan's chariot drew then ravan hurled in deadly ire a ponderous spear that flashed like fire but rama's arrows checked its way and harmless on the earth it lay the giant seized a mightier spear which death himself would shun with fear the vision with the stroke had died but Lakshman's hand his bowstring plied, and flying arrows thick as hail smote fiercely on the giant's mail. Then Ravan turned his aim aside, on Lakshman looked and fiercely cried, Thou, thou again my wrath hast braved, and from his death the vision saved. Now in his stead this spear receive, whose deadly point thy heart shall cleave. He ceased, he hurled the mortal dart, by Maya forged with magic art. The spear, with all his fury flung, swift, flickering, like a serpent's tongue, adorned with many a tinkling bell, smote Lakshman, and the hero fell. When Rama saw, he heaved a sigh, a tear one moment dimmed his eye, but tender grief was soon repressed and thoughts of vengeance filled his breast the air around him flashed and gleamed as from his bow the arrows streamed and lanka's lord the foeman's dread overwhelmed with terror taunt and fled canto one hundred two lakshman healed but rama pride of ragu's race gazed tenderly on lakshman's face and as the sight his spirit broke, turned to Shusain and sadly spoke. Where is my power and valour? How shall I heart for battle now? When dead before my weeping eyes, my brother, noblest Lakshman, lies. My tears in blinding torrents flow, my hand unnerved has dropped my bow. The pangs of woe have blanched my cheek, my heart is sick my strength is weak ah me my brother ah dead i by lakshman's side might sink and die life war and conquest all are vain if lakshman lies in battle slain 
why will those eyes my glances shun hast thou no word of answer none ah is thy noble spirit flown and gone to other worlds alone couldst thou not let thy brother seek those walls with thee o oh speak o oh speak rise up once more my brother rise look on me with thy loving eyes were not thy steps beside me still in gloomy wood on breezy hill did not thy gentle care assuage thy brother's grief and fitful rays didst thou not all his troubles share his guide and comfort in despair as rama vanquished wept and sighed the banner chieftain thus replied great prince unmanly thoughts dismiss nor yield thyself to grief like this in vain those burning tears are shed our glory lakshman is not dead death on his brow no mark has set where beauty's lustre lingers yet clear is the skin and tender hues of lotus flowers his palms suffuse o rama cheer thy trembling heart nor does do life and body part now hanuman to thee i speak high thence to tall mahudaya's peak where hopes of sovereign virtue grow which life and health and strength bestow bring thou the leaves to balm his pain and lakshman shall be well again he ceased the wingard's son obeyed swift through the clouds his way he made he reached the hill nor stayed to find the wondrous harps of healing kind from its broad base the mountain he tore with all the shrubs and trees it bore sped through the clouds again and showed to wise sushin his woody load sushin in wonder viewed the hill and called the sovereign self of ill soon as the healing hob he found the fragrant leaves he crushed and ground then over lakshman's face he bent who healed and strengthened by the scent of the blessed hob divinely sweet rose fresh and lusty on his feet canto 103 indra's car then ragu's son forgot his woe again he grasped his fallen bow and hurled at lanka's lord the main the tempest of his airy reign drawn by the steeds his lords had brought again the giant turned and fought and drove his glittering chariot nigh as springs the day god through the sky then as his sounding bow he bent like thunderbolts his shafts were sent as when dark clouds in rain time shed fierce torrents on a mountain's head high on his car the giant rode on foot the son of ragu strode the gods from their celestial height indignant saw the unequal fight then he whom heavenly hosts revere lord indra called his charioteer haste matali he cried descend to ragu's son my chariot land with cheering words the chief address and all the gods thy did will bless he bowed he brought the glorious car whose tinkling bells were hard afar fair as the sun of morning bright with gold and pearl and ledger light he yoked the steeds of tawny hue that swifter than the tempest flew then down the slope of heaven he hied and stayed the car by rama's side ascend o chief he humbly cried the chariot which the gods provide the mighty bow of indra see sent by the gods who favour thee behold this coat of glittering mail and spear and shafts which never fail cheered by the grace the immortal showed the chieftain on the chariot rode then as the carborn warriors met the awful fight raised fiercer yet each shaft that raven shot became 
a serpent red with kindled flame and round the limbs of rama hung with fiery jaws and quivering tongue but every serpent fled dismayed when ragu's valiant son displayed the weapon of the feared king and loosed his arrows from the string but raban armed his bow and knew and showers of shafts at rama flew while the fierce king in swift carrier smote with a dart the charioteer an arrow shot by raban's hand laid the proud banner on the sand and indra's steeds of heavenly strain fell by the iron tempest slain on gods and spirits of the air fell terror trembling and despair the sea's white billows mounted high with froth and foam to drench the sky the sun by lurid clouds was veiled the friendly lights of heaven were paled and fiercely gleaming fiery mars opposed the beams of gentler stars then rama's eyes with fury blazed as indra's heavenly spear he raised loud rang the bells the glistering head bright flashes through the region shed down came the spear in swift descent the giant's lens was crushed and bent then ravan's horses brave and fleet fell dead beneath his arrowy sleet fierce on his foemen rama pressed and gored with shafts his mighty breast and spouting trims of crimson dyed the weary giant's limbs and side i omit cantos one hundred four and one hundred five in which the fight is renewed and raven severely reprimands his charioteer for timidity and want of confidence in his master's prowess and orders him to charge straight at rama on the next occasion End of Cantos 101 to 103《Cantos 106-110 of Book 6 of the Ramayana of Balmiki, translated by Ralph T. H. Griffith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Om123. Canto 106 Glory to the Sun. There, faint and bleeding fast, apart, stood Ravan raising in his heart. Then moved with root for Rama's sake, Augustia came and gently spake. Bend, Rama, bend thy heart and ear, The everlasting truth to hear, Which all thy hopes through life will bless, And crown thine arms with full success. The rising sun with golden rays, Light of the worlds, adore and praise, The universal king, the lord, by hosts of heaven and fiends adored he tempers all with soft control he is the god's diviner soul and gods above and fiends below and men to him their safety owe he brahma vishnu shiva he each person of the glorious tree is every god whose praise we tell the king of heaven the lord of hell each god revered from times of old the lord of war the king of gold mahindra time and death is he the moon the ruler of the sea he hears our praise in every form the mains gods who ride the storm thus whence manu they who stand round indra and the Satya's band he is the air and life and fire the universal source and sire he brings the seasons at his call creator light and nurse of all his heavenly cause he joys to run maker of day the golden sun the steeds that whirl his car are seven the flaming steeds that flash through heaven lord of the sky the conqueror parts the clouds of night with glistering darts he master of the veda's law commands the clouds collected store he is the river's surest friend 
he bids the rains and day descend stars planets constellations own their monarch of the golden throne lord of twelve forms to thee i bow most glorious king of heaven art thou o rama he who pays a right due worship to the lord of light shall never fall oppressed by ill but find a stay and comfort still adore with all thy heart and mind this god of gods to him resigned and thou his saving power shalt know victorious over thy giant foe this canto does not appear in the bengal recension it comes in awkwardly and may i think be considered as an interpolation but i paraphrase a portion of it as a relief after so much fighting and carnage and as an interesting glimpse of the monotheistic ideas which underlie the hindu religion the hymn does not readily lend itself to metrical translation and i have not attempted here to give a faithful rendering of the whole a literal version of the text and the commentary given in the calcutta edition will be found in the additional notes a canto here is omitted it contains fighting of the ordinary kind between rama and ravan and the description of sights and sounds of evil omen foreboding the destruction of the giant canto one hundred eight the battle he spoke and vanished rama raised his eyes with reverence meet and praised the glorious day god full in view then armed him for the fight and knew arsed onward by his charioteer the giant's foaming steeds came near and furious was the battle's din where each resolved to die or win the rakshas host and banner bands stood with their weapons in their hands and watched in terror and dismay the fortune of the awful fray the giant chief with rays inflamed his darts at rama's pannon aimed but when they touched the chariot made by heavenly hands their force was stayed then rama's breast with fury swelled he strained the mighty bow he held and straight at ravan's banner flew an arrow as the string he drew a deadly arrow swift of flight like some huge snake ablaze with light whose fury none might ever repel and split in twain the standard fell at rama's teeth sharp arrows hot with flames of fire the giant shot unmoved the heavenly steeds sustained the furious shower the warrior rained as those soft lotus tendrils smote each hofty crest and glossy coat then volleyed swift by magic art tree mountain peak and spear and dart trident and pike and club and mace flew hotling straight at rama's face but rama with his steeds and car escaped the storm which fell afar where the strange missiles as they rushed to art a thousand banners crushed canto one hundred nine the battle with wondrous power and might and skill the giant fought with rama's tail each at his foe his chariot drove and still for death or victory strove the warrior steeds together dashed and pole with pole re-echoing clashed then rama launching dart on dart made ravan's coursers swerve and start nor was the lord of lanka slow to rain his arrows on the foe who showed by fiery points assailed no trace of pain nor shook nor quailed dense clouds of arrows rama shot with that strong arm which rested not and spear and mace and club and brand fell in dire rain from ravan's hand the storm of missiles fiercely cast steered up the oceans with its blast and serpent gods and fiends who dwell 
below were troubled by the swell the old wood hill and plain and brook and grove and garden reeled and shook the very sun grew cold and pale and horror stilled the rising gale god and gandherva sage and saint cried out with grief and terror faint o oh, may the prince of rago's line give peace to brahmans and to kine and rescuing the world's overthrow the giant king our awful foe then to his deadly stream the pride of Ragu's race a shaft applied sharp as a serpent's venomed fang straight to its mark the arrow sprang and from the giant's body shred with trenchant steel the monstrous head there might the triple world behold that severed head adorned with gold but when all eyes were bent to view swift in its stead another grew again the shaft was pointed well again the head divided fell but still as each to art was cast another head succeeded fast a hundred bright with fiery flame fell low before the victor's aim yet robin by no sign betrayed that death was near or strength decayed the doubtful fight he still maintained and on the foe his missiles rained in air on art on plain on hill with awful might he battled still and through the hours of night and day the conflict knew no pause or stay canto one hundred ten ravan's death then matali to rama cried let other arms the day decide why wilt thou strive with useless toil and see his might thy efforts foil launch at the foe thy dart whose fire was kindled by the almighty sire he ceased and ragu's son obeyed upon his string the hero laid an arrow like a snake that hissed whose fiery flight had never missed the arrow saint augustia gave and blessed the chieftain's life to save that dart the eternal father made the monarch of the gods to aid by brahma's self on him bestowed when fought to fight lord indra rode it was fitted with the rushing wind the glowing sun and fire combined to the keen point their splendour lent the shaft at real element by Meru's hill and Munder, pride of mountains had its weight supplied. He laid it on the twisted cord, he turned the point at Lanka's lord, and swift the limp dividing dart pierced the huge chest and cleft the heart. And dead he fell upon the plain, like Britra by the thunderer slain. The Rakshas host, when Ravan fell, sent forth a wild terrific yell then turned and fled all hope resigned through lanka's gates nor looked behind his voice each joyous banner raised and rama conquering rama praised soft from celestial minstrels came the sound of music and acclaim soft fresh and cool a rising breeze brought others from the heavenly trees and ravishing the sight and smell a wondrous rain of blossoms fell and voices breathed round ragu's son champion of gods well done well done and of cantos hundred six to hundred ten Cantos hundred eleven to hundred fourteen of Book Six of the Ramayana of Balmiki, translated by Ralph T. H. Griffith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Om One Two Three. Canto one hundred eleven, Bivishan's lament. Bivishan saw his brother slain, nor could his heart 
its woe contain over the dead king he sadly bent and mourned him with a loud lament o hero bold and brave he cried skilled in all arms in battle tried spoiled of thy crown with limbs outspread why wilt thou press thy gory bed why slumber on the earth's cold breast when sumptuous couches woo to rest ah me my brother overbold thine is the fate my heart foretold but love and pride forbade to hear the friend who blamed thy wild career fallen is the sun who gave us light our lordly moon is veiled in night our beacon fire is dead and cold a hundred waves over it rolled what could his light and fire avail against lord rama's airy hail woe for the giant's royal tree whose stately height was fair to see his buds were deeds of kingly grace his bloom the suns who decked his rays with rifled bloom and mangled bough the royal tree lies prostrate now nay idly mourn not rama cried the warrior king has nobly died intrepid hero farm through all so fell he as the brave should fall and ill beseems it chiefs like us to weep for those who perish does be far thy causeless grief restrain and pay the dues that yet remain again the vision sadly spoke his was the hero arm that broke and battled gods and indra's might unconquered ere to-day in fight he rushed against thee fought and fell as ocean when his waters swell hauling his might against a rock fall spent and shattered by the shark woe for our king's untimely end the generous lord the trusty friend our sure defence when fear arose a dreaded scourge to stubborn foes o oh, let the king thy hand has slain the honours of the dead obtain then rama answered hatred dies when low in dust the foeman lies now triumph bids the conflict cease and needs us in the bonds of peace let funeral rites be duly paid, and be it mine thy toil to aid. Canto 112 The Rakshas Dames High rose the universal wail that mourned the monarch's death and pale, with crushing woe, her hair unbound, her eyes in floods of sorrow drowned, forth from the inner chambers came with trembling feet each royal dame heedless of those who bade them stay they reached the field where ravan lay there falling by their husband's side our king our dearest lord they cried like creepers shadowed by the storm they threw them on his mangled form one to his bleeding bosom crept and lifted up her voice and wept about his feet one mourner clung around his neck another hung one on the giant's severed head her pearly tears in torrents shed fast as the drops the summer shower pours down upon the lotus flower ah he whose arm in anger reared the king of gods and yama feared while panic struck their heavenly train lies prostrate in the battle slain thy hofty heart thou wouldst not bend nor listen to each wiser friend ah had the dame as they implored been yielded to her injured lord we had not mourned this day thy fall and happy had it been for all then rama and thy friends content in blissful peace their days had spent thine injured brother had not fled nor giant chiefs and banners bled yet for these woes we will not blame thy fancy for the might held dame fate 
ruthless fate, whom none may bend, as ours do to die hapless end. Canto 113 Mandadeli's Lament While thus they wept, supreme in place, the loveliest for form and face, Mandudari drew near alone, looked on her lord and made her moan. Our monarch, in fear to stand, in fight before thy conquering hand. From thy dread spear the immortals ran, and art thou murdered by a man. I it was no child of art, I know, that smote thee with that mortal blow. It was death himself in Rama's shape, that slew thee, dead whom none escape. Or was it he who rules the skies, who met thee clothed in man's disguise? Ah, no, my lord, not Indra, he, in battle never could look on thee. One only God, thy match I deem, it was Vishnu's self, the Lord supreme whose days through ceaseless time extend and never begin never shall end he with the discus shell and maze brought ruin on the giant race god by the gods of heaven arrayed like banner hosts he is trained to aid he rama's shape and arms assumed and slew the king whom fate had doomed in janistan when kara died with giant lesions by his side no mortal was the unconquered foe in rama's form who struck the blow when hanuman the banner came and burnt thy town with hostile flame i counselled peace in ansius fear i counselled but thou wouldst not hear thy fancy for the foreign dame has brought thee death and endless shame why should thy foolish fancy roam? Hadst thou not wives as fair at home? In beauty, form, and grace could she, dear Lord, surpass or rival me. Now will the days of Sita glide, in tranquil joy by Rama's side, and I, ah me, around me raves, a sea of woe with whelming waves. With thee in days of old I trod, Each part beloved by nymph and god. I stood with thee in proud delight, On Munder's side and Meru's height. With thee, my lord, enchanted straight, In Chaitrarat's lovely shade, And viewed each fairest scene afar, Transported in thy radiant car. But source of every joy was thou, and all my bliss is ended now. Then Rama to Bevishan cried, Whatever the ritual beads provide, Obsequial honours dearly pay, And these sad mourners grief allay. Bevishan answered, wise and true, For duty's changeless law he knew. Nay, one who scorned all sacred vows, And dared to touch another's spouse, fell tyrant of the human race with funeral rites i may not grace him ragu's royal son the best of those who love the law addressed false was the rover of the night he loved the wrong and scorned the right yet for the fallen warrior plead the dauntless heart the valorous deed let him who never had brooked defeat the chief whom Indra feared to meet, the ever-conquering lord obtain, the honours that should grace the slain. Bevision bade his friends prepare the funeral rites with thoughtful care. Himself the royal palace sought, when sacred fire was quickly brought, with sandalwood and precious scents, and pearl and coral ornaments. Wise Brahmins, while the tears that flowed Down their wan cheeks, their sorrow sowed, Upon a golden litter laid, The corpse in finest robes arrayed. Thereon, where flowers and pennants hung, 
and loud the monarch's praise was sung. Then was the golden litter raised, while holy fire in order blazed, and first in place the vision led the slow procession of the dead. Behind, their cheeks with tears bedeared, came sad the widowed multitude, where, raised as Brahmans ordered, stood, piled sandal logs and scented wood. The body of the king was set, high on a deerskin coverlet. Then duly to the monarch's shade, the offerings for the dead they paid, and southward on the eastern side, an altar formed and fire supplied. Then on the shoulder of the dead, the oil and clotted milk were shed. All rites were done as rules ordain, the sacrificial goat was slain. Next on the corpse were perfumes thrown, and many a flowery wreath was thrown, and with vivisions ready aid, rich vesture over the king was laid. Then while the tears their cheeks bedeared, parched grain upon the dead they streared. Last to the wood, as the rules require, the vision set the kindling fire. Then, having baited, as texts ordain, to Lanka went the morning train. The vision, when his task was done, stood by the side of Raghu's son, and Rama, freed from every foe, unstrung at last his deadly bow, and laid the glittering shafts aside, and male by Indra's love supplied. Canto 114 the vision consecrated. Joy reigned in heaven where every eye had seen the Lord of Lanka die. In cars whose sheen surpassed the suns, triumphant rode the radiant ones. And Robin's death by every tongue, and Rama's glorious deeds were sung. They praised the banners true and brave, the counsel wise Sugriva gave. The deeds of Hanuman they told, the valiant chief supremely bold, the strong ally, the faithful friend, and Sita's truth which naught could bend. To Matali, whom Indra sent, his head, the son of Raghu, bent, and he with fiery steeds who clove, the clouds again to Swarga drove. Round King Sugriva, brave and true, his arms in rapture, Rama tree, looked on the host with joy and pride, and thus the noble Lakshman cried, Now let king-making drops be shed, dear brother, on Vivishan's head, for truth and friendship nobly shown, and make him lord of Ravan's throne. This longing of his heart he told, and Lakshman took an arm of gold, and bade the wind fleet banners bring sea water for the giant's king. The brimming on was swiftly brought, then on a throne, superbly wrought, the vision set the giant's lord, and over his brows the drops were poured. As Raghu's son the right beheld, his loving heart with rapture swelled. But tenderer thoughts within him woke, and thus to Hanuman he spoke. Go to my queen, this message give. Say Lakshman and Sugriva live. The death of Lanka's monarch tell, And bid her joy, for all is well. End of Cantos 111-114《Cantos 115 to 118 of Book Six of the Ramayana of Balmiki, translated by Ralph T. H. Griffith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Om123. Canto 115 Sita's Joy. The Banner Chieftain bowed his head within the walls of Lanka's bed. Leave from the new made king obtained 
and Sita's lovely garden gained. Beneath a tree the queen he found, where Rakshas waters watched around. Her pallid cheek, her tangled hair, her raiment showed her deep despair. Near and more near the envoy came, and gently hailed the weeping dame. She started up in sweet surprise, and sudden joy illumined her eyes. For well the banner's voice she knew, and hope reviving sprang and grew. Fair queen, he said, our task is done. The foe is slain, and Lanka won. Triumphant, made triumphant friends, kind words of greeting Rama sends. Blessed for thy sake, O spouse most true, my deadly foe I met and slew. Mine eyes are strangers yet to sleep, I built a bridge atward the deep, and crossed the sea to Lanka's shore, to keep the mighty oath I swore. Now, gentle love, thy cares dispel, and weep no more, for all is well. Fear not in Ravan's house to stay, for good vision now bears sway. For constant truth and friendship known, regard his palace as thine own. He greets thee thus, thy heart to cheer, and ours by love will soon be here. Then flushed with joy the lady's cheek, her eyes overflowed, her voice was weak, but struggling with her sobs she broke, her silence does, and faintly spoke. So fast the flood of rapture came, my trembling tongue no words could frame, never had I heard in days of bliss a tale that gave such joy as this, more precious far than gems and gold, the message which thy lips have told. His reverent hands the banner raised, And does the lady's answer praised. Sweet are the words, O queen, which thou, True to thy lord, hast spoken now, Better than gems and pearls of prize, Yea, all the throne of paradise. But lady, ere I leave this place, Grant me, I pray, a single grace, Permit me, and this vengeful hand Shall slay thy guards, this rakshas band, Whose cruel insult, threat, and scorn Thy gentle soul too long has borne. Thus, stone of mood, Hanuman cried, The mighty lady thus replied, Nay, be not wrought with servants' day, When monarchs bid must needs obey, and vessels of their lords fulfil each fancy of their sovereign will. To mine own sins the blame impute, for as we sow, we reap the fruit. The tyrant's will these dames obeyed, when their fierce threats my soul dismayed. She ceased, with admiration moved, the banner chief her words approved. Thy speech, he cried, is worthy one, whom love has linked to Ragu's son. Now speak, O queen, that I may know, thy pleasure, for to him I go. The banner ceased, then Janak's child made answer as she sweetly smiled. My first, my only wish can be, O chief, my loving lord to see. Again the banner envoy spoke, and with his words new rapture woke. Queen, ere this sun shall cease to shine, Thy Rama's eyes shall look in thine. Again the lord of Ragu's race Shall turn to thee his moon-bright face. His faithful brother shall thou see, And every friend who fought for thee, And greet once more thy king restored, Like Sechi, to her heavenly lord. To Ragu's son his stamps he bent, and told the message that she sent. Canto 116 The Meeting He looked upon the archer chief, whose full eye mocked the lotus leaf, and thus the noble banner spake, Now meet the queen 
for whose dear sake thy mighty task was first begun and now the glorious fruit is won overwhelmed with woe thy lady lies the hot tears streaming from her eyes and still the queen must long and pine until those eyes be turned to thine but rama stood in pensive mood and gathering tears his eyes beteared his sad looks sought the ground he sighed and thus to king vivision cried let sita bait and tire her head and hither to my side be led in raiment sweet with precious scent and gay with golden ornament the rakshas king his palace sought and sita from her bower was brought then rakshas bearers tall and strong selected from their menial throng through lanka's gate the queen arrayed in glorious robes and gems conveyed concealed behind the silken screen swift to the plain they bore the queen while banners close on every side with eager looks the litter eyed the warders at the vision's hest the onward rushing throng repressed while like the roar of ocean loud rose the wild murmur of the crowd the son of rago saw and moved with anger does the king reproved why vex with hasty blow and tread the banners and my rights forget repress this chill untimely shown i count this people as mine own a woman's god is not her power the lofty wall the fenced tower her conduct is her best defence and not a king's magnificence at holy rites in war and woe her face unveiled a day may show when at the maiden's choice they meet when mary's troops parade the street and she my queen who long has lain in prison racked with care and pain may cease a while her face to hide for is not rama by her side lay down the litter on her feet let sita come her lord to meet and let the hosts of woodland race look near upon the lady's face then lakshman and each banner chief who heard his words were filled with grief the lady's gentle spirit sank and from each eye in fear she shrank as her sweet eyelids veiled for shame slowly before her lord she came while rapture battled with surprise she raised to his her wistful eyes then with her doubt and fear she strove and from her breast all sorrow drove regardless of the gathering crowd bright as the moon without a cloud she bent her eyes no longer dim in joy and trusting love on him Canto 117 Sita's Disgrace He saw her trembling by his side, and looked upon her face and cried, Lady, at length my task is done, and thou, the prize of war, art won. This arm my glory has retrieved, and all that man might do achieved. The insulting foe in battle slain, and cleared mine honour from its stain this day has made my name renowned and with success my labour crowned lord of myself the oath i swore is binding on my soul no more if from my home my queen was reft this arm has well avenged the theft and in the field has wiped away the blood that on mine honour lay the bridge that spans the foaming flood, the city red with giant's blood, the hosts by King Sagriva led, who wisely counselled, fought and bled. Vivician's love, our guide and stay, all these are crowned with fruit to day. But lady, it was not love for thee that led mine army over the sea. It was not for thee our blood was shed, or Lanka filled with giant dead. No fond affection for my wife, 
inspired me in the hour of strife. I battled to avenge the cause of honor and insulted laws. My love is fled, for on thy fame lies the dark blot of sin and shame. And thou art hateful as the light that flashes on the injured side. The world is all before thee, flee, go where thou wilt, but not with me. How should my home receive again a mistress soiled with deathless stain? How should I brook the foul disgrace, scorned by my friends and all my race? For rub and body through the sky, and fixed on thine his evil eye, about thy waist his arms he threw, close to his breast his captive drew, and kept thee vessel of his power, and inmate of his lady's bower. Canto 118, Sita's Reply Struck down with overwhelming shame, she shrank within her trembling frame. Each word of Rama's like a dart had pierced the lady to the heart, and from her sweet eyes unrestrained the torrent of her sorrows rained. Her weeping eyes at length she dried, And thus mid choking sobs replied, Canst thou a high-born prince dismiss, A high-born dame with speech like this? Such words befeet the meanest hind, Not princely part and generous mind. By all my virtuous life I swear, I am not what thy words declare. If some are faithless, wilt thou find, no love or truth in all mankind. Doubt others if thou wilt, but own the truth which all my life has shown. If when the giant seized his prey, within his hated arms I lay, and felt the grasp I dreaded, blame, fate and the robber, not thy dame. What could a helpless woman do? My heart was mine, and still was true. Why, when Hanuman sent by thee, Sought Lanka's town across the sea. Could thou not give, O Lord of man, Thy sentence of rejection then? Then in the presence of the chief, Dead, ready dead, had brought relief. Nor had I nursed in woe and pain This lingering life, alas, in vain. Then hadst thou shunned the fruitless strife, Nor jeopardized thy noble life but spared thy friends and bold allies their vain and weary enterprise is all forgotten all my birth named janak's child from fostering art that day of triumph when a maid my trembling hand in thine i laid my meek obedience to thy will my faithful love through joy and ill that never failed that duty's call o king is all forgotten, all? To Lakshman then she turned and spoke, While sobs and sighs her utterance broke. Sumitra's son, a pile prepared, May refuse in my dark despair, I will not leave to bear this weight Of shame, forlorn and desolate. The kindled fire my woes shall end, And be my best and surest friend. His mournful eyes the hero raised, And wistfully on Rama gazed, In whose stern look no root was seen, No mercy for the weeping queen, No chieftain dared to meet those eyes, To pray, to question, or advise. The word was passed, the hood was piled, And fain to die stood Janak's child. She slowly paced around her lord, the gods with reverent act adored, then raising suppliant hands to dame, prayed humbly to the Lord of Flame. As this fond heart by virtue swayed, from Raghu's son has never strayed, so universal witness fire, protect my body on the pyre, as Raghu's son has idly laid this jaws on Sita, here and a. She ceased, and fearless to the last, Within the flame's wild fury passed. 
then rose a piercing cry from all dame's children man who saw her fall adorned with gems and gay attire beneath the fury of the fire and of cantos hundred fifteen to hundred eighteen Cantos one hundred nineteen to one hundred twenty three of Book six of the Ramayana of Balmiki, translated by Ralph T. H. Griffith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by O. One to Three. Canto one hundred nineteen. Glory to Vishnu. The shrill cry pierced through Rama's ears, and his sad eyes overflowed with tears when lo transported through the sky a glorious band of gods was nigh ancestral shades by man revered in venerable state appeared and he from whom all riches flow and yama lord who reigns below king indra thousand-eyed and he who wields the sceptre of the sea the god who shows the blazoned bow and brahma lord most bountiful by whose command the worlds were made all these on radiant cars conveyed brighter than sunbeams sought the place where stood the prince of raghu's race and from their glittering seats the best of blessed gods the chief addressed couldst thou the lord of all couldst thou creator of the worlds allow thy queen thy spouse to brave the fire and give her body to the pyre dost thou not yet supremely wise thy heavenly nature recognize they ceased and rama thus began i deem myself a mortal man of all the kshaku's line i spring from the serat koshal's king he ceased and brahma's self replied O oh, cast the idle thought aside, thou art the Lord Narayan, thou, the God whom all creatures bow. Thou art the Saviour God who wore, of old, the semblance of a boar. Thou he whose discus overthrows all present, past, and future foes. Thou Brahma, that whose days extend, without beginning, growth, or end the god who bears the bow of horn whom four majestic arms adorn thou art the god who rules the sands and sways with gentle influence thou all-pervading vishnu lord who wears the ever-conquering sword thou art the guide who leads aright thou krishna of unequalled might thy hand o lord the hills and plains and art with all her life sustains thou wilt appear in serpent form when sinks the art in fire and storm queen sita of the lovely brows is lakshmi thy celestial spouse to free the worlds from ravan thou wouldst take the form thou wearest now rejoice the mighty task is done rejoice thou great and glorious one the tyrant slain thy labours end triumphant now to heaven ascend high bliss awaits the devotee who clings in loving fate to thee who celebrates with solemn praise the lord of never beginning days on earth below in heaven above great joy shall crown his fate and love and he who loves the tale divine which tells each glorious deed of thine through life's fair course shall never know the fierce assault of pain and woe canto one hundred twenty sita restored thus spoke the self-existent sire then swiftly from the blazing pyre the circling flames were backward rolled and raising in his gentle hold alive unharmed the mighty dame 
the lord of fire embodied came fair as the morning was her sheen and gold and gems adorned the queen her form in crimson robes arrayed her hair was bound in glossy braid her reed was fresh and sweet of scent undimmed was every ornament then standing close to rama's side the universal witness cried from every blot and blemish free thy faithful queen returns to thee in word or deed in look or mind her heart from thee has never declined by force the giant bore away from thy lone cot his helpless prey and in his bower securely kept she still has longed for thee and wept with soft temptation bribe and threat he bade the dame her love forget but nobly faithful to her lord her soul the giant sweet evolved receive o king thy queen again pure ever pure from spot and stain still stood the king in thoughtful mood and tears of joy his eyes bedewed then to the best of gods the best of warrior chiefs his mind expressed it was meet that mid the thousands here the searching fire my queen should clear for long within the giant's bower she dwelt the vessel of his power for else had many a slanderous tongue reproaches on mine honour flung and scorned the king who love impelled his consort from the proof withheld no doubt had i but surely knew that janak's child was pure and true that come what might in good and ill her faithful heart was with me still i knew that raven could not wrong my queen whom virtue made so strong i knew his heart would sink and fail nor dare her honour to assail as ocean when he raves and roars fears to overleap his bounding shores now to the worlds her truth is shown and sita is again mine own thus proved before unnumbered eyes on her pure fame no shadow lies as heroes to their glory cleave mine own dear spouse i never will leave he ceased and clasped in fond embrace on his dear breast she hid her face canto one hundred twenty one the sarat to him maheshwar thus replied o strong-armed hero lotus-eyed thou best of those who love the right has nobly fought the wondrous fight dispelled by thee the doom that spread through trembling art and heaven is fled the world's exult in light and bliss and praise thy name o chief for this now peace to varat's heart restore and bid kaushalya weep no more thy face let queen kaike see let fond sumitra gaze on thee the longing of thy friends relieve the kingdom of thy sires receive let sons of gentle sita born ikshaku's ancient line adorn then from all care and foemen freed perform the offering of the steed in pious gifts thy wealth expand then to the home of gods ascend thy sire this glorious king behold among the blessed in heaven and rolled he comes from where the immortals dwell salute him for he loves thee well his mandate ragu's sons obeyed and to their sire obedience made where high he stood above the car in wondrous light that shone afar his limbs in radiant garments dressed whereon no spot of dust might rest when on the sun he loved so well the eyes of the Sarat fell he strained the hero to his breast and thus with gentle words addressed no joy to me is heavenly bliss for there 
these eyes by rama miss and rolled on high with saint and sage thy woes dear son my thoughts engage kaikei's guile i never forget her cruel words will haunt me yet which sent thee forth my son to roam the forest far from me and home now when i look on each dear face and hold you both in fond embrace my heart is full of joy to see the sons i love from danger free now know i what the gods designed and how in rama's form enshrined the might of purushottam lay the tyrant of the worlds to slay ah how kaushalya will rejoice to hear again her darling's voice and all thy weary wanderings o'er to gaze upon thy face once more are blessed for ever blessed are they whose eyes shall see the glorious day of thy return in joy at last thy term of toil and exile past ayodhya's lord begin thy reign and day by day new glory gain he ceased and rama thus replied be not disgrace, O sire, denied Those hasty words that cause repoke, Which from thy lips in anger break. Kai Kai, be no longer mine, I cast thee off, but thee and thine. O father, let no sorrow fall On her or hers, thy cause recall. Yea, she shall live, if so thou wilt, The sire replied absolved from guilt round lakshman then his arms he threw and moved by love began anew great store of marriage shall be thine and brightly shall thy glory shine secure on earth thy brother's grace and high in heaven shall be thy place thy glorious king obey and fear to him the triple world is dear god saint and sage by indra led to rama bowed the reverend head nor from the lord the lofty sold their worship or their praise were told heart of the gods supreme is he the one who never shall cease to be on sita then he looked and smiled list to my words he said dear child let not thy gentle breast retain one lingering trace of wrath or pain when by the fire thy truth be proved by love for thee his will was moved the furious flame thy fate confessed which shrank not from the awful test and thou in every heart enshrined shalt leave the best of all mankind he ceased he bade the tree a deer, and home to heaven exulting fleer. Canto 122 in Ra's Boon Then Indra, he whose fiery stroke, slew furious Parker, turned and spoke, A glorious day, O chief, is this, rich with the fruit of lasting bliss. Well pleased are we, we love thee well, now speak thy secret wishes tell thus spake the sovereign of the sky and this was rama's glad reply if i have won your grace incline to grant this one request of mine restore o king the banner dead whose blood for me was nobly shed to life and strength my friends recall and bring them back from yama's hall when fresh in might the warriors rise prepare a feast to glad their eyes let fruits of every season glow and streams of purest water flow thus ragu's son great-hearted prayed and indra thus his answer made high is the boon thou seekest none should win this grace but ragu's son yet faithful to the word i spake i grant the prayer for thy dear sake the banners whom the giant slew 
their life and vigor shall renew their strength repaired their gashes healed whose torrents died the battlefield the warrior hosts from death shall rise like sleepers when their slumber flies restored from yama's dark domain the banner legions filled the plain and round the royal chief arrayed with wondering hearts obeisance paid each god the son of ragu praised and cried as loud his voice he raised tom king to fair Ayodhya speed and leave thy friends of banner breed thy true devoted concert cheer after long days of woe and fear for it, thy loyal brother see a hermit now for love of thee the tears of queen kashelia dry and light with joy each step dame's eye then consecrated king of man make glad each faithful citizen they ceased and borne on radiant cars sought their bright home amid the stars canto 123 the magic car then slept the tamer of his foes and spent the night in calm repose the vision came when morning broke and hailed the royal chief and spoke here wait thee precious oil and scents and rich attire and ornaments the brimming arms are newly filled and women in their duties killed with lotus eyes thy call attend assistance at thy part to lend let others rama cried desire these precious scents the rich attire i heed not such delights as these for faithful varat ill at ease watching for me is keeping now far far away his rigorous vow by varat's side i long to stand i long to see my fatherland far is ayodhya long alas the dreary road and hard to pass one day the vision cried one day shall bear thee over that length away is not the wondrous chariot mine named pushbuck wrought by hands divine the prize which raven seized of old victorious over the god of gold this chariot kept with utmost care will waft thee through the fields of air and thou shalt light and wear it down in fair ayodhya's royal town but yet if aught that i have done has pleased thee well o ragu's son if still thou carest for thy friend some little time in lanka spend thereafter toil of battle rest within my halls an honoured guest again the son of ragu spake thy life was perilled for my sake thy counsel gave me priceless aid all honours have been richly paid scarce can my love refuse o best of giant kind thy last request but still i yearn once more to see my home and almost dear to me nor can i brook one hour's delay forgive me speed me on my way he ceased the magic car was brought of yore by bishakarma wrought in sunlight sheen it flashed and blazed and ragu's sons in wonder gazed and of cantos hundred nineteen to hundred twenty three Cantos one hundred twenty four to one hundred twenty seven of Book Six of the Ramayana of Balmiki, translated by Ralph D. H. Griffith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Om One Two Three. Canto one hundred twenty four, the departure. The giant lord the chariot viewed, and humbly does his speech renewed behold o king the car prepared now be thy father will declared 
he ceased and rama spake once more these hosts who thronged the lanka shore their fate and might have nobly shown and set thee on the giant's throne let pearls and gems and gold repay the feats of many a desperate day that all may go triumphant hence proud of their noble recompense bevision ready at his call with gold and gems and reach them all then rama clomb the glorious car that shone like day's resplendent star there in his lap he held his dame veiling her eyes in modest shame beside him lakshman took his stand whose mighty bow still armed his hand o oh, king bevision rama cried o oh, banner chiefs so long allied my comrades till the foemen fell list for i speak a long farewell the task in doubt and fear began with your good aid is nobly done leave lanka shore your steps retrace brave warriors of the banner race thou king sugriva true through all to friendship's bond and duty's call seek far kishkinda with thy train and over thy realm in glory reign farewell the vision lanka's throne won by our arms is now thine own thou mighty lord hast naught to dread from heavenly gods by indra led my last farewell o king receive for lanka's isle this hour i leave loud rose their cry in answer we o ragusan would go with thee with thee delighted would we stray where sweet ayodhya's groves are gay then in the joyous synod view king making balm thy brows bedew our homage to kaushalya pay and hasten on our homeward way their prayer the son of raku heard and spoke his heart with rapture steered sugriva o oh my faithful friend the vision and your chiefs ascend a joy beyond all joys the best will fill my overflowing breast if god by ill o oh noble band i seek again my native land with banner lords in danger tried sugriva sprang to Rama's side, and guard by chiefs of giant kind, the vision step was close behind. Swift through the air, as Rama chose, the wondrous car from art arose, and decked with swans and silver wings, bore through the clouds its fright of kings. Canto 125 The Return then rama speeding through the skies bent on the art his eager eyes look sita see divinely planned and built by bishokarma's hand lanka the lovely city rest and throned on mount trikuta's crest behold those fields and sanguine yet where banner hosts and giants met there vainly screamed by charm and spell the robber raven fought and fell there knelt mandodari and shed her tears in floods for raven dead and every dame who loved him sent from her sad heart her wild lament there gleams the margin of the deep where worn with toil we sank to sleep look love the unconquered sea behold king barun's home ordained of old whose boundless waters roar and swell reach with their store of pearl and share o oh, see the morning sun is bright on fair hidden nelva's height who rose from ocean sheltering breast that hanuman might stay and rest there stretches famed for evermore the wondrous bridge from shore to shore the worlds to life's remotest day due reverence to the walk shall pay 
which holier for the lapse of time shall give release from sin and crime now did abend dear love thine eyes where green with groves kishkinda lies the seat of king sugriva's reign where bali by this hand was slain there rishamuka's hail behold bright gleaming with embedded gold there too my wandering foot i set there king sugriva first i met and where yon trees their branches wave my promise of assistance gave there flushed with lilies pompa shines with banks which greenest foliage lines where melancholy steps i bent and mourned thee with a mad lament there fierce kabanda spreading wide his giant arms in battle tied torn sita torn thine eyes and see in Janastan that glorious tree there ravan lord of giants slew our friend jatayus brave and true thy champion in the hopeless strife who gave for thee his noble life now mark that glade amid the trees where once we lived as devotees see see our leafy cot between those waving boughs of densest green where ravan seized his prize and stole my love the darling of my soul oh look again beneath thee gleams godavari the best of streams whose lucid waters sweetly glide by lilies that adorn her side there dwelt the Gestia, holy sage in plantain sheltered hermitage see saravanga's humble shed which sovereign indra visited see where the gentle hermits dwell neath atri's rule who loved us well where once thine eyes were blessed to see his sainted dame who talked with thee now rest thine eyes with new delight on chitrakuta's woody height see jumina flashing in the sun through groves of brilliant foliage run screened by the shade of spreading boughs there faradwaza keeps his vows there ganga river of the skies rolls the sweet wave that purifies there shringaveda's towers ascend where guha reigns mine ancient friend i see i see thy glittering spires ayodhya city of my sires bow down bow down thy head my sweet our home our long lost home to greet Canto 126 Varat Consoled But Rama bade the chariot stay, And halting in his airy way, In Varadwaja's holy shade, His homage to the hermit paid. O saint, he cried, I yearn to know My dear Ayodhya's weal and woe. O tell me that the people thrive, and that the queens are yet alive. Joy gleamed in Varadwaja's eye, who gently smiled and made reply. Thy brother, studious of thy will, is faithful and obedient still. In tangled twine he coils his hair, thy safe return is all his care. Before thy shoes he humbly bends, and to thy house and realm attends. When first these dreary years began, when first I saw the banished man, with Sita, in his hermit coat, at his sad heart compassion spoke. My breast with tender pity swelled. I saw thee from thy home expelled, reft of all princely state, forlorn, a hapless wanderer travel worn, firm in thy purpose to fulfil thy duty and thy father's will but boundless is my rapture now triumphant god with friends art thou wherever thy wandering steps have been thy joy and woe mine eyes have seen 
thy glorious deeds to me art known the brahman saved the foes overthrown such power have countless seasons spent in penance and devotion lent thy virtues best of chiefs i know and now a boon would fain bestow this hospitable gift receive then with the dawn my dwelling leave the banded head of rama showed his reverence for the grace bestowed then for each brave companion's sake he sought a further boon and spake o oh, let that mighty power of thine the road to fair ayutthaya line with trees where fruit of every hue the banner's eye and taste may ooze and flowers of every season sweet with stores of honeyed juice may meet the hero ceased the hermit bent his reverent head in glad assent and swift as varadwaja wailed the prayer of rama was fulfilled for many a league the lengthening road trees thick with fruit and blossom showed with luscious beauty to entice the taste like trees of paradise the banners passed beneath the shade of the delightful colonnade still tasting with unbounded glee the treasures of each wondrous tree canto one hundred twenty seven rama's message but rama when he first looked down and saw afar ayodhya's town had called hanuman to his side the chief on whom his heart relied and said brave banner good at need haste onward to ayodhya speed and long i pray if all be well with those who in the palace dwell but as thou speedest on thy way a while at Sringaveda stay. Tell Guha, the Nishada's lord, that victor, with my queen restored, in health and strength, with many a friend, homeward again my steps I bend. Dance by the road that he will show, on to Ayutthaya swiftly go. There, with my love, my brother greet, and all our wondrous tale repeat say that victorious in the strife i come with lakshman and my wife then mark with keenest eye each trace of joy or grief on varat's face be all his gestures closely viewed each change of look and attitude where breeds the man who will not cling to all that glorifies a king where beats the heart that can resign an ancient kingdom nor repine to lose a land renowned for breeds of elephants and warrior steeds if won by custom day by day my brother varad thirsts for sway still let him rule the nations still the throne of old ikshaku fail go mark him well his feelings long and ere we yet be near return he ceased, and gulled in human form, forth sped Hanuman, swift as storm. Sublime in air he rose, and through the reason of his father flew. He saw far, far beneath his feet, where Ganga's flood and Jamuna meet. Descending from the upper air, he entered Sringaveda, where King Guha's heart was well content to hear the message Rama sent then with his mighty strength renewed the banner chief his way pursued valukini was far behind in gomati with forests lined and golden fields and pastures gay with flocks and hearts beneath him lay then nandigram charmed his eye where flowers were bright with every dye and trees of lovely foliage made with meeting boughs delightful shade where women watched in trim array their little sons and grandsons play his eager eye on varat fell 
who sat before his lonely cell in hermit weed with tangled hair pale weak and worn with ceaseless care his royal pomp and state resigned for rama still he watched and pined still to his dreary vows adhered and royal rama's shoes revered yet still the terror of his arm preserved the land from fear and harm the wingard's son in form a man raised reverend hands and thus began fond greeting prince i bring to thee and rama's self has sent it he for whom thy spirit sorrows yet as for a helpless anchoret in dundak wood in dire distress with matted hair and hermit dress this sorrow from thy bosom fling and hear the tale of joy i bring this day thy brother shalt thou meet exulting in his foe's defeat freed from his toil and lengthened vow the light of victory on his brow with sita lakshman and his friends homeward at last his steps he bends then joy too mighty for control rushed in full flood over for its soul his reeling sense and strength gave way and fainting on the art he lay at length upspringing from the ground his arms about hanuman wound with tender tears of rapture sprung he dewed the neck to which he clung art thou a god or man he cried whom love and pity hither guide for this a hundred thousand kind a hundred villages be thine a score of maids of spotless lives to thee i give to be thy wives of golden hair and bright of face each lovely for her tender grace he seized a while by joy subdued and then his eager speech renewed and of cantos 124 to 127 Cantos 128 to 130 of Book 6 of the Ramayana of Balmiki, translated by Ralph D. H. Griffith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by O123. Canto 128 Hanuman's Story. In doubt and fear, long years have passed, and glorious tidings come at last true true is now the ancient verse which man in time of bliss rehearse once only in a hundred years great joy to mortal man appears but now his woes and triumph tell and loss and gain as each befell he ceased hanuman mighty sold the tale of rama's wanderings told from that first day on which he stood in the drear shade of dundak wood he told how fierce viradha fell he told of saravanga's cell where rama saw with wondering eyes indra descended from the skies he told how surpnaki came her soul like low with amorous flame and fled repulsed with rage and tears reft of her nose and saviour ears he told how rama's might subdued the giant's furious multitude how kara with the troops he led and trishidas and dushan bled how rama tempted from his court the golden deer pursued and shot and ravan came and stole away the mightel queen his hapless prey when as he fought the dame to save his noble life jatayus gave her rama still the search renewed the robber to his hold pursued bridging the sea from shore to shore and found his queen to part no more 
Canto 129 The Meeting with Farad Overwhelmed with rapture, Farad heard the tale that all his being steered, and heralding the glad event, this order to Shatrugna sent. Let every shrine with flowers be gay, let incense burn and music play. Go forth, go forth to meet your king, let tabors sound and minstrels sing, let birds swell high the note of praise, skilled in the lore of ancient days. Call forth the royal matrons, call, each noble from the council hall, send all we love and honour most, send brahmans and a warrior host, a glorious company to bring, in triumph home, our lord the king. Great rapture filled Satrugna's breast, obedient to his brother's hest. Send forth ten thousand men, he cried, let brawny arms be stoutly plied, and smoothing all with skilful care, the road for cautious king prepare. Then over the art let thousands throw, fresh showers of water cool as snow, and others trio with garlands gay, with loveliest blooms our monarch's way. On tower and temple porch and gate, let banners wave in royal state and be each roof and terrace lined with blossoms loose and chaplets twined the nobles hasting forth fulfilled his order as satrugna wailed sublime on elephants they rode whose gilded guards with jewels glowed attended close by thousands more gay with the gear and flags they bore a thousand chiefs their steeds bestrode their glittering cars a thousand showed, and countless hosts in rich array pursued on foot their eager way. Veiled from the air with silken screens, in litters rode the widowed queens. Kaushalya first, acknowledged head, and sovereign of the household led. Sumitra next, and after dames of lower rank and humbler names then compassed by a white robe throng of brahmans heralded with song with shouts of joy from countless throats and shells and timbers mingled notes and drums resounding long and loud exulting varat joined the crowd still on his head well trained in lore of duty rama shoes he bore the moon-white canopy was spread with flowery twine and garlanded and jewelled cherries meet to hold over rama's brow shone bright with gold through nandigram's town they neared of rama yet no sign appeared then varad called the banner chief and questioned us in doubt and grief hast thou uncertain like thy kind a sweet delusive guile designed where where is royal rama show the hero victor of the foe i gaze but see no banner still who wear each varied shape at will in eager love does varad cried and does the wingard's son replied look varad on those laden trees that murmur of the song of bees for rama's sake the saint has made untimely fruits unwanted shade such power in ages long ago could indra's gracious boon bestow oh hear the banners voices hear the shouting which proclaims them near even now about to cross they seem sweet gomati's delightful stream i see i see the car designed by Brahma's own creative mind, the car which, radiant as the moon, moves at the will by Brahma's boon, the car which once was Ravan's pride, the victor's spoil when Ravan died. Look, there are Raghu's sons between, the brothers stands the rescued queen. There is Bivishan full in view, 
Scriba and his retinue. He ceased, then rapture loosed each tongue, From man and dames, from old and young. One long, one universal cry, It is he, it is Rama, smote the sky. All lighted down with eager speed, From elephant and car and steed, And every joyful eye intent On Rama's moon-bright face was bent. And tranced a moment, Farad gazed, Then reverential hands he raised, And on his brother humbly pressed, The honours due to welcome guest. Then Varad clomped a car to greet His king, and bowed him at his feet, Till Rama raised him face to face, And held him in a close embrace. Then Lakshman and the marital dame he greeted as he spoke his name. He greeted next, supreme in place, the sovereign of the Banner race, and Jambaban and Bali's son, and lords and chiefs, omitting none. Sagriva to his heart he pressed, and thus with grateful words addressed. Four brothers Banner king were we, and now we boast a fifth in thee. By kindly acts, a friend we know, Offence and wrong, proclaim the foe. To King Bivishan then he spake, Well hast thou fought for Rama's sake. Nor was the brave Satrughna slow, His reverential love to show, To both his brothers, as was meet, And venerate the lady's feet. Then Rama to his mother came, Saw her pale cheek and wasted frame, With gentle words her heart consoled, And clasped her feet with loving hold. Then at Sumitra's feet he bent, And fair Kaikei's reverend, Greeted each dame from chief to least, And bowed him to the household priest. Uprose a shout from all the throng, O oh, welcome, Rama, mourned so long, Welcome, Kaushalya's joy and pride. Ten hundred thousand voices cried. Then Varad placed, in duty taught, On Rama's feet the shoes he brought. My king, he cried, receive again The pledge preserved through years of pain, The rule and lordship of the land, Entrusted to my weaker hand. No more I sigh over sorrows past, My birth and life are blessed at last. In the glad sight this day has shown, When Rama comes to rule his own. He seized the faithful love that moved, The prince's soul each heart approved, Nor could the banner chiefs refrain From tender tears that fell like rain. Then Rama, steered with joy and near, His arms about his brother trill, And to the grove his course he bent, Where Varad's hermit days were spent. Alighting in that pure retreat, He pressed the art with eager feet. Then at his hest the car rose high, And sailing through the northern sky, Spanned homeward to the lord of gold, who owned the wondrous prize of old. Canto 130 The Consecration Then reverent hand to hand applied, Thus Varat to his brother cried, Thy realm, O king, is now restored, Uninjured to the rightful lord, This feeble arm with toil and pain, The weighty charge, could scarce sustain, and the great burden well nigh broke, the neck untrained to bear the yoke. The royal swan outspeeds the crow, the steed is swift, the mule is slow. Nor can my feeble feet be led over the rough ways where thine should tread. Now grant what all thy subjects ask, begin, O king, thy royal task. Now let our longing eyes behold The glorious rite ordained of old, And on the new-found monarch's head Let consecrating drops be shed. 
he seized victorious rama bent his head in token of assent he said and tonsor streamed with care his tangles of neglected hair then duly baited the hero shone with all his splendid raiment on and sita with the matron's aid her limbs in shining robes arrayed sumantra then the charioteer drew ordered by satrugna near and stayed within the hermit grove the chariot and the steeds he drove therein sugriva's consorts graced with gems and rama's queen were placed all fainia yuthia to behold and swift away the chariot rolled like indra lord of thousand eyes drawn by fleet lions through the skies thus radiant in his glory showed king rama as he homeward rode in power and might unparalleled the reins the hand of varad held above the peerless victor's head the snow-white shade satrugna spread and lakshman's ever ready hand his forehead with a chauri fanned bevision close to lakshman's side sharing his task a chauri plied sugriva on satrunja came an elephant of hugest frame nine thousand others bore behind the chieftains of the banner kind all gay in forms of human mould with rich attire and gems and gold thus borne along in royal state king rama reached ayutthaya's gate with merry noise of shells and drums and joyful shouts he comes he comes a brahman host with solemn tread and kind the long procession led and happy maids in ordered bands threw grain and gold with liberal hands neat gorgeous flags that waved in rows on towers and roofs and porticoes mid merry crowds who sang and cheered the palace of the king they neared then ragu's son to varad best of duty slaves these words addressed pass onward to the monarch's hall the high-celled banners with thee call and let the chieftains as is meet the widows of our father greet and to the banner king assign those chambers best of all which shine with legulite and pearl inlaid and pleasant grounds with flowers and shade he seized and varad bent his head sugriva by the hand he led and passed within the palace where stood couches which satrugna's care with robes and hangings richly dyed and burning lamps had seen supplied then varad spake i pray thee friend thy speedy messengers to send each sacred requisite to bring that we may consecrate our king sugriva raised four ounces of gold the water for the right to hold and bade four swiftest banners flee and fill them from each distant sea then east and west and south and north the banner envoys hastened forth each in swift flight an ocean sought and back through air his treasure brought and full five hundred floods beside pure water for the king supplied then god by many a brahman sage vashista chief for reverend age high on a throne with jewels graced king rama and his sita placed there by jabali far revered vijay and kashyap's son appeared by gautam's side katyavan stood and bamadeva wise and good whose holy hands in order shed their pure sweet drops on rama's head then priests and maids and warriors all approaching at bashista's call with sacred drops bedewed their king the centre of a joyous ring the guardians of the walls on high and all the children of the sky from harps were writ their hands were filled rare juices on his brow distilled 
his brows were bound with glistering gold which manu's self had worn of old bright with the flash of many a gem his sire's ancestral diadem satrugna lent his willing aid and over him held the regal shade the monarchs whom his arm had saved the charis round his forehead waved a golden chain that flashed and glowed with gems the god of wind bestowed mahendra gave a glorious train of fairest pearls to deck the king the skies with acclamation rang the gay nymphs danced the minstrels sang on that blessed day the joyful plain was clothed anew with golden grain the trees the witching influence near and bent with fruits of loveliest here and Rama's consecration lent new sweetness to each flower's scent. The monarch, joy of Ragu's line, gave largesse to the Brahman's kind, and steeds unnumbered, wealth untold, of robes and pearls and gems and gold. A jeweled chain, whose lustre passed the glory of the sun, he cast about his friend Sugriva's neck, and angered while his son to deck he gave a pair of armlets bright with diamond and lazulite a string of pearls of matchless hue which gleams like tender moonlight trio adorned with gems of brightest sheen he gave to grace his darling queen the offering from his hand received a moment on her bosom heaved then from her neck the chain she drew a glance on all the banners trio and wistful eyes on rama bent as still she held the ornament her wish he knew and made reply to that mute question of her eye yea love the chain on him bestow whose wisdom truth and might we know the farm ally the faithful friend through toil and peril to the end then on hanuman's bosom hung the chain which sita's hand had flung so may a cloud when winds are still with moonlit silver guard a hill to every banner rama gave rich treasures from the mine and wave and with their honours well content homeward their steps the chieftains bent ten thousand years ayodhya blessed which rama's rule had peace and rest no widow mourned her murdered maid no house was ever desolate the happy land no more near the flocks and herds increased and grew the art her kindly fruits supplied no harvest failed no children died unknown were want disease and crime so calm so happy was the time End of Book 6 of the Ramayana of Balmiki, translated by Ralph T. H. Griffith.